undecided voters from now on because BJP clearly has the momentum. The numbers are very strong for BJP. 335 NDA means if you add the reverses in Maharashtra and Bihar, which is 25 seat itself, 360. Plus you have a new ally from Andhra Pradesh, possibly 17 seats, 377. So mission 400 or 370 is not impossible. That's number one. This is largely predicated on the image of Prime Minister Modi. So if there is a black swan event which dents the popularity of Modi, that is the only event which could probably tilt the numbers in favor of the opposition. It's all about Modi, his popularity. He is getting the votes for the BJP and he is the difference between the but this opposition is an important and point, the Congress. That it's essentially, the no matter who thinks what of it, the fact is, and you can quantify this, and we'll do this tomorrow, but if the BJP is winning in the way that it is, it's because of one man. And what this country thinks of one man, what anybody on this panel thinks of that man is inconsequential. The voters who we've spoken to would like Prime Minister Modi back. They have a direct connect with him. They have faith in him. They trust him. They want him back. Well, let's call it brand Modi. That is really a phenomenon that has happened. And, if, and just uh, look at what Amitabh said. Even in adversity, he comes out the winner. You had Pulwama, which is a black swan sort of event that happened in the thick of election. He converts that into uh, a great opportunity. Take a look at his second term. Each of these things, COVID, his first castigated, our polls itself show that it uh, goes down, comes back uh, you know, with a bang, makes sure that the economy is uh, growing, takes care of the people on one side. Then let's also look at the... See, I, I think there are a couple of qualities we have to look at, uh, Mr. Modi. Decisive leadership. Article 370 goals, early in the tenure that is there. Ram Temple, built at terrific speed. The Parliament House built it. Women's Reservation Bill put there. So you are seeing, uh, if you take a look at some of the characteristics of leadership, vision, he has it. He's not only showing a vision for these next five years, he's looking, you know, fit, uh, you, many people could say, well, that's, you know, really pushing the target too far. But he's giving uh, a, a nation, an aspiring nation, a road to uh, development. And I think that's very important. So he's, he's able to balance the Hindutva sentiment, which is the cultural sentiment that you want, or the soul of the nation, with pragmatic uh, governance, decisive leadership, and this, you know, this quality that he demonstrates in terms of welfareism as, as well. So he's taken all the planks of the opposition, appropriated all of them, made it his own, and has really, that is why you're and seeing the kind of And he's building Rajdeep a new republic. Whether anybody likes it or not, very different from the Nehruvian idea of India in the last 10 years, and he'll cement it in the next five if these numbers are correct. He has, in front of our eyes, built a new India. Look, as I said, the Prime Minister is a consumer politician, and it isn't easy to hold on to your popularity over an extended period of time, particularly when you've gone through several black swan events uh, over the last decade. That is a given. You know, I like to use sort of M factors, and I'm going to give you seven, each of which I think it's not just Mr. Modi's secret sauce. I put Mr. Modi at the top. I put machine. The BJP is a machine. And the machine... No, they so, built a machine. You mean built, machine, no, no, you think like it's a machine lying no, on the ground. No, Anybody no, can do a machine, they built a machine. Of course they built a machine, but the machine has various aspects to it. The machine knows how to use state power. It will know, where, you know, when to corner the opposition. So did how the Congress when they were yeah, in opposition. So, I, I, so did the Congress. Sure, of course. But the Congress didn't build the structure that the BJP no, no, built. When you say that, you know, Mr. Modi is building a new republic, I just want to give the elements, I think, that are yeah. important as to why is he still winning. There's Prime Minister Modi, consumer politician, knows how to use power. There's the machine of the BJP, the RSS, the Sankh Parivar. There's the message. The message, interestingly, look at Mr. Modi's message in the last month since Ram Mandir. He's not focusing on Mandir. He's focusing on Vixit Bharat, talking about infrastructure projects, talking about Amrit Kal. Cleverly knows how to change the goalposts. This is over. Let's move on to the next. So the opposition doesn't know what will come next. Number three. Number four is money. Let's be honest. Indian elections, the, the oxygen of Indian elections are increasingly money. The BJP dominates that space like no other party has done. The Congress may be in its pomp, but that time, you know, the opposition was much weaker. No, no, but that time the Congress leaders, many of them pocketed the money themselves. There's a different that, structure that, they are getting for the machine. A lot of the Congress leaders, sir, and you know this sir, well, pocketed sir, it's not themselves. as if in Maharashtra we don't have Kokeki Rajniti. Let's not say that, no, you know, we institutional corruption in the manner in which there was under the UPA. That's not the case. The, the right jury now. is out on that, but I'm willing to concede that the Prime Minister has made it, uh, uh, you know, ensured that the party comes first at the very top. Not in the case of the Congress, individuals came ahead of the party. 
Then you have Mandir. I think as, as the survey is also going to show, Ram Mandir has taken the Prime Minister's own popularity to another level. That's where it comes that, you know, you're crafting an, a new ideological republic in a way, moving away from the Nehruvian idea to a, to a new idea of a new republic. Who knows, uniform civil court comes next. Then, and I think this is crucial, you have the Mahagadbandan. You see, you're as good as your op opposition is. If you're playing a terrible opposition, which is so badly divided, which has really made no effort, to actually build on the weaknesses of the government. It's not as if the government doesn't have weaknesses. Unemployment is a problem. The, our survey also shows that. What have you done to build it? You have had four meetings of the India Alliance, all in five-star hotels, or three of them in five-star hotels, one in Patna where Nitish Kumar, your convener, has gone. You made no effort to capitalize when COVID uh, management was going wrong to build a kind of consensus. We need change. You've not offered me a leadership or a narrative to combat Modi. I think that's an important element. You're as good as your opposition is. Finally, and I know, Rahul, this is contentious, the media. Let's be honest. No one has dominated the media space quite like Mr. Modi is. So we've never really questioned, for example, the misuse of the ED in the way that it should be. The poll also shows a number of Indians believe the ED is being misused. So I think Mr. Modi is Teflon-like. All of this comes together to make him almost impregnable. Uh, pregnable. And I think, you know, credit to him, it's not easy in today's world to be as popular in 2024 as you were in 2014. More popular. Say, more popular. More popular, you can say, but it's a combination of various factors. Your popularity is also dependent on how unpopular the other side is. No, but that's not Modi's fault. It's not if a his opponents thought. don't know how to bat and bowl, how Rahul, can you blame Modi for that? Rahul, who's blaming Modi? I'm giving the reasonings. The no, reasoning sure. is the opposition in the last 10 years has had opportunities. Demonetization was an opportunity. COVID was an opportunity. You had the chance to question the government in a serious manner. Each, as this poll is showing, the regional parties are holding on to their own. But the Congress has been unable no, to rediscover so, itself. So the question will also have to be asked on Rahul Gandhi's leadership at some stage. Surely, uh, you know, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, you know, this poll, biggest how problem, long is the Congress going to sort of protect him? I think the biggest problem that uh, the opposition is facing is a face. You know, who, Modi versus who? Is it Malikarjun Kharge? Is it Rahul Gandhi? Is it Mamta Banerjee? Is it Arvind Kejriwal? So people have no idea. Is it M.K. Stalin? Is it some other, you know, chief minister? So, you know, nobody knows. So therefore, Mr. Modi is having it, you know, very easy. And the survey is indicating at that. If there was a face, if there was a, you know, sort of caste affiliation, if there was a issues, talking points attached to it, perhaps the outcome may not have been very different, but there would have been something like 2019-like situation. You is know, he so, invincible? I mean, uh, at, at this, this point, point of time, at this point of time, say, can we say that Mr. Modi is invincible? Could the opposition have done anything better to change the mood of the nation? Maybe a better uh, word is unstoppable. Mm, uh, yes. Uh, could see, it have, what there, could there, it have done? There is always a possibility, but I think of politics structurally. And the nature of politics is such that opposition does not have many chances. To use a cricket analogy, if, uh, say, Tendulkar or Virat Kohli is in full form, no matter you ball a Yorker or you ball a uh, uh, sort of like, uh, you know, a googly and spin, they will hit you. But uh, Tendulkar so, has no, got no, gold. This, this is why leaders are important. But right. think of 50s and 60s politics. Were there no leaders in opposition? There was Lohia and other things. Could they challenge Nehru and Congress party? No, because in political time, now you count it seven things. Everything is in favor of BJP, yes. right? So at the moment, I don't think uh, like there is any X factor. The only X factor could be that we have no sense of, of what's happening on the ground. People have made up different mind and they are telling something else. You know, so at the moment, everything is aligned so in favor here, here's of Here's what I wish to say. Let's just zoom out for a moment and think of the larger picture in a more historical perspective. I was at the Pran Pratishtha of the Ram Mandir at Ayodhya. Mm -hmm where while Prime Minister Modi was being introduced, he was linked to Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, is the ideal Hindu king, uh, who at that time, you know, really demonstrated all the virtues that good Indian kings should have. So he's kind of being projected in a historical arc in that same kind of uh, weight category. Rahul Verma, is there any contemporary his political figure who comes to your mind who 10 years on, not just in India because there's no comparison here, <laughs> but even internationally, 10 years after being in power, manages to increase his party's vote share by 3%. No. Go back in time. No, who but, comes to your mind? No, no, can I, who can comes I, can I make a, someone who can? Yeah, who? You know, we often tend to, since Nehru is still in the news. Remember, Nehru in the early 60s was a weakened prime minister. The war with China, despite that one. 
Please understand. No, but his vote share kept coming down. No, no, but his vote Congress... share in the years that he was in power, the Congress kept losing ground. But the BJP is no gaining ground. No, no, and there was no opposition. No opposition. But where is the opposition today? That's what I am saying. Where is the opposition today? There was no opposition. Where is the opposition? Okay. I think you I think only Nehru can be compared. Rahul Varma. Okay. So you got Nehru, Modi, Panchayat, and Modi. From a yes. party of in a party who got us independence, that kind of uh, goodwill yeah. to Congress party after 47, with all the heavyweights of our freedom struggle on the Congress side. Let's be very, very honest. The 52-53 mandate was not Mr. Nehru's mandate. 62, I'm talking about. 62, yes, but but the vote share dip. Vote share dipped a lot. No, and but there by was then no, he goes up in 57. Yeah, no, no, know, but yeah. in 62 and up after that, he's being punished for his actions. The people in India at this moment are rewarding Modi and the See, BJP for what they are seeing far from punishing. Give, let, let's spend some time on this. Let's, Historically, who comes to your mind? Yashwan Deshmukh. No, no, but I mean, nearest that from the... Uh, and, and one point which I wanted to make where I can probably answer your question is the hunger to win and willingness to work 24-7 to ha let that happen. And that thing, only person which comes to my mind is Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Yes. Besides that, no other prime minister in India had a hunger to no, win. I'm not, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, to I'm not restricting this conversation okay, so Raj Chingappa to India. Raj Chingappa, no, 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 in a no, no, historical no, no, context, who comes to your mind? No, no. Somebody Indian democratically Indian. Only, elected. Only an authoritarian leader who yeah, knows how to fix the mandate across how the is world. How is he fixing the mandate? No, no. Putin. I'm not talking about Modi. I'm talking the only... When you and, say, and example, when you say give me an example parallelly. Yeah. There are democratic countries where you will have the likes of a Putin in, yeah. in, in Russia and Erdogan in Turkey who will know how to, in a way, manage the mandate. No, no, Erdogan had a very tough fight. He won with six percentage points. In a relatively free and fair, relatively free and fair system like ours, to do it over three elections with your popularity increasing, I think, makes Prime Minister Modi sui generis. You look at Algeria, where there was, you know, this thing that uh, uh, Khalifa, he went, when Nehru was there, then I went with Hamid Ansari, he was still Prime Minister. Yeah, but let's not compare Algeria with an India. I think, Raul, you make a very mm. good point. In a democratic society like us, with all the pulls and pressures, with, as we are seeing in our poll, South India having a very different politics, states like Maharashtra, Bihar, Bengal, Karnataka, looking tough for a while. I think Mr. Modi has done the remarkable job of holding his popularity. And I will only say this, yeah, and, and I think this is an important point that we need to make. While we talk of the invincibility of the Prime Minister, and I think CSDS's post poll uh, mm -hmm. in 2019 showed one out of every three voters voted yeah. for the BJP because of Prime Minister Modi. The BJP itself is not, not invincible. Is not invincible. That's why yes. I made the slightly controversial yeah. point that if I was the opposition, I would focus on states where Mr. Right. Modi is not on the ticket. The BJP is weakened. You want a strategy for the future? Start from the states. Okay, the problem absolutely. is, you're going to make this, you know, the India I Alliance agree. has come into this 2024 election with no clue of how they want to face See, up to... Uh, just Modi. to remind the viewers, Rahul, once and again, you know, we are so damn focused on 14, 19 and probability of 24 that we are forgetting the fact that BJP as a party has lost 50% of the elections in this country in the last 10 years. 50%? Yeah. yeah. You know, so invincibility of Mr. Modi as an individual with the BJP is benefiting from is not exactly the invincibility of the BJP, That's number one. Right. Number two, yes, I concede and I understand being a conservative pollster, this is probably the starting block of BJP and the NDA. And majority of our polling was hap happened before the Ayodhya uh, Pran Pratishtha, that impact has to come in and with the way they are looking out for alliance partners and the way they are going about it, this can only go up. Having said that, if you will ask me if there is any, I don't see a black swan because nobody can predict a black swan, but one red flag, that is the complacency factor. You know, complacency factor was the are factor they looking that caused them. To you? Are they looking complacent to you? No, they are not. But what, 2004 urban areas the turnout dropped by 18 percent and that no, caused the BJP. No That's precisely what I was trying to say. They have it? learned their lessons pretty hard and neither, neither so Modi is behind. Can I give you a very you know, interesting Mr. anecdote? Not is yeah. Mr. Sudarshan. Sure. Both the factors are remaining Can there. I give you a I very interesting a, anecdote? Just this morning I was told by an MP, you know, parliament has been extended by a day. The BJP is going to put out a white paper on what the Congress did over 10 years. Kya zarurat hai agar 300 seat mil rahe what to put white paper? Lagta hai desperate hai. 
They want to take that 320, 330 that the mood of the nation is going because he wanted to know the numbers. 320, 330 to 370, 375. If he can get an extra Saturday in, where all the TV channels for seven, eight hours will talk about this white paper, keep the mahal going. So there is no complacency. On the other hand, it's like a team which has scored 350 uh, runs is sure to win. But things here, last 10 over, no, all so run, look at 450. Jati. Amitabh Tiwari, look at how this 400 par is seeping into the psyche of the opposition. The Congress guests we had today, even Kharge ji in parliament, they are referring to 400 par. They should be dissing the idea of yeah. It's like you have the most, comp forget idea of the for a moment. <laughs> you have the most competent practitioner of the political craft up against the most inept practitioners of politics I think, in the Congress. Uh, you are right. That is why you when right. you Rahul, have them go head to head. Just Modi did. Modi did. Sorry, sorry. Just a quick point. point. Uh, 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 I think one, when you look at what he's done in terms of 370 and uh, 400 for the uh, NDA, he's addressing what the concerns the Ashwant was talking about. He has pushed the bar even further, higher and better. So, and today you feel He's getting 300 and we, you know, he shouldn't be getting 400. No, Some but you heard what Rashid said. It's the second point. Congress will be happy no, no, with this. The, the second point I would like to make. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah,
the circumstances which allow us to move in that direction. This is the only other government that I know. There I want to only put one small which caveat, is, which is there are areas of darkness in this country. Let's not be, uh, let's be honest. Whether it's the ethnic... No, but there are areas of darkness in the United no, States. No, there are areas of darkness in Europe. Just, uh, uh, just as I believe the middle class has arrived, unemployment is a serious crisis. It's going to get worse in the era, era of automation in, and education systems will not be able to match what the new market I, I, needs. I, I just think, agree with let's you not, let's not extent. say that this, we've reached there. No, Mr. But Modi is offering a dream. Mr. Modi is offering a and, dream. And making yeah, the effort to achieve that dream. Now you're hitting it. He's offering a dream. He's He's offering, he's offering a, a vision and he's, he's making a vision the effort to take us yeah. in that direction. So it's not as if he's sitting on his exactly. laurels but then and he's aspiration. 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 aspiration and aspiration no, is not just aspiration. middle class, Rajdeep. Middle class is like 50 shades of grey. Anybody who is not in uh, BPL family is a middle class. Okay. So uh, from lower middle class to middle middle class to the higher middle class, it's an aspirational class. And he is a person who is showing a vision and a dream. That okay, you are maybe suffering, but what the India which I'm trying to make will be a great India for your kids, your grandchildren. And, 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 sure. and he's working towards no, no, that. But then tell me, if this was also perfect, the double engine as we saw in certain states doesn't work. I think India is too complicated to reduce it to you know Modi's captured the attention of all of India in every election. That's why he's he, captured it in a presidential style. In, in elections, increasingly are presidential at the national level. Mera leader kon hoga? Mera prime minister kon hoga? Mr. Modi with his consummate ability as a communicator okay. and the point I keep making Rahul which Prashant Kishore also now makes Mr. Modi has been around 50 years in politics he's seen various you know these black swan events you're able to conquer sometimes through your past experience it's like a journalist if you've been 40 years we can do live program Pelesal, it was a struggle Mr. Modi has been there he's done the hard yards let's give and him he's been in power Chief. since 2002 uh, two. 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 he's been in power for 22 years and that gives him experience of hand on the other side he's become elite you've also. got regional leaders who've been stuck in their states I think one of Mr. Modi's major achievements is from Gujarat Chief Minister. When he became Gujarat Chief Minister, we thought, "Ye kaise banega? RSS ka admi hai, has no experience in governor. When he uh, governance, when he becomes Prime Minister, we said, "Yeah, Prime Minister, we kaise said banega? You said, no, "Look, no, I, one minute, one minute, one minute. I will say this, and I have, I have proof, Mr. Javed Akhtar, at a dinner in 2012, one week after uh, Modi won Gujarat a third time." Uh, he said, Yar, kya lagta hai? Modi ji aayenge center pe. To ka, hai, I think Modi ji will come to the center. I think he will win the elections. 2012 December, before he tilted. He said, nahi, nahi, he is haunted by 2002. Nahi ho sakta hai. I said, sir, there comes a time when a person can sort of go beyond his sort of okay. past to the future. So I will not take that, but I will say this, that he surprised people. I would certainly and he continues to surprise he people. Continues to and surprise. he continues to surprise the same people who never cease to be surprised. That's a good line. That's a good line. That's, That's, a good line. Line. That's, That's good line. true. That's true. That's true. Is that, see, see the, the fact, matter of fact is that he, he works hard. And I think uh, uh, pretty much, and I've said this to Raj, that, you know, as one of my physics professors, he never used to give us marks on the final answer of the numericals. He used to give us the marks on what did we attempt. I think Indian voters are coming to an age where they want to see the leaders make an effort. If you make an effort, they are even willing to own up your failures. See how people have owned up his demonetization failure. Okay. People, majority of them say, Galak tha, lekin sahi niyat se kiya. Okay. You know, no, so we are out of time. We are out of time. time. We need to there finish. Are, there are two <laughs> politicians which are fascinating in that sense, using this effort point. One is Mr. Modi, one in a very different way, Naveen Patnaik. Yeah. 25 years, never lost, and you ask people, Kya? Nahi, sir, koshish kar mm -hmm. You see, Indian voters is right, want than... to reward well intentioned. Okay, okay, so we are out of time. Intention. We need to wrap up. Rajdeep? No, no, Rahul, just one little yes. point. I think it's more than just try. Modi delivers. He has demonstrated that on time also. Whether it is building a parliament building, it's getting things done. Delivery. He no, makes sure that the culture changes also the design. also remember that at the end of 10 years, Dr. Manmohan Singh, with no disrespect to him, was completely tired, the government was just coming apart. Uh, even Vajpayee ji at the end of his six years 
was very tired. He had to say, not tired, not retired. But, you know, the government wasn't energetic. Prime Minister Modi continues to stay as energetic, as pumped up, where people around and have seen younger officers, much younger than him, you know, and, and at New York, uh, at the yoga day, I asked one young officer in his team, Are, tum kyun nahi Are, nahi, nahi, unme jada energy humme kam. So, you know, that's like people half his age. Okay, so Rajdeep, before we wrap up, if you were Modi, what song would you be singing tonight? <laughs> Uh, what's that song that Shah Rukh Khan had, uh, number one? Uh, I don't expect me uh, to know. What Does is the song? Uh, I'm, the best, I'm, the Achha, I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. Koi hero yaha, koi zero yaha. I'm the best. Look, I'm the best. Mr. Rahul Gandhi, what song are you singing tonight? You know, you're putting me in trouble yeah, because... I know, what, I know. Hey, kya hua, <laughs> kab hua. Kaise, look, there are lots of songs. But look, seriously, I hope for the Rashid sake... Rashid has another song. Can I, can I though say something? For the sake of... You have one. Okay, Amitabh Tiwari, one second. If you are... Apna time aayega. Haan, but... Yeah, that's right. Sir, my advice is bata rahe usko yehi. Apna time aayega. Rahul, he still feels some time aayega. Look, look, let's not rule out anything. He's something like Yerindra Yadav. Who? He's saying Rahul Gandhi thinks apna time aayega. No, no, Rahul Gandhi is being advised ki saab apna time aayega. Look, I am saying, I hope for our sake of our... For our okay. democratic process and indeed for our television coverage, we have an exciting election. I hope that this mood of the nation doesn't result in most people believing up kyo dekna hai. No, but, 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 I can see that there is interest. So Rajdeep may be feeling slightly, yeah, there's no fun over here. There's a lot of excitement buzz around the India story, a lot of excitement about the Bharat of the future and around these poll numbers as well. And I think that will continue through. So I think Rajdeep's earned his dinner. Sung for, sung for his supper? Sung for my supper. India has been modified, it appears, as per the mood of the nation. We'll wait and see what the voter really wants. This was uh, simply a teaser uh, to what might be lying ahead. So day two tomorrow. A uh, lot of uh, detail on impact of Ayodhya, the impact of Nitish Kumar switching in Bihar, um, the performance report card of the Prime Minister, his government, the opposition, all that and more coming up in part two of the India Today Mood of the Nation all through the day tomorrow. So we'll see you again. Today, Mood of the Nation biannual survey brought to you in partnership with Sea Voter, which has done this comprehensive nationwide survey at a time when all eyes are on the big question who will win the general elections of 2024? That's the question that we're going to answer in a detailed manner this time, but not just the big picture. We'll be going state by state to bring you all the results you've been waiting for. This is the last Mood of the Nation opinion poll before the general elections of 2024, which is what makes this that much more important and so much rides on the results of this Mood of the Nation opinion poll. Let's introduce you to our guests who are going to join us over the next several hours as we bring you the results of uh, the Mood of the Nation poll. I want to start by introducing Yashwan Deshmukh, lead cephologist at Seawater. He's got this fancy Himachali cap on and uh, has been working very hard over the last several weeks. And lots of changes, Rajdeep, in the chess drawing board, forcing revisions in the MOTA and samples. So he's really been working doubly hard, uh, not just because of us, but also because of all the changes that are And there could be more changes board. within the next month. You know, change is the only constant. Next month or tonight, tomorrow, there could Who be knows? changes uh, galore. And therefore, we'll have to keep looking at these numbers very carefully. Flanking him is Raj Chingappa. Editorial Director at India Today magazine, he and his team have worked on compiling and dissecting the results of uh, this poll and you can read the analysis in uh, the new issue of the magazine which is out in stands now. We've got Amitabh Tiwari who's joining us, political analyst and to our left we've got Rahul Verma, Rashid Kidwai joins us and we've got Sanjay Kumar from, C, uh, from CSDS. So this is really as sharp a political panel as can be and I'm discounting myself. And uh, no, I'm keeping guys deep there, discounting myself, but a very sharp panel on this. So what we'll do for a moment is take you through the methodology. 
uh, adopted by seawater for this poll. And then we'll go state by state in getting you the results of this poll. So this Mood of the Nation opinion poll was done between the 15th of December and the 28th of January. Largely, some polling happened later when there were specific changes like there were in Bihar. But largely between the 15th of December and the 28th of January. For this poll, the sample size was 35,801. Uh, but Seawater, as our viewers know by now, has a continuing tracker sample. So that adds 1,13,000 uh, interviews to the Mood of the Nation sample, giving us a robust sample size of 1,49,000. For this sample and the tracker that's been going on uh, between the 15th of August and the 31st of January. So there's a 3% uh, plus minus uh, margin of error at the micro level. And Yashwan claims he has a 95% uh, confidence level. So that uh, said, Rajdeep, let's now dive straight into the numbers for Uttar Pradesh. Okay, let's go state by state. And we are starting with the state of Uttar Pradesh because remember, generally it's believed all roads to Delhi lead through Lucknow. That certainly to some extent has been the case in 2014 and 19, given the domination that the BJP has had in the Hindi heartland. But let's take a look at what the mood of the nation poll is saying. First, let's take a look at vote share because vote share will give you a sense of where the parties stand. And what we are predicting at the moment is a 52% vote share for the NDA, which means that the NDA is actually up from last time. They're even higher than they were in 2019 when they did remarkably well in that election. The India Alliance, and presumably this India Alliance includes the Congress, the SP and the RLD as of now. The RLD could well switch sides. Therefore, at the moment, they are at 36%, up 10% last time, but they have lost the BSP, which was in 2019 with the Samajwadi Party and others 12% primarily the Bahujan Samaj Party. But the key thing is, how does this translate into seats? That's the difficult task that Yashwant has undertaken. The seats, what would the seats be in the 80-member UP Assembly? And just take a look at that. The NDA goes up from 64 to 72 out of 80. It's a gain of eight. So NDA, BJP holding rock solid in the saffron heartland in a way. The other, India line, six to eight, so only a marginal increase, and that's divided between one for the Congress and seven for the Samajwadi Party. Others are completely wiped out. The ten last time were the BSP. So Rahul, the first big numbers clearly show the BJP holding its own in what's become its basket. And if the BJP is already at 72 in the way... Uh, the state plays right now. Yashwan, the most important question is, now that RLD is very clearly in talks with the BJP, if uh, Jayam Chaudhary was to join the NDA, where could that 72 reach? Well, I mean, of course, uh, it will impact a uh, uh, minimum number of two seats for sure. Uh, but it's not just about how many seats that RLD is contesting and they are likely to win. It's also about the overall impact of the JAT voter consolidation in the entire Western UP and not just Western UP, but across in other states, which, are, which have a significant number of JAT voters. So that, having said that, Rahul, let me be upfront about this one. And me and Raj discussed this so many times about the numbers of the seats and everything. You know, I am a conservative pollster. And I find it very difficult to tell people that, you know, why are these others or other NDA numbers or non-NDA numbers coming up even when you have NDA or BJP crossing 50% of vote? That is simply because of the probability. When you say any party is there in that particular region, even if you cross 0 to 1, 0 to 1, in UP with six regions, you end up with 0 to 6 kind of range. So it's also a question of probability. Otherwise, this number with this kind of a vote share could end up anywhere. So you're saying it could be 80 also? I will not say it cannot happen. No, because, because he's sitting on 72 and he says, I'm conservative. No, no, <laughs> it, 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 it is a possibility. You know, it can't be ruled out. But let's, you know, we are T20 style today. So I'm going to ask all our panelists quick responses because we are going through the entire country. Raj Chengappa, Uttar Pradesh, as I said, the road to Delhi reads to Lucknow. If this is the result of, uh, of Lucknow, clearly the keys to Delhi are in the hands of Prime Minister Modi. No doubt Uttar Pradesh is the bellwether state. And if it is showing the kind of results that it, uh, the uh, India Today Sea Water Poll is showing, 
the BJP is on its way. I would only like to point out a little bit of history because uh, the, uh, Prime Minister Modi had said he'd want to win uh, 405 seats and for the BJP, 370 seats. So if you look back, the only person who did that was Rajiv Gandhi, who won 405 and, of course, subsequently became 14 when Assam and Punjab were added on. And at that time in UP, uh, that was the undivided UP, I think the Congress won 82 out of 85 seats. That was a sweep. Now, if we are going by these figures, and as we've touched 50%, I'm sure the other pollsters would so say that, the BJP would require to max in Uttar Pradesh if it has to get its target of 370 but that it wants. Remember, those two elections are very different, Amitabh Thiwari, because the 84 election was held in the aftermath of the assassination of then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. It was an election uh, won largely on the back of sympathy. Here is Prime Minister Modi, who's been in power for 10 times. This is not a empathy, sympathy vote. This is a performance vote. If you end up 72, or if Yashwan says could be even higher, that would be the most incredible performance imaginable. Yeah, so if, if these numbers hold true, if you see whatever is BSP's loss of 10 seats is largely accruing into the tally of the BJP. BJP is gaining 10 seats at the expense of BSP. So if these numbers hold true, then what is clearly being shown is that it is largely a pro-incumbency vote. It is a pro-Modi vote, it's a pro-development vote, it's a pro-vote for his policies and the way he has handled the but, economy. But are you surprised because Rahul Verma, Uttar Pradesh was for a long time, for about 30 years, completely fragmented. Now suddenly, since 2014, the BJP has come to dominate the state, two general elections, two assembly elections, and now you could have a third general election. Is the BJP therefore entering into UP much like it was in Gujarat, a completely dominant party, 50% more, 50% uh, vote and more, should suggest a uh, dominant state? Absolutely, uh, Prasdeep. One reason for fragmentation in the 90s and early 2000s was that there were at least four credible players that were present. Uh, BJP, Congress, uh, SP and BSP, the regional parties were very, very strong. Over a period of time, Congress declined and also BSP declined. So why Yashwant is saying that uh, he's, the numbers are conservative? Because this time BSP is moving out uh, and they are still holding on to 10% or uh, some vote share that, there, which means that actually the numbers could be much more than 75, even touching 70. No, but 70. here's the thing. It reflects the continuing trend of elections becoming bipolar. Remember, the BSP, according to Yashwan's analysis, is projected to come down from 19% vote share last time to 8% this time. That's 11% down. And this is a party which in 2007 had won 200 plus seats. So that just shows how the BSP has ceded ground to now become a rump. 8% Sanjay Kumar for the once mighty BSP just shows that for time to come, elections in UP will be BJP on the one side and Samajwadi Party on the other, with a much weaker Samajwadi Party against a much stronger BJP. Uh, Rahul, we need to understand why elections are becoming bipolar not only in UP, but in Bihar and many other states. Because I get a sense that the entire election now is being contested in the name of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. I don't see this election as a contest between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi or Narendra Modi versus any other leader. It is a referendum on how, how do you rate the performance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So people are divided on two axes, pro-Modi, anti-Modi. And you see the election becoming bipolar on this, not on the issues, but largely on this factor. If you are on pro-Modi side, you tend to align, your party tend to align with NDA. And if you are anti-Modi, you tend to align with the UPA. Or if you are not able to align with the UPA, then you go alone. But that is what is happening in UP. But where does this lead, therefore, the India Alliance, Rashid Kidwai? Because you've got a situation where you are tying up with the Congress and Samajwadi Party tying up. Uh, we still don't know how the seat distribution will take place. But when they look at these numbers, there'll be a sense of hopelessness almost, particularly if Jayant Chaudhary also uh, leaves uh, the alliance. Even if Mayavati, you know, was to come on their side, which seems unlikely in a few weeks' time, Either way, India Alliance is starting this race with uh, one hand tied behind its back. Yes, I think there is a total sense of despondency. But I still think uh, Mayawati is the biggest insurance policy that BGP has in Uttar Pradesh. Imagine this 8-10% vote going to, you know, India Alliance it would have made material difference. And second thing is how many, you know, Gandhis, uh, three Gandhis, Rahul, Sonia and Priyanka, how many of them are going to be in fray? 
because if unless they contest and same applies to samajwadi party akhilesh yadav and uh, dimple yadav and all those people credible people so what's your sense with any of the gandhis contest now Given i don't think, I, think, i think they are looking for rajya sabha route at least one of them will get into no, rajya sabha no but i don't agree with rashid kidwai he says bsp joining the india alliance makes a difference even if i had 36 and 8 that's 44 up against 51 for uh, 52 for the nda it still leaves them six shot no, so no, even, like no, 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 even if there is perfect transfer of votes which we saw in the last elections when they were both stronger in the bjp not as strong it still didn't make a difference look rahul bjp is the dominant party of up there is no doubt about that and all the other parties are basically trying to compete for that same anti bjp vote that exists so even if they come together they are actually only consolidating the anti bjp vote the bjp vote itself once it's crossing 50% even if it was 48% tomorrow they would still be over well over 60 as they were in 2019 so i think and rahul we are not factoring in the ram lahar which is there there is a lot of why people are shifting because they think that there is going to be a huge you know consolidation in favor of uh, uh, bjp in uttar pradesh and Now, that is so this anything. was a cricket match and the bjp ends up 72 out of 80 in the first day and the projection across our table of really sharp political minds is that it could actually even be more then you know the congress and the india alliance are out of the race even before the race has begun shahzad can say okay thank you very much i don't need to do the talking modi is doing the talking for me round no no game is over till it's you till it is uh, totally over that? so i know this is a very disappointing save for uh, the india alliance but i must say that despite every all the advantages that the prime minister and amit shah and bjp have built up over these 10 years or so you know they, they are still pretty much at 50% the opposition has not been able to come together as we need to to defeat uh, 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 this uh, this power so far but the election is not over the election is going to be contested in up and all over the place and by the way i know you people said something about the performance this is a performance uh, election if this is a performance election i want to ask you i want to ask the people of up for example that until 2014 up's economy was larger than tamil nadu's economy now 10 years later and most of that is under well all of it is under prime minister uh, modi and most of it is under uh, chief minister uh, uh, yogi adityanath why is the up economy now smaller than the tamil nadu economy what has changed now at the national level salman if, if, if it is salman, salman, one, point, are, one point one we point we are doing a t20 point. style analysis so we want one point at a time you one make point, your one point, point. Right. No, no, let, let shahzad let shahzad punawala now respond shahzad the fact is that up is seen now as a dominant party state do you give credit to the modi factor the upyogi factor a combination of both the fact that the double engine there seems to be really working at the moment rajdeep i give credit to three factors and let me complete my answer one is ram lala two is geeta and three is pd and let me complete ram lala means rashtriya suraksha mahila labharti leadership and uh, अर्थव्यवस्था गीता मीन्स ग्रोथ इन्फॉर्मेशन इनोवेशन इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर टेक्नोलॉजी एंड आत्मनिर्भर भारत एंड पी डी ए मीन्स परफॉर्मेंस डिलीवरी एंड एस्पिरेशन टूडे राजदीप मोदी जी एंड योगी जी हैव कन्वर्टेड द वोकैबुलरी ऑफ पीपल लाइक यू फ्रॉम एंटी इनकम्बेंसी टू प्रो इनकम्बेंसी वेर इवन द मोस्ट क्रिटिकल सिनिक्स लाइक योगेंदर यादव एंड राजदीप सरदेसा इन द डेमोक्रेटिक न्यूज रूम ऑल्सो हैव टू से दैट बीजेपी को सबसे ज्यादा नंबर मिलेंगे ही दिस काइंड ऑफ कन्वर्जन हैपन्स वेन टाइम एंड द टाइम द पीपल सी द लीडरशिप एंड द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द पार्टी ऑन द ग्राउंड एंड ओवरऑल बिकॉज वी हैव अ मिशन एंड अ विशन वी आर नॉट पीपल ऑफ कमीशन करप्शन एम्बिशन एंड फैमिली प्रोफेशन एंड दे फॉर आई गिव क्रेडिट टू राम लला गीता एंड पी डी ए So you know, I, I love his acronyms. He's going to go very far in politics, given those acronyms. Mr. Modi has clearly uh, got a few bucks in the party who know how to do uh, how to use acronyms rather well. What I want to do now is play out a small excerpt from a show we had earlier today uh, from Lucknow, where we spoke to voices on the ground, trying to get a sense of the pulse in Uttar Pradesh. So here are some excerpts from the Mood of the Nation poll from Uttar Pradesh from earlier today. from 
the city of Lucknow when once again if political clichés could hold true nothing विपक्ष की जल गई है एकता की रस्सी इसलिए भाजपा यूपी में जीतेगी अस्सी में अस्सी मुझे लगता है यहाँ पर बैठ के लच्छेदार बातें करना और थोड़ी बहुत शेरों शायरी कर लेना एक चीज है आप धरातल पर आके असलियत देख लीजिए हम पूरे विश्वास के साथ कह रहे हैं कि कांग्रेस पार्टी का उत्तर प्रदेश में खाता नहीं खुलने देंगे युवा चाहता है रोजगार और रोजगार के नाम पर आप कहते हैं पकौड़े तल लो केवल भारतीय जनता पार्टी है जो बढ़ती हुई दिखाई दे रही है बाकी सारे राजनीतिक दल आपको गिरते हुए दिखाई दे रहे हैं आप सबके अकाउंट में पंद्रह लाख आ गए दो करोड़ रूपए रोजगार मिल गया नहीं मिला और जब अलायंस करना था ना तब राहुल जी के प्रोजेक्शन के लिए उनकी एक यात्रा प्लान कर दी गई और जहाँ जहाँ चरण पड़े राहुल के ताता बन का धार हुआ जैसे जैसे यात्रा प्रारंभ हुई एक एक करके अलायंस लगातार छूटते जा रहे हैं शुडेंट दी इंडिया अलायंस एक्चुअली लुक एट ब्रिंगिंग इन मायावती बिकॉज एक परसेंट वोट शेयर वुड ऑल्सो जी माइट नॉट विन अगल सीट एज फार एज बहन मायावती इज कंसर्न आई थिंक इट्स रियली अपू हो वॉट शी वुड वॉन्ट टू तीन सौ सत्तर हम कह रहे हैं क्योंकि तीन सौ सत्तर हमने हटाई है I want to come now to the state of Punjab and just keep in mind that the numbers that you're about to see assume that the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress will find a way of fighting together but this is a state where AAP and Congress are one and two and whenever two parties are one and two they typically find it very difficult to be able to distribute seats amongst themselves between two and three it's much easier than it is between parties that are one and two but since that's the way it is seeming on the surface that's the calculation that we're about to show you so here are the numbers for Punjab i'm going to start by taking a look at the vote share numbers first the bjp had 10% vote share in the previous lok sabha elections that's now projected to go up to 17 uh, that's 7% up uh, the aam aadmi party had 7% vote share in the last lok sabha elections that's now projected to go up to 27 that's 20% up from the last time the congress had 40% vote share in the last elections that's now projected to come down to 38 that's 2% down from the last time the akalis had 28% vote share that's now projected to come down to 14 a loss of 14% for the once formidable akalis let's take a look at how this converts into seats so on your screen right now for the 13 seats of punjab here are the sea voter india today mood the nation projections sea voters projecting that the bjp is likely to stay at two seats that two uh, they're likely to stay at two what's gone out from the nda kitty there are the akali seats the aap uh, is expected to be at five seats that's up four from the last time if we see the party wise break up of these seats uh, the akalis were at two that's likely to come down to one so the bjp holds on to its two seats uh, the aap goes up from one to five remember in the first election they fought in 2014 they had four seats uh, so they go up to five this time the congress at five they were eight last time so they're down three and the akalis are at one down two now what could change potentially ashwant is if at the last moment the akalis and the bjp are able to tie because behind the scenes is a lot happening it's not firm finalized both sides haven't decided the akalis we know are keen the bjp is 50 50 wishy washy but that can change any time and if that changes how does that potentially change these numbers of course i mean that that would be having some impact for sure because uh, i guess that uh, between the akalis and the bjp even though there has been a quite a lot of bad blood or in the recent years uh, the as far as the core voting is concerned they are pretty much supplementary in nature the core has been anti congress vote at large which the akalis and the bjps have been tending together so this separation might have split it vertically because bjp ran away with the hindu votes and akalis were with their panthic votes but if they come together definitely that will have an impact but uh, uh, what it will not be the same kind of seat sharing uh, rajdeep that is for sure because wherever bjp is going back with their old allies the seat sharing equation is no more the same which sure. was defined by vajpayee and advani but you know yeah. this is a fascinating state rajchengappa because the alliances have stay, have changed dramatically in the last few years the bjp and the akalis were together aap versus congress was the battle uh, of punjab they've now come together they may not have chemistry on the ground Would you really believe that this AAP Congress alliance will work in the end? 
and actually see the arithmetic benefits that this poll is suggesting? Or do you believe in the end uh, it will be very difficult for AAP and Congress to actually fight Punjab together? Which may be another twist to these numbers. It's my favorite state since I was uh, there as editor-in-chief of the Tribune. But I think here, let's take Sanjay's argument of brand Modi and a referendum of that. How much of that is going to play out in Punjab? It never happened when Rajiv Gandhi, in, 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 uh, you know, it was a very troubled state, of course, you know, at that particular time. So uh, the Congress never benefited at that time because of the wave that happened. So if you look at uh, it currently, if the AAP and the Congress get together, they're a decisive force. Have they got together? Have they agreed on anything? That is not to be seen as yet. No, but, but can I counter what you're saying to say that it's almost impossible. How will you decide if you're one and two in that state? On a drawing board, you can say whatever you want. Given the problems in Uttar Pradesh, given the problems in Bihar, it is very difficult. In Delhi, they may still have some kind of an arrangement. In Punjab, they'll ultimately come to the conclusion that it's better for us to fight separately. No, they may well do that, Raul. They actually seem to believe that that might even work to their favor. That, you know, you have a multiple, uh, multi corner. No, so I think then the premise of the poll for Punjab is flawed because it, it hypothetically assumes uh, that but, they're fighting together. Yeah, sure. But the one thing about Punjab, to take from what Raj Chengappa said, and that's the fascinating part of Punjab, uh, Sanjay Kumar, it's the one state the one state in North India where the Modi wave has not worked both in 2014 and 19. Look at both these elections. The Congress, if there's one state in northern India, held its own in the last 10 years, it's Punjab. Is there, you think the politics of Punjab, therefore, is very distinct and different from the rest of the country in a way? Uh, two factors. Even though the, the political clout of Chiromani Akali Dal has com come down, but look at the states where regional parties are strong, BJP has not found it easy to make inroads. That's one case why in Punjab BJP has not been able to make inroads. Second, BJP has been contesting in Punjab in alliance with Akalis. So Akalis have been a dominant player. That was a difficulty in the Bihar also for the first couple of decades. Also, look at the social composition of Punjab. In Punjab, we have a very large majority of Sikh voters. So if you look at Ahmadbi, BJP's popularity, Narendra Modi's popularity, there is some difference if you look at among the Hindus and people belonging to different other religions. That is another factor why BJP has not been able to penetrate in Punjab the way they have been able to expand in other parts no, of the No, but the region. calculation in the BJP and Shahzad can build on this. I'll also show you the uh, projection for Chandigarh, which is expected to go to the BJP. It's an urban pocket, and we saw the mess in the mayoral elections recently, but the poll is predicting that Chandigarh goes to the BJP. The problem is both the Home Minister and the Prime Minister have, have often say that they're very emotionally invested in the Punjab story. And yet, on the ground, we see, especially amongst the Sikhs, this pushback. So how does this square? The fact that the Prime Minister himself feels so emotionally close to the Punjabi community, to the Sikh religion, and yet there is a lot of antipathy and a very strong pushback. Uh, Rahul, look, uh, what Sanjayji was saying just now, that since we were the younger brother in the alliance, and that alliance was not purely for political reasons, it was also for ensuring the message of Sabka Saath and Samajik Sohar between the Hindu Sikh community. And therefore, we sacrificed a lot of our space and a lot of the other things also while we were in that alliance. For the first time now, we are finding our feet in Punjab, not just in urban areas, but also in the rural pockets. And therefore, this vote is a vote of expansion. It is a vote of credit that will keep increasing over the few period of years and look at the outreach that Prime Minister Modi has done towards the Sikh community. It is not a political outreach, it is an emotional outreach, whether it is celebrating the Prakash Parbs of the great gurus of the Sikh community, whether it is celebrating Veer Balas Divas or whether it is reaching out to various sections, whether it is the FCRA clearance on Harminder Sahib, Langars that we are uh, making GST free. So I think there is a concerted effort. Not everything is done only for political purpose. Some things are are beyond politics. For Rashtraniti, we have done a lot of things and I think that is also being reflected because Punjabis are very patriotic people. They will, they are ready to sacrifice their lives for the nation. They have contributed so much to the armed forces and I think you will develop, you will see because the kind of mismanagement Aam Aadmi Party is doing. Look at the Nasha Mafia, look at the kind of corruption that is taking place. I am not saying this. Mr. Siddhu is saying about the corruption and okay. also the alliance now, the thing between Congress and here in Punjab, is Amitabh Tiwari, is if they fight unwounded. separately, this calculation and you are seeing the India numbers projected by a seawater to zoom up in terms of vote share very substantially. All that is based on the assumption that they fight together. Uh, if they don't fight together, and if this is the base where Akalis are at 27% vote share, up 20 from the last time, Congress is at 38% vote share, down up 20 from the last time.
up at 27, up 20. Congress at 38, down 2. Akali's at 14, down 14. How could Punjab read in the absence of this alliance? See, Punjab is the hotbed of anti-center politics. So even if AAP and Congress do not form an alliance, and unless the, sub, the Akali Dal forms an alliance with the BJP, these numbers could still hold. So unless the Akali Dal ties up with the BJP, I don't see a substantial difference in the numbers because the politics itself there is anti-center. Hindu being the majority in the rest of the country, but being a minority there complicates the political dynamics there. And you know, it's interesting to look at this because if we turn to the next state, uh, because I think these two states the, reflect just how India's map is so complex. Just turn to Delhi, not too far away from Punjab, where again the Congress and the AAP are trying, uh, uh, trying to tie up. Just look at how the numbers stack up in Delhi. Seven seats on offer, but the national capital is often a barometer of what tends to happen across uh, North India. Take a look at vote share. As per this, in Delhi, even with the Congress AAP alliance, you have 57% vote share going to the BJP and 40% to the India alliance of the Congress and AAP together, others three. How does this then translate into seats? Seven seats in Punjab, uh, in Delhi, all seven went last time, remember, to the BJP. All seven will go back to the BJP as per this poll. So, that takes off from what Amitabh Tiwari just said. Punjab is almost sweet, generous, uh, uh, Rahul Verma. There, if the Congress and AAP tie up, they do very well. They tie up in Delhi, where the AAP is in power again, and yet, it's a clean sweep for the BJP. Does this reflect urban mindsets and Delhi mindsets versus the anti-center mindset, as uh, Amitabh put it, about Punjab? Uh, yes, a little bit, Rajdeep, uh, uh, that Punjab... Uh, the demographic composition is different. It has always had an uneasy relationship with the center, even when uh, Congress party was in power in 1970s and 80s. But you have to also understand that this alliance in both Delhi and Punjab is not easy. Because in P Punjab, Aam Aadmi Party feels that they can gain these seats even without the Congress. So you've seen uh, Chief Minister of Punjab making statements that we don't need to have an alliance. And in Delhi, even if they come together, they will not be able to make any dent. No, but why not? Why, you know, the uh, reason is that Congress explain party. why the Ahmadbi party in two consecutive elections has swept Delhi, but the BJP has swept Delhi in Lok Sabha. So, because, so, BJP continues to hold 40% vote share in Delhi, no matter which election is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, Congress gets 25% when Lok Sabha happens, but when Vidhan Sabha happens or MCD happens, Congress comes down below 10%. So that entire Congress uh, vote, which is in Lok Sabha with them, actually shifts with the BJP. So AAP continues to be around 45 to 50 percent in, in, uh, in assembly elections. But in, in Vidhan Sabha, BJP gains... No, 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 my view is it's the Modi no, factor. Is, no. You know, what, what seems to be is that the Lok Sabha elections, you look at Narendra Modi. When you're fighting a state election, you look at Arvind Kejriwal. That's happened two elections in a row. And it seems as per your numbers, it's going to happen again. It's a split vote, uh, Rajdeep, and it's happening across India, across all the states. Honestly speaking, each and every state... If you look into the vote share of the last assembly and the last Lok Sabha in together, you will see somewhere between 10 to 25 percent of jump in favor of the BJP whenever the Lok Sabha elections are there. However, in case of Punjab, I must mention this because it's an important and critical point to add. In the last 10 years, in our daily tracker, there are only three states where Rahul Gandhi as an individual leader has scored over in popularity over Narendra Modi. Three states all across India. One is Punjab, one is Tamil Nadu, and one is Kerala. But, and they have been like that. But one critical thing is, 10 years back, the gap between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi was so huge in all these three states that it was a one-way traffic of sort. But over the 10 years, this gap is reducing and reducing and reducing, and it used to be in double digits. Right now, it is in single digits. But, but you know, the real, the split vote, I think, Rahul, is going to become more and more important. Voters seeing Lok Sabha very different to Vidhan Sabha, and Salman shows that's your big problem in a way. In Delhi itself, in the heart of the national capital, even if you tie up with AAP, it's the BJP that sweeps the election. That suggests to me that that voter is giving a huge bump to the BJP the moment it's a Lok Sabha election and Mr. Modi is on the ticket.
No, I, I look at it, I look at it a little differently. The, what what I'm seeing is if this data is correct, and uh, I have no way of knowing whether this is or this is not. We'll find out during the elections. But the Congress vote share is coming up in Delhi because people see, many people remember the governance that Congress uh, has delivered to this country. And that is why I think you see the uh, vote share coming up at the when it comes to national level politics. Why that doesn't happen at the when state level uh, elections is a different I don't know what one. you're saying, Salman but, Bhai. From 23, it's gone up to 25. That's up to up. No, no, from 18, is down to 15. That's down three. I was BJP Rahul, was at 57. No, 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 it's at talking, 57. So you're clutching at straws, Rahul, really. Rahul, I was, I was talking about the comparison with assembly elections. Somebody said that you know during assembly elections the vote share goes down, and during parliamentary elections it has come up. So clearly, people do remember that the UP at times are very good. And why should they not? I mean, the per capita income still 32 of this country... Still 32%. No, no, one minute, sir. You're still 32. 32% 32 right. behind the BJP. Rashid, Rashid why this is, you know, this is the problem the Congress is facing. When it comes to a Lok Sabha election, Mr. Modi is on the ticket. It appears that the Congress is not preferred to the BJP. We've seen that. Direct BJP Congress fights. The Congress loses out. Now, even in an alliance with AAP, they may lose out in Delhi. Yeah, but Rajiv, Delhi's story is very simple. It is due to Muslim vote that swings... In assembly election, Muslim vote tends to favor Arvind Kejriwal's party, and in Lok Sabha election, it favors the Congress. So that is why there is a kind of mismatch. And when we talk about vote share, we must look at the each and every constituency profile, and that's where it matters. So even if some party is maybe 40 percent plus, another party is 57 percent, in seven Lok Sabha seats, the results may be slightly different. So vote share. So you make an necessarily... important point in a seat like say Chandni Chowk or in East Delhi, absolutely, where the minorities are in big numbers. Rashid Kidwai's argument is, and that's where we can go across Sanjay Kumar that. As far as the state is concerned, it may still be 57 versus 25 and 13. But in that concentrated pocket, it may help this alliance, if it comes together, put a tighter fight in two seats, at least East Delhi and Chandni Chowk. Uh, this is a possibility, Rahul. I don't rule out this possibility. But if we are looking at on one side 57 and on the other side it is, say, in the 40s, 42, 45, 46, this is huge gap, makes it impossible that there would be, there are chances of close contest or a reversal in a couple you know, of constituencies. The, 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 real, the real story is the BJP, which gets about 38 to 40 percent in Vidhan Sabha, goes up to 57 in Lok Sabha. No, Vidhan Sabha ki no, 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 that's the story. No, but that's the story. Modi, but that's the story my, for Vidhan Sabha no, election. Sir, my, no, no, Sabha no, election. sir, the point is the Modi factor, Rahul, is giving the BJP an 18 to 20 percent jump. That's the story. From 37, 38 percent, where it loses to the AMRP party, which gets over 50 percent. So the AMRP party is clearly seen as a Delhi regional party, and the uh, BJP in a Lok Sabha election takes it. Whatever the minority vote may get consolidated, but the majority vote in Delhi is going firmly towards the BJP for the Lok Sabha. Six months later, I have a Vidhan Sabha election, and the situation at least, you don't twice, know before, that. You don't at know least that. twice before has uh, been very different. True. This time around, we don't you know. know. So I think that's Rahul the significance. Rahul to make a quick point. Yes. Uh, two things. One, uh, the minority factor will come uh, into play on assembly elections, where the assembly constituencies are smaller, Small. and then you have enough number which can swing vote. Uh, even in Chadni Chowk, you don't have 50% Muslim population which can suddenly turn the seat. And besides, after delimitation in 2008, the entire composition yeah. of these seats have changed. Actually, in Delhi, there is not even a single Lok Sabha seat now which can say that, okay, minority votes are the decisive vote here. Yeah. Earlier, the Chandni Chowk, before till 2009 elections, probably, that was the probability, but after 2008, Delimitation. No, but it in is Delhi, no if up in Congress are on the same ticket, it does make things more exciting. It does. It, it does certainly. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it makes it could still be seven. But, but, but having said that, you know, it makes it also, more, it's also the fact, you know, Radeep, uh, Sheena Dixit ji was very clear, very, very clear that if, if Congress has to revive, they have to make sure they do not go with Ahmadi Party. Without, go, no, without so, you know, uh, that's how... Is also clear that, so they, they have, she has been very clear. No, so I, I, I really think, Rahul, the story which we must stress is this Modi factor. 
Because I, you know, this kind of split wording. But you're sounding surprised about no, it. No, because it's nowhere else ago. in the world. You see, in, in go across the world, a Republican state will vote for the Republicans both for the Senate usually and for the presidential election. In India, you're seeing it now in two consecutive elections. For Delhi, we want uh, Arvind Kejriwal, but upar hamare liye Narendra Modi, and you're going to see it across because the America country. Because America doesn't have a Modi. Because that's right. Whether, uh, you know, whether I, mean, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's simplified in that. I think the Indian voter has very consciously decided who I want for chief minister and who I want for prime minister. And I think it is fascinating because I don't think, as I said, I, I, I don't know any other country in the world where it happens. No, we make too much out of this and this is my personal opinion. There is only 15 to 20 percent of vote which swings here and there. That's so, a lot. No, yeah, so, but, but, in only couple of, but in only a couple of states, except Odisha, except uh, 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 Delhi, mm -hmm. do you see a split verdict of this kind? Yes, see, Karnataka. You see Karnataka in election after election, you vote for the for one party in the Vidhan Sabha, you vote for another party in Lok Sabha. I am willing to have you, a can, small can, wager can, that there will be under the half a dozen states where this will happen. Can you but bet like now after Congress winning Karnataka in 2023? Congress is going to do the same way as it done in 2019. But yeah. I, I met a Maharashtra leader yesterday. He said, we have put all our eggs, uh, a Maharashtra Congress leader, we have put all our eggs in Vidhan Sabha. I said, what about Lok Sabha? He said, Lok Sabha Madhe Modi Ahe. <laughs> Please understand. Yeah, yeah. That's how they are seeing it. The reality on the ground. 2019, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chattisgarh. Okay, let's come to Madhya Pradesh in Rajasthan because this is a fascinating uh, political adda and if we go on, we can be here all evening. So I want to come now to Madhya Pradesh and take you through the numbers. We need to just step on the pedal a bit so we can go, otherwise we'll be here all evening. So in Madhya Pradesh, uh, the end, the BJP had 28 seats. Apart from Chindwara, they won 28 out of 29 seats. This time, they're expected to come down to 27. Uh, the uh, India Alliance had one, expected to go up to two. This is as far as votes are concerned. 58% last time for the BJP, same this time. And the Congress's vote share, 35 last time, expected to be 38 this time. So basically, you're predicting that one other seat could possibly go away from the BJP and one extra seat could get added to the Congress. I want to quickly go across to Rajasthan as well from uh, Madhya Pradesh. We'll take vote share first. Uh, the NDA had 61% vote share, the BJP had 61% vote share, this time 59. Uh, the Congress had 34, this time 35. Let's quickly see how that converts into seats. No surprises here. If that's how big your lead is, 59 plays 35 in a bipolar election, it's a clean sweep. So you, they're holding on. Uh, Yashwan Deshmukh, two areas where they shouldn't lose. You Absolutely. know, all these complicated, really detailed, finesse, nuance graphics that we have on the election intelligence dashboard, they're not going to be of any use. If this is how one way the traffic is, then what's the point of all the finessing? Well, you know, I, I was just trying to give what Radhip was saying. I will just give a term to it. I call it Modi dividend. There is a clear cut on an average 15 points Modi dividend as far as the Lok Sabha election is concerned. And the split vote, ironically, you know, I coined that term in 2004 while explaining why Vajpayee's popularity did not translate into votes for the NDA in 2004 because there was a lack of a split vote. And since then, we have seen slowly and steady, the number has been increasing. While Rahul is correct that, you know, in many of the state, it is not very clear cut in that way because in many states where BJP has been absent, their split vote also to take them across a threshold of 30% wouldn't come. Let's say, for example, Kerala. Kerala, Vidhan Sabha election, BJP goes into single digits. But in Lok Sabha election, they almost touch 20%. But, but you know. can, I, can I just make a point? And Raj, I want you to come in on this. When BJP swept states like Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh in 2019, we called it the Balakot bump. That post Balakot, Mr. Modi had taken over the entire space. Now, even without Balakot, the fact is in both these states, the BJP is holding its own, sweeping Rajasthan as per this poll. 27 out of 29 in Madhya Pradesh. In Rajasthan, there was a close contest just a month ago. And yet now, Lok Sabha, it appears it's uh, the BJP all the way. What explains it? So we can even throw Balakot probably out of the, uh, uh, out of the equation. You just say there is the Moditva factor. You know, if you look at it, and if you ask somebody, even in Delhi or in Madhya Pradesh, who would you really want in the center? I mean, that's the question. And that answer is a very logical answer that voters would give. I would gather in Madhya Pradesh as well, who is the Congress projecting for, uh, for them to vote for? You mean as, as prime minister? As prime minister. 
Whereas you have Modi, and he has performed well. The state has uh, rewarded him well. And I think here, if you look at it, just to make a larger point, there has to be a saffron wash, what I call a saffron wash, in about six, seven states for the, for the BJP to get to its 303 or 370. Madhya Pradesh is one of those states. It lost one seat last time. And uh, there's a whole cluster of states where their vote percentage is 50% or more. I think, uh, let's take the seats, 223 seats or so, where they, they are, their margin is so big, over 5 lakhs or something, no. that they will win. Madhya Pradesh is one of those states that's there. So there are two points I'd like to make. One is what you were saying earlier, that the Modi factor will work very, very strongly to dispel any state kind of resistance that is building or any Congress support that could move towards Rahul or anything that's there. And two, these are the kind of states where the, when we have 50 percent, the no, but, opposition has no chance. Sure, but you know, Amitabh Tiwari, this comes back to the point which many people have been making, that the real battle for the opposition was to try and take on the BJP, where there's a direct BJP Congress fight. 186 seats last time where there was a fight, the Congress won just 12. If these numbers are to be replicated, it once again shows where the Congress is the main opposition, i.e. Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan. The BJP is the front runner, and you're seeing the Prime Minister in all his recent speeches, not focusing on regional parties, targeting the Congress, the Kamzor Kadi, as the BJP sees it. Yes, so one of the main reasons why BJP is again sweeping both these states is because it is facing Congress as the opposition, yeah, number one. Number two, the India Alliance partners do not have a single vote in these two states. So there is no advantage to Congress of any India bloc formation because it does not get the reciprocity. And number but three I mean, is that, as you said, the Modi factor, let's say. So 31, 33 percent people, or rather 37 percent people, voted on the name of the PM face. So if you don't have a PM face, you are excluding 37 percent of the no, no, but why segment. these numbers leave the Congress party? They've lost Madhya Pradesh, they've lost Rajasthan Assembly election, they've lost Chhattisgarh. Now you've got a possible sweep as per this Mood of the Nation poll. Will it only further demoralize the Congress in the, in the heartland? Rajiv, actually that's the real trouble with the Congress party because Congress is strategist and that includes Mr. Yogendra Yadav, a new you know, addition in uh, team Rahul Gandhi. He's, and I heard, you know, once he told you also in an interview, he seems to think that the you know, Congress will get seven, eight, nine seats in Rajasthan, five, six seats in Madhya Pradesh and in Chhattisgarh. So there is, you know, he's converting that vote percentage, that 40% plus vote, of the Vidhan Sabha. Vidhan Sabha into Lok Sabha. And that is where I think there is a tactical error, but, the, but Rahul Gandhi is buying that. And India Alliance is buying that. You so know, Salman, Salman shows this is the real problem in a way for the Congress party to revive itself. These, these are the states where you needed to focus upon in the last six months. You've lost assembly and now you could be wiped out in Lok Sabha. Rajdeep, the, 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 you, you are thinking that the only people who are fighting this election are basically Kharkeji and Rahul Gandhi. And we have people, we have leaders in our states. They're fighting elections. They're getting ready. So what 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 will become evident later on is you know this what you in your own in your own poll we're seeing say for example. Uh, a bump of three percentage point three percentage points for India Alliance, which is Congress in Madhya Pradesh, for example. What that tells me is that there is a solid base for the Congress party to build on. And from now until the elections, anything is possible. So, yes, the perception that is being built is that the uh, Modi ji has won. Everything is, uh, is done. And by the way, yes, exactly, the PDA. Let me get to uh, 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 the PDA that uh, my friend Shahzad talked about. The PDA is, what is it? It is propaganda. There is nobody, nobody who does propaganda more than... Uh, Narendra Modi and the BJP. What, is, what does D stand for? D is destruction. Destruction of relationships between uh, brothers, Hindus, Muslims in this country. And what is A? A stands for arrogance. Arrogance of party, of money, of uh, control of media. By the way, in the, in the Hindi belt that we are talking about, how many newspapers carry any, any news from the Congress party? You know it and I know it. Hindi newspapers do not carry new, uh, news of the Congress party. Meanwhile, not just regular news of the Prime Minister. Anytime the Prime Minister says something, he's plastered on television all the time. No wonder people think there is nobody but Narendra Modi, because that is what the media has been projecting. And by the way, I, I would slightly bet to differ. I read the Dainik Bhaskar every morning, and the Dainik Bhaskar is one of the fine papers of the country that does give a lot of news, including news critical of the state governments okay. in those states. So I don't think that's the reason. One, one, so I have a few one minutes newspaper, left. One, 
Okay, it's the biggest newspaper across these states, but go ahead. We have a few minutes left, and I want to finish with the other states in North India. So I want to come to Jammu and Kashmir. In Jammu and Kashmir, the NDA is projected to have about 49% of the vote share. That's up three from the last time. Uh, remember that a lot of this vote share for the BJP actually comes from the Jammu region, right? Uh, the India Alliance, which is uh, Congress plus NC plus potentially PDP as well, at 36. That's down three from the last time. Others at 15. Converted into seats, uh, Yashwant and his team are projecting that the NDA will be at 2, which is where they were last time. Uh, the India Alliance, which is all these three parties together, will be at 3. So basically the Valley seats going to the India Alliance, the Jammu seats, regardless of what happens in the Jammu region, uh, going to uh, the BJP. From there, let's come to Ladakh, where we saw a big protest recently, but despite that, uh, Yashwant and his team are projecting that Ladakh will be with the NDA. Uh, from there, let's now come to Haryana. Uh, 10 seats in Haryana. The NDA Alliance, uh, the NDA, which is BJP and JJP in Haryana, now expected to come down from 10 to 8, a loss of 2. Uh, the Congress, which lost even Rotak last time, expected to go up from 0 to 2, up 2. Now, what makes you think that that is going to happen, given the fact that there is a 12% vote share gap, 50 plays 38 in Haryana? Uh, Haryana, uh, Haryana, don't count the vote share gaps as such, you, because you remember that Haryana Assembly election, out of the fact that BJP was having a te almost 10% gap lead over the uh, BJP, I kind of predicted that BJP will sweep, but it became a hung. Where on earth did you find that a party with a lead of 10% votes and still ended up in a hung assembly in Haryana? So there are two different kinds of Haryanas. Let's be very uh, uh, upfront about it. <laughs> you know, there are two different Haryanas. And it's not regional. It's about the demographics of different seats. And, then they, and the seats where it would be a jat dominated seats, they will be problematic for the BJP. The non jat seats would be easier for the BJP to win. So let's come to Himachal. Himachal is the one uh, state we haven't dealt with uh, in the north yet. Himachal, 69% vote share for the BJP last time. This spine expected to be 60% down 9. Uh, the Congress at 27, expected to go up to 29. Remember, uh, in Himachal, uh, of the four seats, they are predicting that the BJP will pick all four, the India Alliance none. The government in Himachal Pradesh at this time is the Congress government of Sukhwinder Singh Sukhu. Despite that, the Congress makes no gains in the Lok Sabha election in Haryana. Uh, then the last state is Uttarakhand, where they are predicting just a small dip in the NDA's fortunes when it comes to vote share. From 61, to 59 down two India Alliance at 32 up one but when it comes to seats all five seats predicted to go to the BJP you know therefore when you look at the big picture uh, from the first region that we've looked at and this is if you're a t20 match and it's power play and you've just finished six uh, six overs of the 20 think of North India like this the projected seat share across North India first the vote share across North North India NDA 52% India Alliance 38%, others 10 That's a 14% double-digit gap. And that includes, remember, Punjab, where the BJP is relatively uh, smaller in terms of its vote share. How does this translate into seats, Rahul? And I think this is the story. And this has been the story not just now, but also 2014 and 2019. 154 of the 180 seats, as per the mood of the nation, done by sea voter, go to the NDA 25 to India Alliance. And remember, of this 25, majority again coming in from Punjab. Effectively, Rahul, that means it's almost game set, if not match, just when you look at the North Indian numbers. I mean, it is almost impossible then for any side to match up uh, when you lose so big uh, in such a large part of the country. And it's been the Northwest monsoon that has really won the BJP we, 2014 and 19. We haven't come to the West yet. You've seen That's the right. Northern torrential downpour in favor of the BJP. We'll show you what's happening in the East and what's cooking around the Bay of Bengal uh, in the East and what's happening in the West along the Arabian Sea. So all that coming up in the second hour of programming. We've dealt with the North where if this was, Rajdeep said, a T20 match, you know, this is one-way traffic in this T20 match. You've got one team which is blazing away. Six overs, 100 runs. Huh? Six overs, 100 runs. 14 runs and over or 15 runs and over. Which, you know, really makes it almost impossible you know, and, to come back. And the thought that's coming to my mind, you know, there you see my election intelligence dashboard working. So many great ideas. So
so many different data sets which we are cutting and dissecting and diving. I'm wondering what's the point. If it's all pointing in the same direction, then this is there's going to be a lot of effort which won't really yield too much results. But anyway, unlike the opposite, we need to fight on. We need to bring uh, all those data sets together for you. Welcome back to the Mood of the Nation. India Today's biannual survey with C Voter, which is telling you just ahead of the general elections what will happen in state by state to give you the big picture who's winning the battle for 2024. We spent the first hour dealing with the North Indian states. We'll now switch to the South. And remember, Rajdeep, there's been this big North versus South. Uh, effort that the opposition is making to try and build a narrative around how North Indian states are different from South Indian states. Do South Indian states truly feel and vote differently? We'll find out in this hour. Remember, we've given you the North India numbers in the first hour. 154 of the 180 seats going to the BJP-led NDA. India Alliance, just 25 others won. So there's a North typhoon. What's happening in the South? Is there a hurricane? The other way around. Let's start. India may cyclone aata hai, sir. Cyclone. Okay. The southern cyclone. Sorry. The southern cyclone in and there are cyclones that take place in south of the country. We're starting with Karnataka, a state which remember went to the polls seven months ago in Vidhan Sabha. And interestingly, this is what it's showing. In terms of vote share, the NDA is way ahead of the India Alliance. Remember, there's a Congress government in Karnataka. 53% at the moment to the NDA, 42% to the India Alliance, others 5. This is identical in vote share compared to 2019. How is this translating into seats? Remember, 28 seats in Karnataka, 25 were won by the BJP last time. And we are saying the BJP is down just one. 24 from remember 27 now includes the JDS which has joined hands with the BJP there so the J, BJP JDS 24 that's down three but they're still holding its own India Alliance just four in a state where the Congress is in power and India Alliance means effectively Congress here others zero so you've got the first southern state giving bad news to the Congress party and Raj Chengappa, it's your home state, so why don't you kick off? It suggests very different verdict to what we saw seven months ago when the Congress won pretty decisively. But let's say, Rajdeep, it's not surprising in Karnataka. It's if history. you recall, it, 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 it started from Karnataka when uh, Rajiv Gandhi swept Karnataka, winning, winning about 26 or 28 seats in, in 84. 84. Within three months, Ramakrishna Hegde was elected as chief minister. We're going to see the reverse uh, polarization happening in this case where for Karnataka they felt that the Congress was good, it was needed because the BJP government was not effective and therefore the voters likely to tilt towards the giving Modi the mandate because he did campaign extensively there, he did push if you remember the final phase a certain percentage up over there. So Karnataka and the other thing BJP has smartly done is tied up with the JDS. JDS. So the Vokliga vote, which would have made a decisive difference in Old Mysore and others, is getting split across these two. And secondly, if you look the way they have mended fences with the Lingayats, bringing Vijendra, who is the son of uh, uh, Yadurappa, into the picture, the BJP has tried to cover its flanks. But let us see. I mean, Shiv Kumar is a wily uh, contender. And you might see a little more seats going this way towards the Congress, if I, I mean. So, Yashwant, given the fact that Siddharamaiah and Shiv Kumar were in Delhi, and now you've got uh, DMK ministers, you've got Pinari Vijayan trying to hit out at the center for not giving enough uh, finances to the South, could that potentially become an issue? Because I was seeing in the South, there was a lot of traction, at least in social media, around this issue. As of now, it's just in its infancy. Could it build into a bigger headache for the BJP in the weeks to come? Uh, possible uh, because you see without the JDS BJP was in deep trouble and they were pragmatic enough to take that much of arithmetic along six months back our the same MOTM was showing BJP was in disarray because 10 percent approximately JDS votes of Vokaligas going along that now but that's the thing largely is, in old Mysore largely in old Mysore but the thing is that it's not just like they, it might be decisive in old Mysore but there are pockets in across Karnataka particularly in North Karnataka where even 5 to 6 percent of Vokaliga votes shifting the BJP way will do the magic however the point which you are making it's a north versus south device and the campaign that we are now watching in uh, in in social media that is an uncharted territory because 
I don't think any election whatsoever in the last 75 years, that play has been there. Barring the Tamil Nadu politics, outside that, the north-south divide was never played like that. Uh, so that's we, important. Yeah, it's uh, very and, important. And this to issue understand. is still just about it's germinating. It's just germinating. Amitabh and we Tiwari, need to look is there a seamless that. transfer of votes from the Janta Dal secular uh, to the BJP, or do you think it might seem like that, but on the ground, it's not so easy to transfer? See, JDS vote is largely anti-Congress vote. See, the regional parties have been born out of anti-Congressism. And if you see the gap between India bloc and the NDA bloc, it's 11% and which, out of which 9% is largely JDS. So JDS has, has pockets of influence in not only the old Mysuru, but even the Bangalore region. There, the implementation of schemes has been very good. And Congress is trying to project the Karnataka model as their model. But... Historically, BJP has been strong in Karnataka. From 1919 to 2019, they have won all the elections barring 1999. And surprisingly, BJP today, even in 2019, is the single largest party in South of India. Because South of India, there are regional parties who dominate and not the Congress party. Sure, and that's also primarily because they won 25 seats in Karnataka yes. last time. So Rahul Verma, let's come back to our debate that we had when we discussed Delhi. That the same voter who seven months ago voted for Congress, possibly Sidharamaya as CM, apparently seven months later wants Modi as PM. As Raj Chengapa said, it's not unusual, but it seems to me the one state where it's pronounced in the south is in Karnataka. See, I, Modi is one of the biggest vote aggregators of our time. There's no doubt about it. And he pulls BJP's vote. He's more popular than the party itself. If BJP gets around 37% vote, Modi's popularity rating would be around 45-50%. So that means PM pulls the party. What I was trying to differ with, that the segment which changes vote into election is smaller than the claim that we try to make. Right. And think of it, like uh, Yashwan pointed this out, six months back, after the, like, when, so Karnataka elections happened in March, and the last MOTN had happened around August, BJP was not doing that well. See, what BJP is doing in every state where they were having trouble is making efforts Right? In Karnataka, they tried to get JDS. They made uh, a pact with Lingayat. On the other hand, and again, in Karnataka, what Amitabh had said in the beginning, the challenger is Congress. Congress seems not to be doing enough efforts in places where it's strong and credible. No, but uh, also opponent. imagine Sanjay Kumar, despite being the mighty force that they are at the moment, the BJP is willing to tactically cede ground everywhere. Yeah. And, and even also, in Western also, Uttar Pradesh to a party like the RLD, to the JDS where they think that they can make inroads so, in old and, and also Rahul, they called the JDS, uh, they called Kumaraswamy corrupt and a dynast. I mean, there was, it was very clear, we will never touch the JDS. You'll re recall no, they called Mukul Sangma Sangma all kinds of things. Till the day yeah. the numbers so, so, came so out, the, the then they changed their mind. So the level of flexibility yeah. is very the great. Uh, you, yeah. you know, Sanjay Kumar, because this was one of the states where there was a potential double-digit loss for the BJP. So and also, with... also look at the irony. The party that is supposed to have the ideology shows political dexterity. The party with no ideology, so to speak, in terms of certain core philosophical issues is very rigid when it comes to tactical alliances, Sanjay Kumar. Uh, I think the problem with the Congress is that it is slow in taking initiative. I would say even lazy in taking initiative. And if you look at the BJP on the other hand, even if they realize that they are going very strong in 2024, but they don't want to leave any chance. And my own sense is that if you talk to any BJP leader, they are pretty sure that they are winning 2024. But why they are entering into all these alliances despite ideological differences, despite having, you know, given strong statement against the leader of those parties, is that they want to make, they want to big win. They don't let, only want to big 2024. Let's take that, let, let's take that just a minute. Too. I'll come to you, Rashi, the moment. Mohan Kumar Manglam, national spokesperson of the Congress, Ajay Alok of the BJP. To both of you, first you, Mohan Kumar Manglam. You know, there's so much of talk of the Karnataka model. That the Congress is saying the guarantees that we have given will win us an election. The numbers at the moment are so, showing, at least in a Lok Sabha, that's not working. I spoke to Mr. Sidharamaya only yesterday. He seemed very confident. He also play, is playing this sort of discrimination against Karnataka card. But at the end of the day, our numbers are showing the BJP virtually repeating its performance of 2019, which would be hugely significant. If your numbers do bear out, Rajdeep, it would be hugely significant, no doubt. 
Um, but I think your survey was conducted between December, May to January end, if I'm not wrong, which is at the height of the Ram Mandir propaganda craze that happened. And everything online, everything on TV, everything you turned on any channel was about the Ram Mandir. So I think definitely that sort of hysteria would have been captured somewhere in your survey. I don't think that they would find it easy to maintain that kind of momentum going forward. Uh, the other thing is the arithmetic of JDS plus BJP might look right, but I don't think the chemistry works at all. Just for example, uh, Kumarasamy was in a rally with the BJP and was wearing a saffron shawl, I think, and uh, the senior patriarch Devagoda came out and said that it would have been better had he been wearing JDS colors. So even something as small as that could be a flashpoint for misunderstanding between the two. The third thing is, you know, you have this national um, narrative of the BJP that is against nepotism, dynastic rule, etc. So I'm wondering how they're going to reconcile that with pushing Vijendra to the front as sort of the face of their party in Karnataka. You just can't reconcile the two in a national election. Uh, and like I said, alliances, whether that be with the JDS or with someone else, they don't really... Vote transference is going to be one of the major issues to watch out for in there. Ajay Alok, on Karnataka, the transferability of votes from the Janta Dal secular to the BJP and vice versa, the Congress would hope that that might not be easy. We saw in the last elections, but also the JDS's vote is typically an anti-Congress vote. It didn't happen when the Congress and the JDS were together. That's the concern. Will there be transferability of votes? Or do you think, especially in old Mysore, the BJP is now seeping the idea that it's okay to vote for the Kamal and that helps the BJP in a 15-20 year horizon as well, build in the one region where they are weak in Karnataka? See, one thing they are conveniently forgetting that Congress snatched almost 6 to 7 percent of JDS votes in the last Vidhan Sabha election, but they were not able to snatch our votes. Our vote percentage was quite the same, 36.2, what we got and what we got in the last assembly election. And JDS vote bank significantly reduced from 19, 20 percent to 13 percent, and this was majority or majority vote completely, it was minority vote which shifted to the Congress. Now, there is, a there is a feeling of angst and there is a feeling of appeasement everywhere in Karnataka and how the Karnataka government is performing since they have uh, formed the government. So there is a natural chemistry and a bonhomie between JDS and the BJP and BJP and JDS combined together, we are crossing 50% mark very sir, easy. Sir, sir, with due regard, And with sir, the dynamism with, and with the uh, Ajay, Ajay momentum Ajay, of the election regard, going on. Sir, sir, with due regard, when you say natural chemistry, seven months ago you were name calling each other. I mean, you were calling him a dentist, you were saying their family is corrupt, the Gouda family is corrupt. This was all your top leaders were going to Karnataka and saying this. So, is it that you've decided, Chunao ke liye kuch bhi, forget the past, we have to win 2024? See, Chunao ke liye kuch bhi ne, we are a political party and we have to look at the situation at the ground. And of course, when we are not with JDS, why we shouldn't highlight their problem and what their corruption issue was. The Congress will also do the same. Now, no, since not they are with us, we have to see, look at the ground reality of the what kind of appeasement politics, what kind of appeasement politics is being followed in Karnataka. And that... No, are, they, are they now not corrupt? Kind of My direct question to you, to is JDS not Congress corrupt leader. now? Is JDS now no longer dynastical? Well, it is dynastical. As far as corruption, the matter goes, it's all in the court. If they are convicted, they are corrupt. And JDS okay. is there, mystical, there's no doubt about it. We are having a strategic alliance with them. They are not merging into BJP. Yes, and yes. Uh, uh, Rashid Kipwa, you wanted to make a yeah. point. I think, Rajdeep, if uh, uh, Yashwan Deshmukh's figure come true in uh, Karnataka, this would really reflect mood of the nation. Here is a you know, government which is a proven track record, uh, performing well, the Congress party there is there on the ground, it's not a lazy party, at least in Karnataka, and in spite of that, if they lose and lose badly, that will tell you a mood of the nation, a pro-Modi wave. Second thing is, it will also create a huge political upheaval. You remember, there was a lot of rivalry going on between Siddharamaya, Chief Minister, and D.K. Shokumar, and this will, you know, become a big, big issue. So, that so are you saying the possibility of, of that government either fall falling government. as it did after 2019 or are you saying there could be a change in chief minister if these numbers hold? All kind of possibilities are there. If this happens, then then uh, I don't see future of, for uh, Siddharamaya government there. Okay. From Karnataka, let's come to Telangana. I'm just trying to keep it moving so we'll be able to give enough time because otherwise we have 
very irate uh, viewers in a particular state that this is how important our state is and you didn't give us enough time. So let's just try and keep it moving. Let's come to Telangana. We look at the vote share numbers for Telangana first and then the seat share numbers. So in Telangana, the BJP thinks they will be able to gain ground. They had uh, four seats the last time. So when we look at the seat share for the BJP in Telangana, uh, our poll is predict predicting 21%, just marginally up, 1% up from the last time. Uh, the big jump here is for the Congress, which was at 30% last time, this time at 41%. Uh, whereas uh, the BRS and the other parties, which includes OVC, coming down to 38 from 50% the last time. So the big change really is the bump in the fortunes of the Congress and the decline in the fortunes of the BRS. How does this translate into seats? The one, the only sliver of hope that we're seeing of all the numbers that we've put out so far in the Mood of the Nation opinion poll are actually coming from the 17 seats of Telangana, where the Congress's tally is expected to go up from 3, potentially to 10. That's up 7 from the last time. The BJP was at 4, could come down to 3, that's down 1. The BRS was at 9, could come down to 3, that's down 6. The AIMM stays where it was the last time, so OVC wins his seat. Um, 3 to 10. Now, from what I know, Amit Shah and the BJP big guns will be figuring out some way that they don't give this 10, they don't give anything, brother. You know, uh, Rahul, the fact is, honeymoons do exist. You know, I know that we are in a world where even living relationships are now looked at with a question mark, but a honeymoon is still fine. Uh, in the poll, the honeymoon is yeah. on. Uh, Whether it will be on in May or not, we don't know. This is the one state where at the moment, Yeshwan's poll seems to suggest that the honeymoon is on. They just won an election, what, two months ago? And uh, therefore, there isn't even enough time for any anti-incumbency as of now to build. That's the sense I get, Yashwat. That's Am I right? Because yeah. in the contrast with Karnataka here seems clear, uh, where the Congress is still very much the new party that has just toppled a 10-year-old uh, government. I think Congress is reaping benefit of the popularity of Ravant Reddy. I think what is happening here is that in absence of any national leadership popularity or popular national leadership, Congress has to now look around for the popularity of their local leaders. And this is one state where definitely the popularity of Ramant Reddy no, is... So why is it working in Telangana but not Karnataka? It's not working simply because we have got two popular contenders. And uh, Rashid Bhai might be able to tell this, but I am dead sure that uh, the Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka would not like Congress to win in Karnataka in Lok Sabha election because if Congress loses Karnataka in Lok Sabha election, that paves the way for him to become the Chief Minister. I think this is a bit uh, unfair because Mr. D.K. Shukumar and Radhi would correct me if I am wrong, played a very big role even in uh, Telangana, the amount of you know, efforts he made there. So he's a, so far he's a disciplined soldier of the Congress. But, but uh, le let's be very clear. It appears one regional party is the one completely getting squeezed out here. Chandrasekhar Rao has virtually gone dormant since that defeat. That vote, the Congress seems to have captured to a, last, a large extent if these numbers hold. And the BJP has its pockets in, in uh, Telangana, but has not been able to truly spread across the state. Would that be a fair understanding, Amitabh, of these numbers? Yeah, I see. In a, in a largely bipolar national election, the regional parties tend to get squeezed out and Telangana is one of the states. But it reveals a very fascinating insight is that Congress, wherever is it, is it gaining, it is gaining at the expense of regional parties. And that is the basic problem in that India alliance. It is gaining at the expense of BRS and not BJP. So how can it lead an alliance of regional parties where the regional parties have been formed out of anti-Congressism? TMC has come out of Congress. YSRCP has come out of Congress. SP has largely done anti-Congress politics. But, but it also shows uh, uh, there is no substitute for hard work on the ground, Rahul Verma. The fact is the Congress in Telangana genuinely made an effort in the last one year or 18 last six months. months. Yeah, I mean, six after months, the Karnataka but to election. be fair, you know, after Karnataka, they got momentum, Rahul. But there was a sense that the Congress yeah. in Telangana was slow, slowly at least, they were, they were there on the ground. They were more visible after Karnataka, no doubt about that, Rahul. But I think, would it be right to say that there is, there is a lesson there? You work hard on the ground, you throw up a leader like Revan Reddy who's able to connect and maybe, just maybe, who knows where the future is? I, Telangana has been a Congress state. Indira Gandhi contested from Medak all those years ago. Uh, but 
at least in Karnataka and Telangana, you have a party on the ground. We all are taught this lesson from childhood that you have to work hard to get something, right? Zameen so, it's, huh, so, so, so it's not just for politics that you have to work hard. Sometimes, see, Congress also, not just because of the hard work in Telangana, but also some of the mistakes that BJP as well as DRS made in Telangana, which gave that kind of edge to Congress uh, in Telangana. And of course, Revanta is now very, very popular. BRS is not picking up from the defeat uh, it faced last time, and that's the advantage they are getting. And BJP has still not been able to figure out what its Telangana strategy is going to be, unlike in other states. So are they going to make efforts as they did in Karnataka or Maharashtra or Bihar uh, in Telangana or not? So that still remains to be seen. It, that's interesting, Raj Chengappa, because, you know, the, the BJP has also been caught in Telangana between do we play OBC politics, do yes. we project an OBC leader, what, you know, do, do we take strident anti-Muslim politics, will that take us forward? Somehow, for all the gains they made in Telangana five years ago, they've remained stagnant, one of the few states where they've not, you know, uh, multiplied overnight. I think the BJP is still shell-shocked by what happened, and the way the Congress came in and snatched what they thought was their territory, because KCR was on the decline, and the Congress smartly moved in uh, and got, got the prize. But I just want to make a larger point, which we did in passing reference, and we talked about, and uh, Rajdeep, you talked about, I, I think, this, is this whole thing that uh, Siddharamaya and uh, Shivkumar came to Delhi for, and you've seen these full-page advertisements about the South being neglected, not being given the due in terms of its money that was there. I think that is a potent force as it gets along, because it's also tied up with delimitation in some senses. That somehow the South is performing very well. Andhra's, I mean, uh, 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 Telangana is one of the states. Karnataka we talked about. And yet, you know, so this kind of thing can begin to erode on the Modi way factor. That no, so it is an idea. There can be no doubt about it. But does the opposition have the wherewithal to mount it into a meaningful idea, take it down to the ground in the weeks before polling? No, I'll give you a very interesting example. Mr. Pinray Vijayan is in town today. He led a protest. The Correct. Congress decided not to join it because the left is their prime opponent in, in Kerala. So there are internal divisions. But when I asked Mr. Sidharamaya, he said, yes, we would like to hold a convention of all the southern chief ministers soon. So they will play this no, card. And at least it. it's a card Sir, with yeah. some emotional connect. No, no, no but it's also Picho Suja. It, like, it's a real last minute kind of idea, sure. right? You To be able to take this idea, build it into something big, requires some time. But, and, but, and, but, and the but other worry is... The idea to begin with, you are only two months away from the election. Even if you play it well, South is only 130 or 140. No, but in, in those states it may do uh, well. Uh, Rao, no, can I just make a point? If uh, in Karnataka they have, uh, you know, swallowed the <laughs> poison chalice and some, you know, had to drink from that one, it is because they know that if they lose Karnataka, the BJP, the sole Modi wave that begins to shrink, because at 25 seats, it is the one that tilts decisively uh, in terms of, you know, if moving from, say, whatever figure that they have now, if they are 303, if it starts dropping like they had last yes. time, they yes, lose a lot. Chakabha, so that is why you will see because that I they are so concerned. Look at the, the, they are willing to compromise, whether it is in Bihar, as we've seen, in any of these places, despite the fact that they seem invincible, the BJP is insecure for whatever reason, and it is showing up in these places. I actually don't think it's insecurity. I actually now am convinced the BJP, as you saw with Mr. Modi talking about 370 and 400, it's like pushing your troops to try and conquer what is seemingly impossible. So you say Karnataka, okay, people are saying we are going to lose there. Put all your okay. might in Karnataka. Take the take Prime Minister's repeated trips to the south at a time when, you know, you would have thought they would say, okay, south is an area where we will not do well, suggest that actually they think south is a growth area. Here's so a it's fascinating. Is, okay, but, so one, uh, one seemingly impossible thing, seemingly impossible, but why not? When you are talking about the possibilities, if the BJP can go all the way to bring the JDS, if the BJP can go all the way to bring Nitish Kumar, why nobody is talking about possibility of BJP and BRS coming together? Look, the BJP How at the moment, zero plus zero. the BJP is hunting for allies all over. The BRS is a potential ally, but I think, I think they see Telangana as one of the states where they want to grow in the future. And the, to grow, they have to finish the BRS. See, once the regional party is finished, Make it BJP versus Congress in Telangana, advantage BJP. So that's the one reason why they may hesitate from taking on the BRS. And Chandrasekhar Rao is a wily leader. But, I think but, Kumar uh, Swami is desperate. But, 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 but,
the fact is that Modi came into uh, Telangana for an election campaign and said that KCR approached yeah. him for to help out his son and uh, you yeah. know the, so Join there the was India. this talk of an alliance that was building over there yeah. and of course uh, as you we've see, seen, they've patched up with JDS. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Exactly. So, the, 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 the point which I'm... Rahul, Telangana is fascinating, but we need to move on. Because otherwise, <laughs> we'll get caught in the politics of one state, and then people in Andhra will start feeling mm. bad. And that's never a good idea when you're discussing Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. So, Andhra Pradesh, on your screen next. 25 seats here. I look at projected vote shares first. Uh, the YSR CP of Jagan Reddy had 49% vote share last time. That's projected to come down to 41. That's eight down from the last time. But the TDP, which was at 40% the last time, is now expected to go up to 45. Remember, we had uh, Chandrababu Naidu meeting the Home Minister recently. Are they picking up signals which before this poll the others hadn't, but BJP obviously had its own polling on the ground. Uh, the BJP had very little vote share, it's just marginally expected to go up. The Congress had very little vote share, marginally expected to go up. But the big change there is for the first time, we are seeing the vote share of the YSR CP since Jagan led his party to power after that famous uh, Padyatra, lesser than the TDP, a 4% gap, converted into seats. Fascinating here, very, very fascinating because remember, Chandra Babu Naidu was really given the rough end of the legal stick recently and there's a lot of talk amongst the TDP supporters that there is sympathy on the ground there that is reflecting in the numbers for the first time because from zero the TDP is projected to go up to 17. If you ask me of all that we've seen this is the one number that pops out of the screen and grabs my attention. You know my, my sense is uh, uh, Mr. Amit Shah has uh, got a sense of what Yashwan Deshmukh's poll was suggesting. Because why is no, it... No, Sanjay Kumar is surprised. You know, He's because, the ultra because, because you've got... Before I tell you, know, because you see, Chandra Babu yes. Naidu no, was there. Clarification, Rajdeep. Yes. Is TDP only TDP or... TDP Jan plus Janasena, obviously. TDP plus Janasena. Is it Janasena yeah, also? Yeah, TDP but, but you see, the thing is that you've got a party where whose leader, Chandra Babu Naidu, has been knocking on the doors of the NDA for months now. And the NDA wasn't opening the door. Suddenly at the Ram consecration ceremony, you see Chandra Babu Naidu there. Now Chandra Babu Naidu has come back to Delhi and apparently there are two views within the BJP. How far should you go to completely embrace him? But I think the BJP wants to be clear. They want to be with the winning side in Andhra Pradesh. And the Andhra side also wants to be with the, with the BJP because you need help from the center. So if these numbers are right... One of the alliances we could see in the next couple of weeks is TDP. No, but Jansena remember, Jagan is also meeting Amit Shah. So now we don't know. Because I'm, I'm the, just saying these numbers. These the numbers BJP has put... both the Andhra balls up in the air. They can decide where they want to go. No, the thing is that BJP cannot decide who forms the government in Andhra because I think the the real battle there remains Chandra Babu versus Jagan Rahul. But with these no, but numbers, what, the BJP will be changed? tempted to go along with Yashwan Deshmukh. This is the most fascinating yeah. insight of all that we've seen so far. The Telugu Desam, where many people had started writing the obituary of Chandra Babu, political obituary of Chandra Babu Naidu and his party, pops out. Jagan Reddy, who so far is busy, and I'm sure he'll be watching this, so we should be just slightly mindful of what we say, busy projecting invincibility is suddenly seeming on uh, shaky ground. And how does this then impact potentially the assembly election, which will also be held at the same time? I think the problem what Jagan Mohan Reddy is facing, not that his own personal popularity has taken a hit. I think the problem is there is a huge number of non-performing MLAs and MPs. The anti-incumbency at In the micro In your view, is the assembly level. mood also the same? Yeah, I mean, that's that's what is happening right now. You're so sure about Unless they, he changes no, big No, because you don't of, know for sure, because yeah, this is a Lok Sabha poll. Yeah, that's what I'm but saying. But you think it indicates assembly that, mood also? I'm getting the indication of that same as well. Unless he changes huge number of sitting <laughs> MLAs, you know, chops the tickets and gives fresh faces, he has a problem even in the assembly. What's gone wrong for him? You met him recently. You know, Rahul, what would have suddenly gone wrong? Because this was not the situation in the last MOTN. So it's obviously changed just in the last six months. Look, the fact is, Andhra polls have always been closely competitive. Even when Jagan lost in 2014, yeah. it was a very wafer-thin yeah. margin, especially yeah. in terms of votes. So both sides have strong vote bases of their own. If the Kapu vote which comes in through a Jan Sena gives you an accretion, it helps Chandra Babu Naidu. My sense is I would not write off Jagan Mohan Reddy. He's done a lot of welfare schemes. He's banking on welfare schemes, uh, you know, the sort of Modi model taken into the Labharti model at the state level. But there is also a sense that many of his MLAs 
have been distant from the voters, have either been accused of local level corruption. He's changing 60 MLAs out of 150 that he won. So there's a clear sign that he also recognizes local anti So I have a theory. When if it's like, if it's as tight as this and the TDP is bouncing back, whichever side aligns with the BJP, potentially Amitabh Tiwari has the advantage in Andhra Pradesh. Would you no, agree? With, with, one, with one caveat, with? before you go to Amitabh, then remember there is a solid 8 to 9 percent minority vote that's Muslim, plus a large Christian vote out there. And in a way, many of Jagan's advisors have been telling him, let Chandra Babu go with the BJP, it will allow you to consolidate That's that vote. But so it's, it's a but gamble. Counter, but yes, counter but to that, I mean, there is another set of data which generally, I mean, I, I keep on mentioning, I mentioned you uh, Punjab, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. I did not mention Andhra Pradesh in that. Even though Congress and BJP both are out of equation in Andhra Pradesh, but Pradhan Mantri Modi's personal popularity in Andhra Pradesh is way, way more than Rahul Gandhi's. So what I'm simply trying to say, even though BJP has no equity whatsoever uh, over there, there are certainly emotions attached on the Congress, anti-Congress and the old fault lines that the political fault lines are. And one recent development is Jagan Mohan Reddy's sister going to Congress. Now, if from here onward, Congress gains by virtue of Karnataka and Telangana, just even two, three points. That entire vote block is going to come from the Jagan Mohan Reddy too, because they share the same vote. I mean, so, so the yeah. Congress jump is only going to damage Jagan. See, BJP has a problem of plenty here. So it will choose whichever party is going to con uh, win more num or higher number of seats. However, as you mentioned, Andhra is one of the few states where simultaneous elections already take place. And generally what happens is that whatever is the result in the Vidhan Sabha election is reflected in the Lok Sabha election. Andhra 2014-19, Telangana 2014, Odisha 14-19 and Sikkim 14-19. So this could be reflective also of the YSRCP facing pressure or anti-incumbency even now, at the local I can tell you one event. thing very clearly. Chandra Babu Naidu is going to be on India Today television very soon. The TDP already picking up these numbers. They are flying with them. This, and, frankly, uh, Rahul Verma is the first piece of good news they've had for a party. And I think this is where legal overreach always is double-edged. You, know, you yes. think you're killing your enemy. Mm. It can potentially create sympathy and can help your opponents bounce back. Again, uh, something you should know, right? Anyone who is in politics knows this. But then politicians also are humans. They have egos. They have anger, right? And they, in their overreach, try to do something which may backfire. So we don't know whether uh, 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 TDP's gain are actually coming because of that legal overreach. This might also be happening because... Congress might be gaining certain votes, which is coming from uh, uh, Jagan's party. And no, no, but that's overhyped. From one, if they're going to three, that's only 2% up. You can say it's 2 per The Jagan Reddy is losing 8% vote share. Only 2% uh, the Congress has sure. got extra from the last time. So remember, Jagan Reddy's graph at this moment is very clearly coming down. That's what this data represents. There's no running away from it. Mm. And uh, Chandra Babu Naidu would be doing a bit of a dance right now, Sanjay. But BJP's overture toward Chandra Babu Naidu also reflects, you know, the BJP and Prime Minister Modi. He wants to get a foothold in, in, in southern India because, you see, if he's comparing himself with Jawaharlal Nehru, with Indira Gandhi, with Rajiv Gandhi, with his Congress Prime Ministers, you cannot be a Prime Minister of India yeah. and, you know, 100 but, times but it also shows, out of his bounds. But it also shows flexibility again. Here is a leader who five years ago tried to lead the opposition charge against and Prime Minister you. Modi, spoke angrily against the Prime Minister. So Nitish did the Five, same. The, and, and, and you're willing to embrace them all. So I think the Prime Minister is very clear that in politics there are no permanent friends or enemies. Something that the Congress could learn. Think about it. Jagan Mohan Reddy comes from a Congress family. What stopped the Congress in all these years from making at least one solid overture to him to try and embrace? What, what do you do instead? You send his sister to contest against him, which clearly for him is a red rag. You've actually, according to which he said in the interview to us, you've divided my family. So any question no, of his family is already divided. But no, the fact that, but no, one minute. What stops the Congress? It's been 15 yeah. years now almost since Jagan left. 
You could no, have been an F- ego. There's a difference. Yes. No, my you know, point the is home minister, BJP, the Home Minister Rahul, often the says that he is ready to make that extra no, because, step of flexibility. Because the Home Minister because often says, Congress and the Prime Minister ED. believes this, that power we will implement our ideology in power. If we don't have power, how do we implement sure, it? Okay, but and Rahul, Rahul Gandhi says power is poison. I think that is GDP. the fundamental difference. No, Rahul Gandhi Rahul, says power is poison. Rahul made a very good point. She has seen an ideological party. BJP claims to be an ideological party, but is a party of power. The Congress claims to be a party of power, but is now under Rahul Gandhi trying to become a party of ideology. You know, that I want people who are going to fight the RSS, come what may. So you've got a remarkable shift where the BJP wants to be the party of power. difference. Yeah, everybody knows what the BJP's ideology is. Half the congressmen don't know what the Congress's ideology is. They don't agree on the same ideology. No, no, Rahul, so that's the let's, also, let's also admit Congress does not have ED. Can Sorry? I, can I, can I, can the I Congress does not have me. Sure, the ED is a factor uh, which uh, we will uh, discuss, of course, one, but that's a separate factor. One small point about TDP. See, yes. in, even in 1999 and in uh, uh, 2014, TDP only came to power when it aligned with uh, exactly BJP. Point. So TDP right. never that's came to power. That's the point I was trying to make. So, yeah. that, so yeah. TDP has you know, that's, a, that's a very remarkable point, Rahul Umar. Thanks for putting it. Because in 1998 election, right. in the undivided Andhra Pradesh, BJP on its poll almost 20% votes, which forced TDP to join hands with BJP, and he swept again in 1999. So he made a very remarkable point. Can I, Pai, can I make a distinction? Can I make a distinction between yeah. Chandra Babu Naidu and NTR? NTR had the power to win on his own. Chandra Babu Naidu, when he took over the party, was not able to do that. That's the difference. Chandra That's Babu right. Naidu That's was true. leader in that. NTR did not That's need true. allies. That's true. But every time he has, he has won, he has come along with the alliance of sure. the BJP. EDP two months ago was thinking of joining the India Bloc Alliance. After the 3-0 drubbing, hmm. it has again changed its mind. So the regional parties, Hawa Kidar Bair Rahi Hai, are very no. cognizant of this. And there's another no, little I, piece of trivia, Rahul. There are two wings of Prashant Kishore's IPAC. Yeah. One wing is with Chandra Babu Naidu, and the other wing is with uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy. And, Kishore and uh, uh, a few weeks ago, Prashant Kishore was allegedly on a flight with Chandra ba- or uh, with Chandra Babu Naidu or his son, and all speculation sort of uh, arose in uh, Andhra. Is he going to now align with Chandra Babu Naidu? He says he's not. But uh, if these numbers are true, he clearly knows who's on no. the winning side. Jagan didn't give the NOC. But are you surprised with these numbers? Are you surprised at Actually. all with these numbers, Sanjay Kumar? Actually. No, about Andhra, we are all discussing TDP and YSR, YS, uh, YSRCP. But we are not discussing Janasena. I think Janasena is very important. If you just pull out Janasena from the TDP How much alliance, is the Janasena vote? It's roughly about, about four, four, four and a half percent. Oh, yeah. yeah, but but yeah. But if you pull out Janasena from the pull TDP, Jan- then Jagan Mohan Reddy is back in the game. That is so sure. And it, the is, it, is a, it is, is a situation like yeah. Bihar. Nitish Kumar at the center. There are three, two other players. You know, like RJD and BJP on one side. Whichever side Nitish Kumar goes, the okay. party is... But it's fascinating. Order. It is a fascinating I, verdict. I want to go across now to Tamil Nadu. And mm. Tamil Nadu is the one state where the UPA or the India Alliance, at least at this moment on the surface, looks uh, settled. The turbulence is on the NDA side because the AIDMK and the BJP are now separate just at this moment. And this game is changing so fast that I don't want to end up saying something which makes us look silly a few weeks down when people look back. Because that's the way thing, everything we're saying is just commentary at this moment. Things, of course, can change. So here is Tamil Nadu. I'll start with uh, the vote share numbers first. So, the NDA uh, projected to be 15% vote share. The India Alliance from 53 to 47. This is largely the DMK and the Congress and some of their smaller allies. Now, you've got the AI DMK in the others, uh, which is now expected, the others together, expected to be 38%. Let's look at seats, yes. So then a lot many smaller groups are there who are not yet aligned. PMK. So we do not know which side will they be in. So a lot of this. AIA DMK on its own is hardly about 30% at this point of time. So time. 8% are the others, 30% is the AIA DMK. Okay, here is the conversion into seats. Now again, the second state where there is some good news for the opposition alliance because like in Telangana, this time of course is the India Alliance. They had 38 seats the last time, <coughs> expected to go up to 39 this time. The BJP, while it may gain vote share, not expected to win seats in Tamil Nadu. And the AIDMK had just one seat, that too could come 
down to zero. So Tamil Nadu looking strong. Does the DMK stay fully with the Congress or could there be a twist in the tail there also? I think, Rahul, I'll be very surprised given the statements that Stalin has made at the moment that he will also switch sides. There's the ED factor that our friend uh, Rashid Kidwai mentioned. Yes, there are a number of uh, DMK ministers under the ED scanner. But I find it difficult to believe that it will happen before the election. What happens post-elections, we don't know. If the Congress completely collapses, many of these allies of the Congress today could go in different directions. But I think there's a general sense, and the poll may well bear it out, Yashwan, that these, this is the one state where the Prime Minister's popularity is much less than it is nationally, even though he's made the effort uh, repeatedly to go to Tamil Nadu to identify himself with Tamil culture, the single uh, when the new parliament was inaugurated. So the BJP, as always, continues to see Tamil Nadu as this sort of bridge too far, which they want to one day uh, conquer. But no, look at the effort I, he makes the, with the Kashi Tamil Sangam. Yeah, but I, my sense is the EIDMK's collapse over the years That's right. has, has only consolidated the DMK and has put the BJP in a difficult position. Do we try and occupy the opposition space or do we tie up with the DMK? Yes, and the BJP? Either ways, you know, the vote share increase is not going to result in the seat conversion. So is there a vote share increase substantially? Yeah, uh, yeah it's, a, it's a vote share increase substantially. It could be further because, as I said, many of those smaller splinter parties might still go this way, that way, or the NDA way. We do not know. No, is uh, the BJP I, gaining or is the AIDMK gaining this plus it's 3%? The, it's the BJP gaining. AIADMK is not uh, is going down and down and down all the way. And by the way, AIADMK is counted in others in this uh, calculation. It's not in counted in the NDA vote share for that. Uh, yeah. no, but so you're saying, saying a 15 percent. Just a minute. You're saying a 15 percent vote share is for the, a for BJP, the BJP vote share? and the other perceived alliance partners of the BJP, and that's not a very, very uh, uh, big number. I tell you why. In 2014. BJP actually contested with his alliance all alone, not being part of AIA, DMK or DMK, and they polled 18%, which is a decent enough number. But that vote share, just like Kerala, as I mentioned, BJP almost touches approximately 20% in Kerala. In Lok Sabha. But in Lok Sabha, but zero seats. It doesn't really matter. Three states where Prime Minister Modi has actually bent over backwards, I would say, in order to accommodate the political sentiment, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and Punjab. The gap is reducing. They are gr having a growth of organic level, I would say, but unlikely to convert into seats. Rahul, is there any possibility there's a buzz that the Prime Minister could contest from Kanyakumari as a second seat? No, so there there's are, a buzz that, you know, he wants to sort of, he wants to bridge the north-south north divide himself. One seat in the north, one seat in the south. Possible? You know, but Rahul Gandhi also showed some sense of weakness when he picked Vainad. The Prime Minister may not wish to go only for the reason that if this north-south divide picks up mm -hmm. and for some reason they end up on a shaky ground, you don't want to expose the man who's supposed to be invincible to any form of threat. Therefore, will they take that risk? Yeah. No, they will go so. all out to shore up their fortunes in Tamil Nadu. Remember, the BJP is the only party at this moment which has a 20, 30 year horizon on things. When I speak to top BJP leaders about, say, the strategy for Tamil Nadu or say, why don't you just patch up with the AIDMK at this moment, it might make it easier. They're saying, you know, we want to end Dravidian politics, not just about coming to power at this moment, it's also about a larger political, social, ideological fight where we want to integrate the country. I mean, at least they're talking that language yeah. and then pushing in that direction. Right. Oh, now, like the Chinese have a 20, 30 year horizon, the Congress doesn't even know what they're doing tomorrow. Raj, where do you therefore see the DMK being? You know, if these numbers hold, the DMK will presumably be if not the second largest party, certainly the third largest party once again. Does the DMK remain where it is with all the ED pressures that we are we speak about? Other allies are slowly drifting away from the India Alliance? Or is there, you believe, a chemistry with Rahul Gandhi and the Congress that Stalin intends to cement? I think you have to look at what he gains. If it's only the ED that is putting pressure uh, and how deep that pressure is, one has to look at. But funding, yeah, but... Fundamentally, Tamil Nadu doesn't believe in this one nation, one party, one nation, one language. So there's been that protest going on from the 60s. The more the BJP tries to emphasize all these uh, things, and let's not forget uh, Prime Minister Modi had, you know, as part of the temple run, went right down to Tamil Nadu and done, did two, right. two temples out there to assure them that, look, the, we care as much, uh, not just of, uh, of the Ram Mandir, but all your uh, tradition and culture. So at the moment, I don't find a reason why Stalin should be switching 
unless there's some inside information. No, also, about. given the comments that Uday, Uday Nidhi Stalin has made about Sanatan and, Dharma, and, I presume the BJP can't be then seem to be embracing them right away. Yeah, and the Tamil culture and the fact that anti brahminism had ruled for and continues to in many senses, it's going to be difficult for the BJP. It'll get this 10, 15 percent. Mr. Modi's popularity is there and we need to see that. Okay, let's turn then to the final state uh, in our southern uh, sojourn, which is the lovely state of Kerala that often marches to its own beat. Take a look first at vote share. If elections are held in 2024, what happens in Kerala is the UDF, that's the Congress-led front, 46% vote share, LDF 32%, 14% back, NDA 17, others 5. How is this translating into seats? Well, it's virtually a repeat of 2019. Once again, a clear sweep for the Congress-led UDF. The best news for the Congress so far, apart from Telangana, is coming from Kerala. 18 to the UDF, just 2 to the LDF. But remember, both are part of the India alliance. So, No, but it's a big change from 2020, Yashwan Deshmukh, where you had the LDF come back to power. Now you've got, for some reason, very clearly, in a Lok Sabha context, anti-incumbency against the left and very strong pro-incumbency against uh, uh, the Congress. And if Kerala so, was India, yeah. Rahul Gandhi would be Prime Minister. Absolutely. If <laughs> Kerala was India, Rahul Gandhi would have been not only the Prime Minister, he would have been a Prime Minister with Rajiv Gandhi kind of majority. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but having said that, uh, I think 2019 numbers also came after a victory of left front in the assembly elections. And so that way, Kerala is a pretty much a split vote because they are voting for assembly level separately and Lok Sabha level. No, but what differently. explains that vote, Rajdeep? You know, it's very interesting. Uh, a few days ago, Kerala left leader told me, why does Rahul Gandhi have to contest from Wayanad? Can't he choose any other part of the country? We are his staunch allies in the India Alliance and he's coming to take us on in Wayanad. So I think there again, people... He looks like a strong force in Kerala. No, so Therefore, you see, the Congress is seen as a national party in Kerala. The left is seen as the regional party of Kerala. Mr. Vijayan is seen as the prominent chief, uh, the number one neta of Kerala. There may be anti-incumbency brewing against him also after eight years in power. But I think the main reason is the belief that the Kerala voter sees the Congress as a national alternative to the and BJP. GVL Narsimha Rao is now with us. GVL, the BJP was trying very hard to, on its own through the RSS to win something in Kerala. Yashwan's data suggests it's a bridge too far for this election. No, I, I think uh, we are very confident of winning some seats. I will not say we'll be a big force in this election because Kerala doesn't, uh, uh, election to election, the swing is not more than 2% or 3%. Kerala is a, is a state that moves very slowly. But certainly in this election, we will we are confident of and winning. what about Andhra Pradesh, seats. where the Home Minister and Nadaji met <clears throat> both with the... Uh, Chandra Babu Naidu also meeting with uh, Jagan Reddy. What's cooking there? I, I think uh, these are political meetings that happen during election time. Khabar but though, certainly, na, no, I think uh, you won't, uh, until it is anything is final, I think you will not know. So you're flirting with both parties essentially? No, we are, you see, we have got support from both the parties as far as uh, parliamentary strength is concerned. Big, but as far as elections are concerned. But Naidu betrayed a, you, would you take him back? I think these are uh, decisions that party will take at, at, at the highest You come level. from this state, it's your patch. No, but, but there, these are political That makes calls. it even there more is, difficult for him is, to come back. <laughs> because it's his own patch. Rahul and Rajdeep, you see, these are, there are no emotional decisions here. Political decisions are always based on wisdom, political wisdom and uh, political sagacity. Business because you decisions. accused no me, emotion. you made some comment against me, or you called me names in a rally, therefore I will not tie with you. Can if I? That's, that's college level politics. We are. Can I just take it round this table though to ask that since we spoke of college level politics and Kerala strong student movement, how many people in this on this uh, table believe that Rahul Gandhi made the right decision by choosing Wayanad or was it escapism? Did Rahul Gandhi escape from the reality of trying to rebuild and revive his party in UP by going to a, a Kerala? Is that a mistake? Or is, is this a pragmatic decision to stay on in the Lok Sabha? Who wants to go? I think it was a pragmatic decision and Rahul is very comfortable. If you see his, uh, you know, even Bharat Jodo Yatra in Kerala, whatever he was doing, talking, you know, indulging in all kind of activities and all, he was very comfortable. He was what he is. So but you can't win India by becoming the Prime Minister of Kerala. 
to, to, you know, to, to take off from what was just said. That you've got to, instead of investing in rebuilding the party in the north, you're, you're building your base in Wayanad where your principal opponent is your India ally, the left. I think yes, but these are not easy decisions. It's like, you know, Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi contesting from Tamil Nadu. I don't think so. I, I don't think Prime Minister Modi believes or his party believes in any kind of bravado. No, but so, Ra Rahul could have taken Telangana, he could have taken Karnataka. Why take Kerala, the one state where your ally is from your India alliance? Well, that would be a choice if you can... If you is this KC from... Venugopal telling him, take a safe seat, why not large minority population? And that also is seen as a factor. You're choosing a seat with a large minority population. It gives the BJP, and they did why it not? in 2019, you that you only want to contest no, no. a seat as with you... a large minority no, no. population. What are, you, what are you saying? Are you saying minorities are not... Uh, they're also as much as Indian. They're not Bangladeshis. Sure, but why it gives, the, it gives no, no. the BJP an opportunity to play on the seeming weakness of the Congress. That the Congress is only I relying now on the minority. Minority vote. No, no. Given a chance, I think the BJP will also would want to be very comfortable with minorities simply because they are also, you know, bona fide voters governed by rule of law, constitution. Okay. Uh, uh, Rahul Verma, you agree that Rahul Gandhi did the right thing by picking why not? Uh, depends on what the right thing means, right? Like if the right <laughs> thing is just about uh, uh, getting a Lok Sabha seat, perhaps, yes. If he thinks he can revive or, or uh, make the party very, very strong in South, that's also right, as Rashid is saying that. Uh, in southern India, and, and even this poll is saying that Congress is actually gaining in South. If no, not, not in South, only in Kerala. Where in, in the South? In Karnataka, uh, BJP is doing well. In, in Andhra Pradesh, no, in the TDP and the YSR In Telangana, Congress is doing well. In alliance with uh, DMK, in Tamil Nadu, they would do well. So, so in that sense, it's not a bad decision. I think, should he look towards South as well as build the party in North? That's what a leader is supposed to do. Uh, Modi campaigns in North and South and East and West, right? As if you want to be a national and leader... I think okay, one, so what one, 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 liner, one liner I would say, he lost a meeting because he went to Wynard. Yeah, well, well, what I was told is that they saw their polls in uh, Amethi suggesting a very tough fight, possibly losing. They looked for a safe seat in the South and picked Wynard. So it was almost like an, a, a pro, uh, some kind of security which Rahul Gandhi was offered. That no, but imagine if he's your main batsman and he's looking for a safe which position. Is, which is my point. You yes, see, yes, my, you this is it. precisely my point, Rahul, right. that I would have... Yes. If you wanted to choose South, choose Karnataka, for example. Yeah. A state... Where did Indira Bellari. Gandhi go? Indira Gandhi went to no, Chikmagur, went to Meda. What is the safe seat for Karnataka, uh, Congress in Karnataka? No, Mr. No, Mr. Mr. Safe seat. I, am, I have no doubt that there could be potentially safe seats, okay. including potentially Chikmagur. But so, look, at, look at yeah. the projected vote share and seat share of the South, because Rahul, I think it shows the exact opposite of the North. The vote share in the South, as per the mood of the nation poll, NDA 23%. India 41%, others 36 How does it add up in seats? NDA 27 That's just a small dip from last time. Remember, BJP got 29 out of 130. India 76 Slight up because of Telangana, others 29. But basically, you, are, you really have two Indias politically. You have the BJP dominant in North India, and you have India Alliance doing very well in South India. So, whether we like it or not, there is a South, North, political divide in this country. What that, uh, what implication that will have with delimitation is going to be a big no, question in a couple of years from now. Couple at of this, years from now. At this moment, we are focusing on what is the mood of the nation. Welcome back. You're with us on the India Today Mood of the Nation opinion poll. The results of this poll are already buzzing and trending in every state. From Andhra Pradesh to Telangana to Uttar Pradesh, wherever we are going, a, a mini tsunami on social media, lots of posts being viral, exchanged. So that, that's good buzz to have. We now want to come to Rajdeep's home state of Maharashtra. He's already itching, getting out of his chair, all set to get you what should be quite shocking. No matter what you're thinking is happening, I think you'll be shocked by what Rajdeep's about to show you. Rajdeep. We've gone to the north, we've gone to the south. But the best part of the country is when you're a West Indian. As a West Indian, I've got to go to Maharashtra. And who, <laughs> whoever thought Maharashtra would be one of the states which would see so much of chaos and instability in the last five years? We've had three chief ministers and plenty more in that state. What is the mood of the nation showing for Maharashtra? A state that will have both Lok Sabha and later in the year Vidhan Sabha. NDA 40%. NDA 40%. So that's the BJP and the Shiv Sena into bracket Shinde. India 45%, which is 5% higher. 
40 plays 45 percent, others 15. And 45 is NCP, Uddhav Sena, as well as the Congress Party. So 5 percent edge in Maharashtra to the Maharashtra Vikas Agari. The opposition, the best news coming for the opposition after Kerala and Telangana is here in Maharashtra. This could be another big surprise, therefore. How is it projected into seats? What is Yashwan Deshmukh C voter poll saying for Maharashtra? 26 out of 48 for the India Alliance. 26 out of 48. A huge jump because the NDA which won 42 out of 48 last time is down to 22. So if there's one state where the NDA is taking a big hit as per this poll compared to 2019, it's Maharashtra. And that perhaps explains all that's been happening in that state. Breakup of the Shiv Sena, breakup of the NCB because Rahul clearly here too the BJP knew this was the one state they were in trouble which is why they have slightly narrowed the gap, but they're still behind here. Yashwad, are you sure about the numbers for Maharashtra? Because they've taken <laughs> a large part of the NCP, they've taken a large part of the Shiv Sena. If this is where things are at the end, then no matter what happens in this Lok Sabha election in the Assembly, the BJP and what they have is going to face a very tough time. How, why are we ending up with these numbers in your poll? Rahul... Out of the 140 crore people in India, is any damn person sure about Maharashtra as on today? I mean, <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest. People are confused, not just because of the previous mandate, the current mandate, people going here, people going there, parties being split, and now the symbols are with the people who do, did not form the party and with some else. So having said that, all it's a these, maha mess. It's a maha mess. It's not Maharashtra. It's maha mess at this point of time. And let me do a health warning as well on these numbers. Number one, on the voting intent, we have been asking for individual party and leader, Rahul. Which party or leader you are going to vote for? And then we have summed it up like, you know, Uddhav Thakre plus Sharad Pawar plus Congress and Shinde plus Ajit Pawar plus BJP. But what we do not know here... Who is contesting from which seat and who is going to contest against that person from which seat? Which party? What I can see, wherever the BJP tickets would be there, they would be sweeping like anything. Wherever the Ajit Pawar ticket and Shinde Sena ticket would be there, I doubt they will be sweeping in the same way. <clears throat> so the weakest link is on the both sides. On the, on the um, uh, this uh, Maharashtra Vikas Agadi side, the weakest link apparently is the uh, Uddhav Thakre Sena, followed by uh, Sharad Pawar and followed by, uh, followed by Congress and then the Sharad Pawar. So we don't know out of these three and three, which permutation and combination is contesting whom on which seat. Unless we are sure of that, I think this is more of an... No, but I, 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 since and this and is another, your home state, yes. right, Deep, here's the concern that I have just purely academically, right, which is that will votes get transferred in a poll? It's very difficult to capture that. But once you know, okay, it's GVL versus Rashid, mm. then the equations change, exactly right? Exactly the point. Yeah. So right now you don't know that. You're building this scenario on the basis of what respondents are telling you, but the respondent there also doesn't know who's against who. I mean, two, two, tell you two contradictions, Radhi, before you say, I cannot see Uddhav Thakre voter voting for a Congress or the NCP candidate. Mm. Similarly, I cannot see a BJP core voter voting for Ajit Pawar candidate. So there are contradictions. I, 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 I'll, give you, I'll give you two quick points before you come. One, the fact is that this is an interesting state this year because you've got Lok Sabha followed by Vidhan Sabha four months later. And speaking to a number of Maharashtra politicians, they believe the stakes for themselves are much higher in the Vidhan Sabha. So you'll find a number, of, the Vidhan Sabha is which will be very competitive, seat by seat, and a lot of what uh, Yashwan says will play out there. In the Lok Sabha, Rahul, even though the BJP appears prima facie down compared to 2019, I think, and Yashwan is right, the BJP will do well in its pockets of influence. They have strong pockets, especially in urban Maharashtra. The problem for the BJP is there is a general sense that you have struck opportunistic alliances and you have broken no. two parties uh, which you were dead against. But GVL, when I was speaking to top BJP leaders, their numbers were 40 plus. They think it's 40 yeah. plus. But a 5% lead for the India alliance, after all the torpor you've done, if this is where it is, 22 versus 26, then it's obviously 
not the way you are calculating. No, I, I certainly don't see the numbers the way the, the poll is predicted, Eshwan's poll. Uh, primarily because this is an election that Prime Minister Modi is, will be driving. People are voting for PM Modi. They are not voting for individual constituents. This is an election where you will see a massive swing. So anybody voting, uh, but, poll, the poll, anybody but the poll, anybody the premise of the poll, the, the premise that gets, ref the premise which is also the reality of Maharashtra politics which gets reflected in this poll is that BJP at this moment is not a pan Maharashtra party. Modi might be a pan Maharashtra phenomenon. BJP per se is not a pan Maharashtra political no, but party. No, it's in state, even in states of Haryana. Was BJP, was Haryana a BJP state until 2014? Did BJP ever win a couple of seats in Haryana? No. But, but again, once but Modi I... is on the scene, Prime Minister Modi ji, he is one who will drive the entire vote. No, but, 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 but give me the popularity ratings because that will give me an indication. Can, can I just explain? If you have no, those numbers. No, look, last time the BJP contested 25 seats, the Shiv Sena 23. In the, uh, and the BJP and Shiv Sena did extremely well, winning 42. Now what's, gonna, now what's going to happen is the BJP is going to put pressure on both the Shinde Sena and the NCP Ajit Pawar group to contest less. And the BJP will look to contest at least 30 and divide it. Uh, the eight. Ajit Pawar's party is happy not to contest Lok Sabha. Their energies are on Vidhan Sabha. Similarly with Shinde Sena. So that might actually mean the BJP could contest more uh, in the Lok Sabha. I think the worry is that there is genuine anger against the way governments have yeah. been broken, fallen on all sides, towards all politicians. So I think you will find Vidhan Sabha becoming a real battleground. Yes. Lok Sabha, yes. the Modi factor does play yes. out. Sharad yes. Pawar clearly is weaker in a Lok Sabha election at the moment. He may not even be able to sort of, you know, campaign as aggressively there as he would in a Vidhan Sabha, but he will hope for some sympathy. Uddhav Thakre is hoping for sympathy, which may come in a Vidhan Sabha, may not come in a Lok Sabha. So Rahul, you could see Maharashtra in the space of five months having two very different verdicts. But, see, you know, Madhu Yaksha Gaur, this is your good news. You know, if there is one state where you need to perhaps invest more attention in the next few months is Maharashtra. And the feeling is typically the Congress is not seizing the opportunity. You're missing the opportunity to miss an opportunity. Many of your leaders are leaving, joining uh, Ajit Pawar's faction. Uh, Milind Deora left to join uh, Shinde Sena. Today, Baba Siddiqui, your MLA, former MLA from Mumbai, has left, joined, is likely to join Ajit Pawar. So you're not holding on. You're the Kamzor Kadi. Hopefully, your, your, your predictions may hold on to the leaders who are planning to leave, Rajdeep. But having said that, uh, we, this has been expecting in Maharashtra, Rajdeep. I think uh, various projections and studies we have done. And we've been very hopeful on Maharashtra because of this third part, what Raul says, it's not helping with the uh, people's mood. Secondly, I give this credit to you know, Prakash Ambedkar also joining INDA group can help also the uh, uh, Maharashtra Vikas Agdi to win more seats. Uh, Rahul, how do you explain these numbers? The fact that things. you've got what seems on paper a strong alliance now with Ajit Pawar there, Shinde there, the other parties seem weakened, but they still have a 5% lead in this poll. So, with lots of caveats, uh, because no one knows what's going to happen in Maharashtra, but if our thesis uh, is right that people in Maharashtra are unhappy with the way parties have broken alliances, then the expectation would be that the turnout is going to get depressed which means it depends who has the more cadre on the ground. So it, like, so it doesn't matter where Ajit Pawar has gone or uh, uh, Uddhav Thakre has gone. Who has the, like, which of these groups actually got the cadre on the ground? In a depressed uh, turnout scenario, cadres are the, on the ground will make sure that your <coughs> core voters turn out and that group will have advantage. Your sense, Amitabh? See, actually, it's a contradiction. So nobody knows which party has the vote, but Shiv Sena and NCP have the symbol. Symbol plays a very important role in elections. That's number one. As you said, BJP will now bargain for a higher number of seats. So it will be able to win more and also transfer its votes to the SHS and the NCP candidates. Now it depends upon how much they have. However, the bad news for the India Alliance is that Congress becomes the number one party of this India bloc because it is the largest party today in the Vidhan Sabha and it will demand for the highest number of seats. And here is where the India bloc does not have a track record of elections because they have not fought together and the seamless transfer of votes will be between candidates 
is unlikely to no, happen. But if they had any political smarts, the Congress and the India Alliance Rajchingappa should now be doubling down where they see opportunity. Maharashtra, instead of frittering precious ammunition on states which are fallow ground, they should focus on where the land looks politically fertile for them. The problem is that's not how they are thinking. BJP is going state by state, seat by seat, candidate by candidate, plucking, 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 and the Congress is trying to do some kind of an ideological revolution. At least Rahul Gandhi is attempting some kind of an ideological revolution here. But I think the reverse is also true. The way the BJP and uh, Mr. Modi is obviously uh, party to these decisions has been picking up and splitting parties and everything else, and Rajdeep talked about it, doesn't do their image any good. And in Maharashtra, no, I But their gather, calculation is image doesn't matter when it comes to voting. That's their no, brutal if, calculation. If you are saying I'm taking you to a Vixit Bharat, I have, you know, cut corruption down, I'm against dynastic politics, you have to then prove that on the ground. Let GVL yeah. respond to that. I'm yeah. just, let me just finish the argument. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Because I think it's, 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 a, it's a principal thing that happens. In Maharashtra, I have a, I have a feeling, uh, Rajdeep Kudwaj, and he also expressed it, is I think people, there's a Marathi pride that, which you can define in some ways or the other, right? People must be truly fed up at the way these parties have behaved in the, on that, the way they've split, completely cynical. How do you explain that when you want to take this nation to greatness? And you're GBA, let GBA politics. respond to that. You see, people are very, very... Uh, Practical, let me put it this way. People have great trust in Prime Minister Modi. They know he's the one who will deliver Vixit Bharat. And if he does not have the strength in a particular state to sweep that state, let him, let him galvanize, get that support, because we want him to win. No, no, the sure. people no, want him I, to win. Can I ask people you, have I, trust in him. No, so, so, sir, but can I ask you, uh, yeah. to take, you're saying people have faith in Modi. Point taken. But... When Mr. Modi says there is a 70,000 crore scam in irrigation, points virtually to NCP and Ajit Pawar. One week later, Ajit Pawar joins you. What's the message? I was in Nashik, where a gathering which included RSS people were there. And they all said, sir, khoke ki raat diti hai. They openly said it. They openly, the word khoka has become a sort of common parlance on the street of Maharashtra. How does that lift the Prime Minister's image? If one moment you say there's corruption, next moment you tie up with the same corrupt person. How does it lift your image? Let me tell you this, people understand there are some political compulsions. At the end of the day, you want Lord Krishna to win. You want so Ram, 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 Ram to win. There are some, some adjustments they will have to make in the interest of Lord Krishna. Sure, but have you gone too good. far? The point no, is, I'm telling you, you gone this, too is, far? this is the Hindu psyche. This no, is but, the you know, but this is an important we point that Jimmy Narasimha Rao makes. Sir. Because when I was interviewing Dr. Jay Shankar, and I've seen now several people say this. They talk about Bhagwan Ram, they talk about Hanuman, they talk about the Ramayana and the Mahabharat, and they talk about tactical compromises on the battlefield, which, was, which yeah, leads to the war being won. So this is something that we're seeing now quite a lot of, which is what he's talking no, about. No, 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 but then but Raul, Raul, in the you regard, of so, sorry, Dharma. sorry for speaking out because it's my home state, I feel strongly. The fact is, where does it fit in with the kind of Ram Rajya that you talk about? Jeeva. You know, what does it leave no, you with? Is this Ram Rajya you see, that you tie up a Koki there, 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 there is no politician in this country who represents the true political virtues than Prime Minister Modi. No Prime Minister, no Minister, no Chief Minister in this country can match any, even an iota of so you not, the Prime you're Minister not, you're Modi. Not, so what people matter, what matters to them is Prime Minister's qualities. I have total, he is so a you man can do all the total integrity. Of, no, so you're saying you can do all the wheeling and dealing no, on the no, ground, but no. the Prime Minister's uh, uh, image is not touched no, by No, no, they know he is not making compromises. Party, no, but Rahul Varma, certain this is a, local... Yeah, yes, Rashid. Yeah. I mean, by going by Mr. Jeevel Narasimha's logic, uh, you know, BJP should be winning all 543 seats. If Mr. Modi is on a big ticket, he's there on Tamil Nadu also, he's there in uh, Telangana also, he's there in all other states. I think, you know, we must accept what Mr. Yashwan Deshmukh survey is projecting. All we have gone through over 300 seats and there is a, a kind of trend. This, this is a very interesting thing about what, what, what is the findings of Maharashtra. There are four states that were always, they are kind of, you know, outliers and they are giving something in favor of BJP in case of... Uh, Karnataka, in case of uh, Maharashtra, there is a trend, and uh, we will see. No, Maharashtra is not Bihar. with the BJP. It's so the other way around. Precisely. So I am saying there are four states that are very that are very crucial in 2024. Even if the con uh, you know uh, the outcome is uh, you know kind of well known that the BJP has an advantage and Mr. Modi is a favorite. One state is Bengal, other state is Bihar, third state is Karnataka, and fourth state is Maharashtra. 
Now it is giving different kind of trends. I think we must accept uh, what Mr. Yashwan Deshmukh is predicting. We cannot be finding faults with his methodology or, you know, uh, how it will shape okay. Maharashtra. Can we can't I, be having yeah, different yeah, Yes, Rahul, very quickly. So, two, two points. Yes, in politics, all politicians and parties make these tactical calls. But these tactical calls are going to have cost in the long run. Indira Gandhi in 70s did a similar thing. At, at some point, it costed her party. Maybe perhaps when Prime Minister Modi is around, it won't cost. When he's not around, it may cost the party. So all parties face that cost. Second, throughout the survey, and Yashwan uh, ji uh, has to correct me on this, I have not seen a single state, uh, except the smaller ones perhaps, where BJP is gaining votes from 2019 numbers. They're gaining seats. Even in UP, the votes are not uh, basically... They've got uh, a getting... slight up. A slight bump, 53%. Yeah, 50, so, 51, 52. So, in that sense, like, in North, uh, like, there are no big gains coming uh, in terms of vote share, and even in South and West. So, I think where uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Narasimha Rao can explain us that why, despite everything in these five years, BJP is not being I'm able to... You know, and, and, and the point, the interesting point about Maharashtra... No, now, but I'm a, little, the... I'm a little shocked by his argument. Listen... Remember also that you are dealing with 10 years of being in government. Sure. Look at Biden after four years. Look at Macron. Look at Trudeau. Here's a man no. who's been in power for I 10 years. He can retain his historic numbers. Amir that by itself is a superlative you know, I performance. Think, uh, I, I think, Rahul, uh, the point that you made uh, uh, about the two point or less, like somewhere they were leading by 60 points, now they are 50, uh, two point, point. I understand your point. But I, what, I, what I learned from uh, the, uh, the experiment and result of Madhya Pradesh is that eventually it will be relative turnout, yes. which will be playing 3-4% of jump just out of nowhere for the BJP, just by virtue of their supporters being more excited about going to the polls mm. and Congress not being in I, a position as organizationally and resource-wise to pull their supporters. I, what happened in the But, but you know, I, I just want to make a small point, which I think is important. Between 2014 and 2019, Rahul, Mr. Modi's popularity was so high that he was even able to pull his party in state elections where they were otherwise not the number one party. BJP was not the number one party of Maharashtra. Maharashtra. It's after 2014. Mr. Modi pulls it up. 10, 12 percent. They even do very well in state assemblies. After 2019, looks what starts happening. Why, what Start, happened in what December minute? in the assembly sir, elections? Sir, just a minute. December. We, we can come back to December, but 2019 to 2024. One minute. Razi. The BJP in Himachal Pradesh, in Haryana, in yes. Jharkhand, Manai. even in Bihar, in state after state, Mr. Modi alone cannot pull up the state unit. Mr. Modi is still very popular in Maharashtra. But Maharashtra's own leaders, BJP own leaders, are not happy with the kind of compromises they've made to stay in power. Some stage, it may cost them in a Vidhan Sabha. I agree with you, Lok Sabha, it won't cost them, because that becomes Modi versus who. But what happens in your state Let units, GBL therefore Rahul the... Varma makes an important point. Will the BJP go the way the Congress did after 10, 20 years because it makes these you, compromises? You, you can wish that. If you no, like. he said, he but, asked no, a question. No, but, uh, but see, politics, what happens today doesn't influence voting patterns 20 years down the line. I think that makes no sense at all to me. Now, coming back to your question, Modi ji, he was able to pull several assembly elections initially, but you are saying subsequently he did not do so because... You see, once you have pulled an assembly election, the local performance and local yes, leadership yes, that's has, the to, point. Has, to, has to hold there. People will hold every government accountable. You accept that? I, why not? Okay. I think, so I want, I want to press the pedal and go to Gujarat and Goa, and then we have to go to the east, and then we have the big national picture. So Gujarat comes up on your state next. I want to spend uh, very little time here because it's one-way traffic, as one-way traffic can be. I mean, it's like whoosh. There's no comparison. 62% vote share projected in favor of the Bharatiya Janata Party in Gujarat. I mean, 6 out of 10 people, they just want to That's the people. highest so far in the country. 6 out of 10. And we're not even dealing with the smaller states like a Himachal or an Uttarakhand. In a big state like Gujarat, 62%. The Congress had 32% vote share. That's come down even further to 26, down 6 from the last time. Let's now come to seat shares. If you've got 62% vote share in a largely bipolar contest, I mean, you don't need to be Ashwan Deshmukh. Uh, to do the calculation, you can do it yourself. It's 26, but are 26 for...
the BJP in good. They want they want their man back. They want their boy back. Like he look at how hard he's working. A Gujarati fixing this country. We want him. If back. I was a Rajya Sabha BJP MP who stole to contest Lok Sabha, I'll say, मुझे गुजरात की सीट दे दो. कोई भी दे दो. कोई भी सीट गुजरात की दे दो. वडोदरा दे दो. गांधीनगर दे दो. GBL also is ready to contest from Gandhinagar. You see, that's the one, that's the one state where every politician will feel a relative sense of security. There, there is a little state. difference from contesting a Rajya Sabha and a Lok Sabha. Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> इंडियन GBL made a point that uh, don't look at what happens 20 years from now but i just for a moment want to pause because one of the first elections i covered was 1990 gujarat and at that time the bjp had to back the janata dal gujarat of chiman bhai patel to allow to prop him up to form a government see where we've come 35 years later we look at events today if you make mistakes today you pay a price for it 20 years from now that decision of the way the janata dal uh, gujarat was eventually the congress propped it up for a while destroyed the congress in the long term in gujarat the congress replaced a chief minister who had 150 seats in madhav singh solanki can you imagine well, one of BJP the bjp replaced blunders? shivraj singh chauhan no no but 150 <laughs> seats <laughs> bjp but bjp replaced shivraj singh chauhan with modi as the dominant figure that time rahul Ga uh, Ra rajiv gandhi could never really sort of lift the party no, rajiv and the congress didn't think so see that's that's the mistake so i'm saying politicians can make mistakes and therefore they must be conscious of the mistakes okay. they make let's come to goa uh, goa has two seats north and south this is where all of us hope to retire at least uh, rajiv <laughs> and i hope to retire uh, in goa for sure okay so here's goa lovely lovely lovely, lovely state uh, two seats one each is the calculation north and south one seat split Between north and south. North is a is, is clearly to the BJP. I'm presuming Yashwant is giving north. South because there are more south, no, the south. Interestingly, if the AAP Congress alliance works perfectly and it has to work perfectly, it has half a chance. I still believe that the BJP will be very much in the race even in the south. Percentage of Christians has gone down. One of the stories of our times: Christian population in Goa at the start of this century used to be 30 percent plus. It's now just over 20 percent and declining. So you actually even in South Goa. will find it not so easy only a perfect congress half alliance and no other third party like the goa revolutionary party coming in gives them half a chance i still believe advantage bjp in goa and both the seats that's the nature of goa as well so let's look now at the projected seat share of the west and the projected vote share of the west i'll start with the um, the vote share projection Axis My India predicts for the India Today group that the NDA would end up with 48% vote share if you aggregate the states of Gujarat, Maharashtra, and Goa. The India Alliance at 38, a 10% gap here for the NDA. Converted into seats, the NDA is at 51, uh, the India Alliance at 27, and why it seems that this is not as one way as the north is because maharashtra is sticking out as the one state where the bjp's dominance is not quite what the bjp top leadership would like to believe but look at the story rahul the northwest monsoon 154 in the north 51 in the west you're almost home and dry between the two you're slightly below where you were in 2019 there you won 230 plus you're slightly below because of maharashtra in particular but you're still Almost there. Ye 400 par kaise hoga? Hello and welcome I'm Sahil Joshi now I'm at the Mumbai sea front you can see here the Mahim fort and also the Bandra Valley ceiling the most iconic locations in Mumbai because the people have repose confidence in Bharatiya Janata Party right. and NDA and Eknath ji Shinde has done what the people wanted 
people wanted Shiv Sena and BJP together as we have been to together for 25 years. It is only the MLAs who have defected. It is not the people who have defected. Check How is Ajit Pawar like-minded party with the no, BJP? We see it worked in line with the expectation of the people and that's why we are confident of our victory. If you are so confident about 370 votes and 400 for NDA, why do you want all other alliances with you? Why do you want all small parties with you? We are shifting our focus to Gujarat. Confidence in the people's mandate is very, very uh, certain. The youngsters have uh, come in and they have taken the major positions in Gujarat. I feel things will be very different. In Gujarat, if you ask any Congress leader, but they are all demotivated in Gujarat, purely because they know they are going to lose. Election of 2024 will be an election of Modi versus Mudda. Our phones are buzzing, multiple politicians, uh, their well-fishers, supporters across states calling, wanting to know something on the sites. There's no sideshow happening. If you want to know what the numbers are, stay tuned to our coverage on India Today uh, as we take you through state by state, region by region, and then finally the national big picture. We want to come to the fascinating state of Bihar, where Nitish Kumar's U-turn has made things very topsy-turvy and very exciting, which is also why the Mood of the Nation poll had to do extra polling to be able to capture what's happening in Bihar. On your screen right now are the vote share numbers for Bihar first. 53% is what they had in the last uh, Lok Sabha elections. They're projected to be at 52, but there is on the surface, it seems not much has changed, but so much has changed internally because the JDU, which was earlier with the India Alliance, has now jumped over, which is what kind of keeps the BJP-led India, India Alliance where it was. Uh, the India Alliance was at 31%. That's expected to go up to 38%. Let's see how this converts into seats. For the first time now, on your screen, the Bihar projections on the 40 seats of Bihar, Yashwan Deshmukh and his team at Seawota are predicting that the NDA could end up at 32. Remember, they, apart from Kishan Ganj, they had 39 out of 40 seats the last time. They expected to come down 7 this time round. Uh, the India Alliance, which had only 1, expected to go up to 8. So just imagine, Rajdeep, if Janta Dal United was actually here, BJP was staring at bigger losses in the orange column and the India Alliance was looking at bigger gains, which is what explains that somersault. You know, the fascinating aspect is that when you went to Uttar Pradesh, the BJP is holding its own. The moment you've gone into neighboring Bihar, even though the BJP has now struck an alliance with Nitish Kumar, gone back to its own party, it's down compared to 2019. In fact, if you look at the BJP overall, Except for Uttar Pradesh, none of the major states are seeing a major jump no, for but the Yashan, BJP. In Bihar, so that's, that's what makes Bihar very interesting. No, but does, because this happened so close to your poll, does your polling account for the full impact of Nitish coming back to the BJP? Not, not really. I mean, because we, we had to do a snap poll and see what kind of impact it was. We could sense two major things. Number one, yes, there is almost like 8% arithmetic jump you know, from the India faction to the NDA, just by moving JDU supporters to this side, to that side. Which could However, also mean that Nitish is now worth only 8%. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is, this is one of the points which is like, instead of 16%, which he polled in 2014, his core vote is, looks like more like 8% kind of thing, number one. Number two, the, we, have, we still don't know who is contesting how many seats, you know, and uh, please remember, even Paswan's party is split into two. So we have just taken in whatever the seat allocation was there in 2019 as our base one. And, and we realized that the probability of JDU tally going down, even within the part of the NDA, is quite significant. Which means last time they contested 17, 116, but they could even very well come down, crashing down to single digit. So what this means is that in the overall, Yes, JDU did a wise thing probably to come back and, you know, safeguard their own thing. Uh, but if the NDA needs to pick up its tally, probably they, BJP needs to contest more seats because there is a significant anger against the JDU, not just among the RJD supporters, but even in no, the but BJP Tiwari, You come from Bihar. Does this poll account for the potential winning bandwagon effect? The fact that if voters in Bihar think that this is a Modi election, a BJP election, then they may more likely than just at the time of separation choose to go along with the NDA. 
That is more, most likely to be the case because as Yashwanji is saying, BJP is likely to contest on a higher number of seats, guess, get, give lesser number of seats to JDU, which is facing a decline in its support base. But if you see, the, both the parties were at 37% vote share. 15% is the Modi premium because JDU was with BJP in Vidhan Sabha elections. So the Vidhan Sabha elections, when it factors into account the Modi impact is 15% straight away. So, but with this swing of 8% from Mahagadbandan to NDA, what would have been the result? It would have been 46, 42% in favor eight, of... The, the result of, would have been of, just bang up. So again, BJP being a practical or a pragmatic party, clearly saw that there would have been significant losses in Bihar. The guy who won't this like this U-turn was not is being Nitish done. Kumar. If he thinks he's worth Rahul Verma only 8%, you know, that just shows how, like the BSP in uh, Uttar Pradesh, like the JDS in Karnataka, the JDU seems to be a very diminished force. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I, I hope Nitish Kumar realizes it. Uh, and Nitish Kumar perhaps understands that he's diminishing and he's still trying to make most of But with this 8%, he's still chief minister. No, no, yes. that, <laughs> the most so, valuable 8% so, you can have. So think of it. Since 2013, he knows that he's declining. But what he knows that without him, no government can be formed till at least till 2025. And he's making most of it. He's basically, he goes with, uh, so he's, he's, he's one of those politicians where he's being opportunistic and ideological at the same time. He, he joins RJD, gets his caste census done. Comes to uh, BJP, does certain other things. So he's trying to make most <laughs> of it in a very, very small but, but you know, look at, maybe the BJP looked at Yashwan's last board of the nation poll. Yeah. And hmm. there were three states where the BJP was in clear trouble. There was Bihar, there was Karnataka, and there was Maharashtra. Yeah. What did they do in Maharashtra? They broke the two major parties, Shiv Sena earlier, then the NCP. In Karnataka, you went and tied up with JDS, brought back Yedurappa into the fold through his son. And in Bihar, you got Nitish Kumar back into the fold. I saw this photograph in the morning papers today, Prime Minister shaking hands with Nitish Kumar. And I just wonder, you know, what makes politicians tick? Here are two people who've attacked each other personally at various stages. Nitish Kumar refusing more than a decade ago to even share a stage with the Prime Minister. But all is fair in love and politics. And I come back to it, Rahul. Really, the I BJP think... has shown itself to be a party of power while claiming to be an ideological party and the Congress has done just the reverse. No, but I don't but agree. I, no, no. Once they're in power, they're ideological. In the uh, their logic is no. So uh, they've scrapped Article 370. They've yes. brought India the Ram Mandir. Sure. What other proof do you need of ideology? No, I'm not saying the ideology UCC, is diluted. Yeah, UCC is come I, about in Uttarakhand. So just, once get they, their formula is you win and then you get ideological. No, to win you don't no, worry no, about. No, ideology. All I was and saying is that there were stages where the Congress had seen these were they were going to get uh, the BJP had seen they could be down by double digits. Bihar was one of those states. Yeah. Let's find out a way to tackle Bihar. The point, Rashid Kidwai, this is the difference. You see, I got a call uh, mm. just now from a UPA leader. Please show me which are the states where the BJP is growing. I said it's not about the BJP growing but holding its own. And they've held their own mm. by strategic politics. Does the opposition recognize that, uh, 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 Rashid? Yeah, I think, or will they only blame the enforcement director? Yes, I think Nitish Kumar's story is not complete without the opposition uh, politics. Nitish Kumar seems to have gone on a rebound. He was he worked very hard for this India Alliance. And when Mamta Banerjee, you know, propped up Malikarjun Karge, and when Rahul Gandhi said that you know he will talk to Mamta before appointing Nitish Kumar as a uh, India Alliance convener, all these things look like... You're saying you know, if he was first. appointed convener, he would have stayed on? Pre precisely, because Nitish Kumar was not doing 8%. He knew his days are numbered. He wanted to be a prime ministerial face. He would not he have said it. And not this is... He was con made convener. Yeah, think yeah. of it. After 2023 December results, he's also making calculations. Being convener is only uh, worth if you have a shot at something. So he, he thought he was on the losing... Shama Mohammed joining us of the Congress party. Shama Mohammed. Do you believe that the in Bihar, the BJP in this last stretch has trumped you by taking someone who was not too long ago seen as the architect of the India Alliance? So perception-wise and now in reality as per our numbers, the Congress-led India Alliance has lost a big opportunity. I don't agree with you on that, Rajdeep. Everybody knows what Nitish Kumar is. Like I said before, if he had to go, he had to go. He keeps jumping from here and there. But you said a very important thing is, what is the ideology of the Bhatia Janta Party? For example, let's look at the Meghalaya election. 
they were with npp in meghalaya before the election during the election they went their separate ways mr amit shah has put in the manifesto that they the the party npp is corrupt and when they come to power they will take action they want two seats in that election and they said very clearly konrad sangma and npp is corrupt they go and join the party after the election so yes so they will do any opportunist when it comes to election they are ideological when it comes to governance so they bring in as rahul rightly said article 370 ram mandir maybe uniform civil again. code after the I next election ideological in governance strategic opportunism tactic. if you want to call tactic. it that tactical so, uh, then, politics then, when then, it comes then, to uh, Rajdeep, elections rajdeep let me ask you one more thing then why is that you can eat beef in goa But you cannot eat beef in Karnataka. Okay, They so that's now. This is let's I just stick really for the moment to Goa. the data. So no, no, they have We... no ideology. And one more thing, one more thing, one last point. This is not mood of the nation. I would call it mood of the media also. Today I was in the, I was traveling from Delhi to Imphal, and the person in the plane says, you know, देखो देखो मोदी क्या कह रहे हैं. That the we are dividing it into north and south. It's all about what Modi. But I don't understand why the paper and the media does not talk about how a present sitting prime minister insults the first prime minister of India, calls him all the names in the world, and nowhere in the world they do that. No, and let's not forget he was a freedom fighter. So why is nobody written about that? How the okay. present prime minister keeps insulting a freedom fighter, the first prime minister of India? And see, so you have to understand people. Get moved, carried away with what media is doing. Before 2014, we were questioned hundred times. I fail to understand why the present government is not. You could write an article on why beef is allowed in in Goa, but not in okay. Karnataka. West Bengal, another big state where the battleground is uh, going to be tough. Let's take a look at the vote share first. Remember, the BJP did very well in Bengal. The breakthrough election of 2019. Now in vote share, NDA 40% holding its own. The Trinamool Congress 43.5%. Here we've separated the TMC from the rest of the India Alliance because it's likely Congress and Left will contest together. That's other 7.3. So Trinamool Congress 43.5. Others including Congress and Left 7.3. NDA 40. How does this translate into seats? BJP 19. They won 18 last time, 19 this time. They will be happy that they are holding their own in Bengal. TMC 22 down one. Congress plus left is one seat. So Bengal once again Rahul becoming TMC versus BJP. Congress left getting squeezed out, and clearly the BJP holding its own. Rahul Verma, is there a way of knowing? What this may have looked like if the TMC and the Congress and the uh, left can't be together, but the Congress and the TMC were together, how much of a material difference could it have made to these vote share numbers? I, like it's hard, right? Because you don't know what kind of transfers will take place and what the seat allocation to different uh, parties. Yashwant, how much of the Muslim vote is the Congress actually splitting, or is it largely going on mass to the Trinamool? You see, the the minority vote saturation towards TMC is already done and dusted. Yeah. So I don't think there is anything from the minority vote perspective left much to whatever the eight to ten percent vote that left in the Congress. But you are are picking up right still. Uh, yeah. How much? How much vote are you picking up for the Congress? You see, they they together they are polling every about four to five percent each in 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 that way. But the funny thing is that I kept on thinking why exactly Mamata Banerjee decided to go on her own, and when I took a deep dive and tried to understand the composition of the what is left of uh, uh, left and the Congress vote, I realized that big number of them is actually anti Mamata, not anti BJP, which is now left with them. So there was a clear and present danger if the Congress and the left would have been in Mamata's alliance. That this vote, eight to ten percent, a huge chunk shifting them to BJP rather than coming Mamta's way. So, so yeah, with one caveat, you know, the left definitely had to be on the other yeah. side. Mamta was very clear; yeah. she needed a three-cornered race. The left voter needed to split the anti-Mamta vote. The Congress voter is yes. more interesting, okay. especially in areas like Malda, which the BJP, you know, did very well last time. There, the Muslim consolidation. And she saw it in a by-election which she lost last year, which troubled her because suddenly the Muslim vote was drifting towards the Congress. So in four to five seats, I think it could make a difference. Yes, But four to five, so these numbers could have changed by four to five if even now the Congress ties up with with the left. That's about it. Also, not more than that. Look into the statement and look into the body language of Adirda and everybody else within the Congress rank and file. 
the way their campaign is has been it looks more of anti mamta less of anti modi so they are holding on to whatever they have they are understanding there is a huge chunk of their vote which is primarily anti mamta rather than pri but anti i i will make again one caveat adil choudhry is worried about adil choudhry adil yeah, rajan choudhry right. wants to win look, his own seat look, look, it's not I'm about a bengal strategy look, if there was a prop and this is where the india alliance gets it horribly wrong Do right. you have a strategy for Bengal, or do individual leaders dictate, dictate terms to terms you but as I to think, how you? No, 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 we must point. remember. We must remember. Uh, Mamta Banerjee has not left uh, India Alliance, so this is the kind part of tacit understanding also. There's the left Congress Alliance uh, just to prevent uh, you know the extra BGP getting extra. Oh come on! There is no the tacit alliance when Adi Ranjan Chaudhary comes every week to Kolkata and attacks you in personal terms. No, no, There's no Mamta, tacit no, alliance between Adi and Mamta. No, no. Let's be very I, clear. So is no, he no. a Trojan horse? Rajiv no, no. It's not about Trojan no, horse. No, no, Mamta is also doing I, a lot of poaching. No, no. By the way, sure. I mean, She is not the point one, is one, one way street. No, no. India Alliance should have decided. This is Mamta's point. Who is going to drive your alliance in Bengal? Is Adi Ranjan Chaudhary going to decide it, or am I going to decide it? Congress got zero seats in a Vidhan Sabha election just a couple of years ago. Can Adi Ranjan Chaudhary simply to protect his own seat, sort of dictate terms to Mamta? It won't happen. I think the India Alliance has singularly failed to have any chemistry on the ground, let, which is why let Shama Muhammad responded. It's a it's a notional loss of I agree with Rajdeep Ji. Congress should have formed an alliance with TMC. There would have been a vote transfer because Congress vote is also anti PJP vote. It would have transferred to TMC, and they could have won five to six seats extra. extra. You extra. see, Amitabh, so it's a notional loss, and it's an optical loss also because it sends a wrong message to the entire. Absolutely, Sh Shama Muhammad, you want to respond? Yeah, see, I agree that we should be with uh, Mamta Banerjee in uh, West Bengal because we are supposed to be gaining there with her. There is a different story in Kerala because here in Kerala we are the principal opposition. Let's understand that. We have uh, the UDF has 19 out of the 20 uh, Lok Sabha seats, and we've got uh, more than uh, 30 But seats in the man. assembly also. So we are the principal opposition. Whereas in West Bengal, from 44 to 0, we have come out. You know, so I, being from Kerala, believe that it is more important to be with TMC than to be with the left. Okay, uh, Sanju Verma my... now joins us. Sanju, it's been a good showing in the north, not so good showing in the south. Strong showing in the West and in West Bengal, which we're talking about right now, it seems that the BJP is roughly where is where it was. My understanding, on the basis of multiple conversations, are the BJP's own polls are showing them 25 plus. This poll seems to suggest that they're not quite there. Uh, our data seems to suggest that the uh, BJP could end up at 19, which is just one more than what they had last time. You know, uh, Rahul and Rajdeep. uh first and foremost uh, i just have this to say i think uh, survey after survey uh, and especially mood of the nation uh, which is so hugely watched uh, thanks to rajdeep who's trending every second day and rahul uh, kaval uh, who never misses an opportunity to show rajdeep the mirror <laughs> be that as it may oh, 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 i just have oh, this wow, to wow. say <laughs> we are not the india alliance where you are going to create divisions on a lighter note are you sanju ji no divisions on a lighter note ye bjp ki achhi strategy hai divide and rule you are trending every day thoda shant ho jao learn to be gracious when i am giving you a compliment i'll be the left handed one anyway okay. now coming to the more serious point you know i remember um, i have been on a zillion debates on these surveys that have been uh, carried out in the last 12 or 24 odd months and everybody after the west bengal assembly elections of 2021 don't forget in lok sabha 2019 from west bengal we got 18 seats one eight with a 41% vote share but come west bengal assembly elections 2021 while we improved our tally from 3 seats to 77 which was a 2400% plus jump our vote share fell from 41% in lok sabha 2019 from west bengal to 38% and what did political pundits say अरे भाई तीन परसेंट का वोट शेयर की गिरावट हो गई है बंगाल में दी मैजिक दैट है लोकसभा टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन ऑफ गेटिंग टू हैपन इन लोकसभा टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर इफ असेंबली इलेक्शन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी इंप्रूविंग ऑन आर लास्ट टैली ऑफ एटीन सीट्स एंड इंक्रीजिंग दैट टू वन नाइन नाइनटीन सीट्स आई थिंक Uh, the actual result may surprise you on the positive. Okay. I won't be surprised yeah. if we are going to see even twenty-five. I actually just went to uh, social media to check the trends, and the first trend, the top trend nationally at this moment, is mood of the nation. 
So Mood of the Nation is a top trend. So well done, everyone. Uh, you guys are clearly doing a good job. And at least the audiences are plugged in and watching, which is fantastic. So thank you. That means a lot. Okay, let's run through all the other states of the East, starting with Jharkhand, where much has been happening. Chief Minister Hemant Soren arrested a few days ago. How is it playing out in the polls as per Yashan's Mood of the Nation? 2024 projection, NDA 56% up 1%. India Alliance 30% down 5, others 14. In terms of seats, NDA 12, India 2, same as 2019. Round. Next Let's Chhattisgarh. come now to Chhattisgarh. Uh, in Chhattisgarh, India Today C voter are projecting that the BJP's vote share will go up from 51 to 54. They won the recent uh, assembly elections and on the back of that, their vote share is actually going up. The Congress's vote share was at 41 in the last elections. That could now come down 3% to 38. When converted into seats, uh, the Congress had two seats last time round. That could come down to one. Uh, the BJP had nine seats last time round. That could go to 10. So Chhattisgarh, the BJP doing well and holding on to its gains from the last election. That's right. The honeymoon effect clearly there in Chhattisgarh. Let's turn to a state which is again fascinating because there will be Lok Sabha and Vidhan Sabha in the state of Odisha. 2024 projection NDA 40% uh, vote share. That's plus 2. India 12%. Naveen Patnaik's BJD at 41%. Down 2%. How is this all translating into seats? Virtually again a repeat of what we are seeing in, uh, 20, in 2019. In fact, a slight jump for the BJP. 10 seats up 2. The India Alliance, mainly the Congress there, is getting 0 down 1. And the Biju Jatta, the 11 down 1. So clearly again, all these states are almost repeating 2019. In fact, state after state, Rahul, if you look at the map of India, in many of the states, it's a repeat of 2019. Is there a way of looking at these numbers, Yashwan, and giving our viewers some insights into what may happen in an assembly context in Orissa? Because like Andhra, Orissa two polls at the same time. Orissa, there is a very clear split vote. There is an upswing for the BJP as far as the Lok Sabha voting is concerned. But as far as the assembly voting is concerned, it is clearly the Naveen Patnaik Still, BJD way. Assam. So, Assam, uh, let's look at the seat shares for Assam. Last time the BJP had 9 seats, that could go up to 12. Remember, Assam is 14 seats. The Congress and the AIUDF was at 3, that could now come down to 2, that's down 1. So Assam, BJP consolidating its leads and gains. Let's now look at the overall East seat share. Uh, if you look at the 153 seats and if I look at the vote shares, 47% of the vote for the NDA, 37% for the India Alliance. When converted into seats in the east of India, 103 seats for the NDA, 38 for the India Alliance, 12 for the others. And I think this is a story. You know, while we focused a lot on the BJP's dominance in North India, its dominance in Western <coughs> India, it is in the east that the sun is rising, the lotus is beginning to bloom, particularly when you include a Bihar and the northeast. I'm presuming Yashwan's included all the states of the northeast, the Manipur's, uh, the Nagaland. No, so we will spend time on each of the northeastern yeah. states, so just so that people know. Uh, we're we're going to go into a break, show you the national big picture, but we're going to spend time on each of the northeastern states as well. Hello and welcome once again to India Today's Mood of the Nation poll. All the findings in India Today magazine brought to you by Sea Voter. We've gone state by state over the last three hours. We've gone from the north, south, west and east. It's time now to give you the big picture. What would happen if general elections, which are not too far away, were held today. Rahul, take it away. Give us the big numbers. Can Narendra Modi do his hat-trick after all? Will it be Char so far? Rahul. This is the moment all of you have been waiting for. No Indian Prime Minister since Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru has won thrice over in three successive elections. If elections were held today, does the NDA reach Char so par as they'd like to believe? Is the BJP achieving its mission 370? We've seen the talk. Let's see the numbers. The NDA Alliance projected to bag 45% of the vote share, which is what the NDA Alliance had in the last election as well. The India Alliance expected to bag 38% of the national vote share, which is 11% more than the last time but that's also because last time it was UPA this time it is the India Alliance so parties like uh, the Trinamool at this moment this could change soon after our broadcast but at this moment officially they are part of the India Alliance which is why as a national aggregate their vote share is up 
eleven percent. The others from twenty eight percent are now coming down to seventeen percent, down eleven. That's as far as the alliance-wise vote share is concerned, where there is a very clear gap of seven percentage points between the NDA and the India Alliance. Let's take a look at how this converts into seats. Char so far is Prime Minister Modi's war cry. They're heading there, but not there yet. 335 is the current projection by Sea Voter for the India Today group for this Mood the Nation opinion poll, the last MOT and before the Lok Sabha elections. 335, way short of 400 at this moment. Uh, this is 18 down from the last election. So if you take all the allies together, uh, they had 18 more last time. They're down at 335 at this moment. And the India alliance is at 166. That's 75 seats more than the last time. Uh, the others are at 42, 57 down. But that's an apples and oranges comparison because some of the parties which were in the others have now moved to the India alliance. The big story though is that the NDA is set to come back to power quite comfortably. See, you want to hit a, you want to hit four centuries in one match, you're hitting three and a half centuries just yet. And remember, Rajdeep, there's also the fact that once this message goes out that Prime Minister Modi is comfortably placed, then a lot of people may decide, hey, what can we do? Because if he's coming back, so that ultimately could also come into play. You know, there seems to be, Rahul, an inevitability about the outcome. I think. This is one of those strange or rare elections where it almost seems, at least when you speak to uh, political observers uh, and politicians, that the outcome is known. It's a question of where does the NDA, BJP-led NDA end up? Where does the BJP end up? These numbers are showing the BJP is roughly just around where it was in 2019. The NDA is marginally down, but as you said, there could be a bump it could get in the next two months because if it campaigns hard and the BJP is known to do that, plus, could it get more allies? Remember, all of this is before the possibility of a Chandrababu Naidu or an Akali Dal joining in. All of that could take the BJP above 350. I know that there is all this buzz about Char so Par. That's perhaps will require the perfect storm. But the BJP has set the base. I think what this mood of the nation poll shows People want Mr. Modi back. The majority seem to want Mr. Modi back for a third term in the first past the post system. And unless there's some kind of a miracle in the next six to eight weeks, the India Alliance will have to simply accept next time or good luck to you 2029. 2024 appears as close to a done deal, Rahul, with these numbers. It'll and the be Prime interesting Minister's popularity to see, remains pretty high again. It will be interesting to see whether he just wants to equal Nehru's record or actually be around the next time to beat Nehru's record or at least attempt to beat uh, Pandit Nehru's record. Let's take you through how the party-wise vote share and seat share would stack up. We looked at the alliance-wise numbers. Let's now look at the party-wise numbers. The Bharatiya Janata Party had 37% of the vote in the last election. That is expected to go up by a massive 3%. I'm saying massive because in a national context, for one party to be able to increase its vote share by 3%, that is a very significant achievement. The Congress had 20% of the vote share last time. Sea voters predicting at this moment that that could come down to 19, just a dip of one. Others were at 43, they could be at 41. The big story there though is that the Bharatiya Janata Party, which in the last elections was standing at 37% vote share, could go up a massive 3% to 40. You know, Rahul, there are two big stories. One is the BJP story, the possibility, as you said, that Prime Minister Modi will emulate what Nehru did, win three consecutive elections. The other story is the Congress Party losing three consecutive elections and its vote share not changing. I keep repeating, there's one figure that stands out for me, Rahul. The BJP got around 7.5 crore votes in 2009. It went up by a whopping 200% to over nearly 22 crores by 2019 in a decade. The Congress vote has remained relatively static at 11 crores. So while we are looking at the BJP and the big picture of Mr. Modi you know, winning his hat-trick, We've got to also look at the Congress Party. And I think somewhere 
there no, are but two it's not stories static. there. If uh, the pie is growing up in your your that's portion, right. say you're actually you're declining very badly. So you're not static. See, your, you're declining. Your vote share is remaining static. For a no, moment, and before we kickstart our discussion, if you're, if you're let's take you through how this same. stacks up in terms of seats. We've looked at the vote share numbers. Let's take a look at how many seats each of these parties is projected to beg. The BJP, remember, had a 3 not 3 rifle that they were firing last time. This time it's 304. So it's not Mission Team So Satta, that's his rallying war cry. They're, they're not there yet. 304 is where they stand. 71 is where the Congress uh, stands, which is up 19 from the last time. Remember, there are gains in states like Telangana. Uh, which are helping the Congress do better than it did last time. Others at this moment are at 168 down 20. So that's where it stands. Prime Minister Modi very comfortably placed to be PM once more, which is why Rachingappa and his team are saying it's get set for a hat trick. Raj, you want to give us what your headline is? What is, is it hat trick? Uh, is it the Modi uh, momentum? What is it? It is. Set for a hat trick. <laughs> so, is, is it about Modi? Is it about the BJP? Uh, how do you see it? I, I see your cover has Mr. Modi imperiously walking so we're down. So, heading for the heading for a hat trick. But let's you know just for a moment look at the figures that are there. Yes. I mean, it's commendable that Mr. Modi, in his tenth year, is able to deliver the kind of numbers to the BJP and the NDA. And look at the term that he does it. In the second term, I mean, every world leader was under pressure, put on the mat. There was a once-in-a-century pandemic that was there. You had a, a co complete collapse of the economy. You had uh, China, the Chinese intrusion coming in. You had two wars, uh, the Gaza and uh, Ukraine. Ukraine war that pushed up inflation. Everything could, that could go wrong goes wrong. And yet, when we see at the end of... Uh, 10 years, Mr. Modi is not only shining, but is up there in the league of greatness, possibly statesmanship that is happening. So I think we have to give him credit for what is it. Now, whether he's going to beat the record of uh, uh, Nehru, that has to be seen, as, but the polls indicate that. Whether he will beat the record of uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi in 1984, that is to be seen, because 400 at the moment from what uh, uh, we took in these last three hours, three or four bellwether states the NDA seems to be holding, but not really, uh, 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 you know, uh, catching up to the 370 that we, uh, uh, Mr. Modi wanted. I think what, we'll, what we will see in the next two months, there will be, I believe, because the, the, the way it is trending, and I studied what we did in 2014, when Dr. Manmohan Singh was aspiring and the Congress party was aspiring for a third term. If you looked at our uh, Mood of the Nation poll at that time, in January 2014, the Congress was down to 100, and uh, the UPA was down to 122 seats. And the BJP, the trend line was that the uh, NDA and the BJP was going to win it. Here, it's just the opposite. The ruling dispensation is doing it. So I would think that we are going to see a Modi wave because they can only get better from here. They seem to have equaled what they've done, and we're going to see this it's huge movement. There are caveats, which... We will come to the that. caveats yeah. in a moment, but... Is that how you see it? The big takeaway is the BJP has consolidated, holding its own. If anything, Yashwant Deshmukh, it could go up possibly in the next two months, depending on the nature of the campaign, the kind of momentum that you tend to get, that the winner gets a kind of bandwagon effect. Well, uh, bandwagon or not, uh, I have I've explained the relative turnout thing, which I think will be a very decisive factor. Because I believe within the same vote share and sphere, just the higher relative turnout will give BJP extra 2-3 point jump. Just by virtue of being able, organizationally and resourcefully, taking the supporter from their home to the polling booth. Out of that. Having said that, you all know that from the seat projection perspective, I am a very, very conservative pollster. For what Raj is indicating, what Amitabh is indicating probably is, you know, they are poking me that, yes, well, this is the starting block. And I agree to that because when I look into the gap of 20% vote share for the BJP, Rajdeep, it's like it is likely to end up a complete sweep in many of the states where marginally I have probability wise given two or three seats to the others. So if you look into the 335, it can easily be 350 just by taking into the other sweeping stakes of the 
BJP. So, so is there any caveat at all, Rahul Verma? Is there an inevitability of the outcome, as I said, where the question now remains whether the BJP is where Yashwant has pegged them at 303, NDA 335, or does the BJP go up to 340, 350, NDA 370, 380? Is this, are these the only two scenarios you see, or is there a possibility of a 2004 miracle that the opposition is holding on to? In Indian politics, there, are, there is always possibility, but the other term I'll use is probability. The probability of this now turning uh, in a diverse direction is very, very low. And see what is happening in some ways, just to sort of like add to what Rahul was saying. PM Nehru in his successive elections, 52, 57, 62, Congress vote share did not improve. What is happening with BJP, 31, 37, and now projected is 40, uh, four months ahead or uh, three months ahead of election. And given if it's a conservative estimate, uh, BJP being an organizational party can actually pick up more votes. With that kind of vote difference, the seat translation is going to be heavy. And, and second point, Congress is holding on to its 18% vote share and 70 seats because of its perhaps uh, uh, performance in Telangana and states like that. And we don't know what would conspire in some of these states if BJP ties up with Say, BRS, Telangana seat tally might change. What happens to the Congress party, uh, uh, Rashid Kidwai? Three consecutive defeats, 15 years out of power, and while they may get 70 seats as, as per our poll, that could even come down to 40, 50. If the BJP goes up by 2030, where does that leave the Congress party? Can it hold together with a third debacle? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, Rajdeep, uh, it may sound a bit, uh, bit odd and bizarre, but the Congress would be very happy to uh, know Yashwant uh, Deshmukh's, you know, uh, finding and mood of the nation that Congress is getting 71 Lok Sabha seat. It will give them a formal position of leader of opposition in the Lok Sabha. <laughs> Remember, Congress is very easily satisfied party, and that's the one reason why it is going down. On the other side, you know, when Bharat Jodo Yatra, and this is a very big lesson for Rahul Gandhi, when Bharat Jodo Yatra was started first phase, it was thought that the with that yatra, uh, Rahul Gandhi would, uh, Congress would be able to increase, uh, you know, its uh, vote percentage by 3 to 4 percent. They were actually uh, hoping for 25 percent. So it's a very bad news that Congress is not getting vote percentage, no increase in vote percentage. I think individually in states, there will be breakaway Congress factions because nobody wants to be in a position forever. You know, Amitabh, your big takeaway from these uh, numbers, clearly it shows two months before the election, uh, perhaps, as I said, more than any other election, a dead certainty as to who the winner is. I can only compare it with January 2019. January 2019, which is the best comparison to make, the Congress had just won three states in North India, and the poll suggested a tightening of the contest. The India Today mood of the nation actually suggested a tightening of in the fact, contest. A coalition government for the NDA. A, a potential coalition government for the NDA. Now we are seeing a clear majority for the BJP. What's your big takeaway? Is Indian politics heading towards some kind of a dominant party system or is it about Prime Minister Modi being this domineering leader? So BJP is of course attaining the poll position which Congress used to acquire during the 1950s to 1990s. At that point of time, Congress was competing mostly against regional parties. Here we have BJP competing mostly against regional parties because regional parties uh, uh, tally is 168 seats. BJP is increasing its vote share. Congress is holding on to its vote share and all its gains are coming at the cost of regional parties. In fact, in fact, the story, Rahul, for me is again, once again, that. that Remember, 186 seats, roughly 186 seats, direct contest in 2019, Congress versus BJP. Congress won just 12. BJP won most of those seats by double digits. Nothing has changed. It's almost as if the Congress is where it is, comatose in a way electorally and the BJP is growing and no, because you, they're not listening and, and and the other factor which is also in a way worrying is the north-south divide the BJP dominating North India dominating West India dominate, doing even very well in the east it's only the south which seems to be marching to its own beat you know, and I wonder what the implications of that will be long term if the Congress had any good sense and I'm not at this moment certain that the people who do are looking so obsessively at this election in the way that the BJP is. They should sit into a room, Messrs. Kharge, Rahul Gandhi, Uddhav Thakre, Sharad Pawar and say, let's thrash out the Maharashtra seat sharing formula before we leave. Sit from morning till evening, go seat by seat, thrash it out, compromise and 
do the same for Telangana, figure out who your candidates are, get on the ground, instead of just pattering your ammunition all over the place, you focus on their... No, folk, but they're not even invited, Rashid. That's the problem. No, Each no, of those leaders are saying... Because Rahul Gandhi is there, so they need to... But what is, I, more, no, what, what, is, more what, what is more important? Sitting and fighting and trying to win the few seats you have an opportunity of winning? Or this yatra which only See, seems I to be mean, causing can, trouble? Can I, can I, can I, I make an even more controversial point? point? Which is what? If I was the opposition today and I saw your numbers and the mood of the nation and all of us predicting the inevitability or the probability of the outcome, I would actually see one opportunity. And that is focus on state elections. There are going to be, look, there's a Lok Sabha election which the outcome seems inevitable. It's about whether... No, but you cannot, if you're in the opposition, you cannot take my, it as inevitable. No, my, you have to fight the election. No, you have to fight. Can, uh, that's why I said it's a contentious and point. The, I would put my, I have 100 rupees in my pocket. I would put at least 80 rupees of that into state elections. There's Haryana, there's Maharashtra, there's Jharkhand, there's Bihar next year. Then there's a series of other elections. Look, in the Lok Sabha, you can pick up Give, I'm only going by the mood of the nation, uh, uh, Rahul. You can pick up 20, 30 seats by what you're saying. Better seat adjustments, do a little bit in Maharashtra, work out your numbers. You should do that. Of course you should. Every election has to be fought. But when I look at the priorities, my uh, concern for this kind of opposition is that they seem to not even be able to pick up, get their act together often in state elections. Maharashtra is a good example. There's an election in Maharashtra in September, October. You win Maharashtra. You're, you, you know, you lift the morale. Imagine what happens if you lose Lok Sabha badly and then also you uh, suffer a debacle in Maharashtra and Haryana. Eventually, and, and don't forget, Karnataka, the government could be on notice given the yeah. kind of numbers that we are showing. Telangana, the Congress has a small majority. So, you know, the Congress Mukt Bharat or an opposition Mukt Bharat is in a way a reality if these numbers hold on. I would say focus on state elections, get your act together and I agree with you. At the moment, you should be sitting across a table, working out seat sharing, working out some kind of plan. I don't see that, which is why I think Yashwant has underestimated the BJP. My numbers are, I did my own polling, 340 plus BJP, 370 plus ND Alliance. I'm not ruling out even a bigger number than that. Yes. That's, that's the way I see it. I believe that the opposition is totally no, but despondent. Rashid Kidwai, are we seeing a phenomena similar to what we saw during the Gujarat Assembly elections, where because of what Rajdeep is saying, because of what others in the opposition seem to be thinking, the opposition just gives up the fight. Like the, when I traveled through Gujarat in the last Assembly election, the opposition, the Congress wasn't even in the fight. AAP was trying to put up some fight. See, it's a self-perpetuating prophecy. If you don't fight, your opponents do even better. The BJP ended up with 154 out of 182. If the Congress had fought harder on every seat in every region, they may have done better. You give up the fight thinking, you take what Rajdeep is saying seriously, say because the opposition takes what he's saying very seriously. If they start taking what he's saying seriously <laughs> and not fighting this Lok Sabha election no. and preparing for the assembly election, jitna bura pitting ho usse aur pit jayenge. So, Rahul, that that too late, late. Too late. See, see, Rahul, ye sab hota no, chahiye tha no, chhe mahine pehle. You see, the biggest problem with this opposition in 2024 is there is no sense of ownership. There is regional parties and there is Congress. When you talk about Congress, there is an official AICC president, Malikarjun Karge, and there is a, you know, uh, Rahul Gandhi who represents the political leadership of the Congress. Now, each, you know, person... <laughs> so what does Karge represent with, then? He is a Congress president, but he, he, he lacks that kind of, you know, political leadership. That's what I'm saying. There is no sense of ownership. Not and political leadership, tragedy. political authority. He has not been yes. given the no, political but, uh, authority. Uh, can I just come in yes. at this point? It take, take a look at the opposition. If, for instance, the Congress, if it had won one state in the north, exactly. Madhya Pradesh, where it was, uh, you know, anti-incumbency was clear. Yeah. So, it was so close to actually turning the election. Because if you go, go back in, in, in the year that's there, firstly you win Himachal in December, then you come back and win Karnataka, I'm talking last year. You have the India Alliance being formed at that particular point of view. You knew where your battles were. Okay. This is the difference between what the BJP does, which knows that these three seats were critical for them to get the momentum to win the Lok Sabha. Easily the story could have turned. And the okay. mistakes the Congress started Sanju making... Sanju Verma is yes. with us and Radhika Khera is with us. Sanju Verma to you first. I hope you've got some uh, laddus and some mitai for Yashwan Deshmukh, Raj Chingappa mm. and everybody else over here. Because it seems that the she Prime won't, Minister... She won't give me? Radhika. She won't give you? She won't give me mitai? No, she just said you were doing a great <laughs> job when you were trending. She should give you mitai also. Now, 304, after 10 years of being in power for the BJP, 335 for the NDA... You know, it seems no matter whether you get to 400 and 370 or not, 
the outcome of the next election seems to be heavily skewed in your favor. Yeah, you know, uh, Rahul and Rajdeep, there's this famous saying by Norman Vincent, if you shoot for the moon, you will at least land among the stars. So whether it's 370 or 400 or 335, what have you. Point number one, BJP is romping home with a massive majority all on its own. Point number two, you know, I remember uh, that famous interview uh, with Prashant Kishore a few days back where Rajdeep kept asking him, what is the secret sauce around brand Modi? So I have something to say to the Congress. Hum to jeetenge hi, but Congress ke jo samarthak hai, ye dhyan se suniye. Jo jankar bhi anjaan bana rahe, usse dard kya batana? Jo jankar bhi anjaan bana rahe, usse dard kya batana? Abhi magroor hai wo, khud mein unhe kyun hosh mein lana? Abhi magroor hai wo, khud mein unhe kyun hosh mein lana? Ehsas tab hooga unhe, jab chhoor kar jaunga. Ehsas tab hooga unhe, jab chhoor kar jaunga. फिर नहीं होगा मुमकिन मेरा लौट कर आना फिर नहीं होगा मुमकिन मेरा लौट कर आना दी वोटर्स है टाइम एंड अगेन कौन छोड़ के जा रहा है अरे भाई साहब वोटर्स ने छोड़ दिया है बट राहुल गांधी रिफ्यूजेस टू लुक इनटू द मिरर एंड गेट अ रियलिटी चेक बट नाउ आई विल स्पीक विद हार्ड नंबर्स जस्ट बेयर विद मी फॉर 20 सेकंड्स ऑफ कोर्स गो यू 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 थ्रो द पोएटिक पंच राधिका खेर आई डोंट नो हाउ गुड योर शायरी इज शी इज थ्रोन अ पोएटिक पंच एट यू दैट्स अ बिट ऑफ अ गुगली कैन यू कम बैक ऑन द स्पर विद अ काउंटर लेट्स सी द नंबर्स आर इन फेवर यू बट लेट्स सी हाउ गुड योर शायरी इज गो फॉर इट राधिका Uh, see, uh, I'm sure that these numbers are a disappointment for the Bharatiya Janata Party spokesperson because uh, their claims of Abki Baat 400 Par have gone down over here itself in your survey. But coming back to that, I feel that surveys are not actually showing the true picture. The true picture is what I have here. I'm sorry, I don't believe in shyery and all because we are not here for entertainment. And India today is for talking about hard facts. Hard fact: today's newspaper which says, "Kisan karenge aaj Delhi ka coup." This is the reality of the country today. The reality of the country today is that our uh, that our wrestlers were sitting outside protesting, and they were what were they given in return of the protest? Latia. The this? reality is that the entire country is dealing under inflation, unemployment, poor law and order. While Modi ji no, no, goes no, no, and pats no, no, no. himself on the back. I did not speak in between. Kindly have the kindly Mr. Congressman. No, 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 no. But please put down Sanju Varma's voice. You must allow her to speak. We are a democratic country, and India today is a democratic channel where you cannot mute my mic, and you will let me speak. You cannot control the opposition over here. Well, coming back, the country is watching how uh, so, uh, over 100 parliamentarians were uh, suspended for parliament because they were raising their voice. Country is watching everything. Country is watching how uh, governments are being uh, brought down, being scared uh, by the ED. parties are being broken down and new fractions are being then come countries watching everything yes there have been disappointments that we've had in the recent uh, elections in chatisgarh madhya pradesh and uh, uh, rajasthan but all surveys were predicting that congress was winning chatisgarh and i um, you were rajdeep you even visited chatisgarh the mood of chatisgarh was absolutely different on the ground but something okay. has happened so i don't okay. think that the So I want to go back to Sanju Varma. Sanju, you know, while the overall picture is very rosy, or, or should I say, there are lots of lotuses in the overall national picture, and they are blooming. Maharashtra is a concern. Telangana is a concern. Uh, having an alliance in Andhra Pradesh, potentially even Punjab, is a concern. And the way that the BJP has been operating, my sense is that they may be looking at these states where they are not doing well and trying to double down and figure out how to make the tactical arrangements to do well here. you know i will answer your question uh, and now i hope the courtesy will be extended to me uh, ruling party ke pravakta ka mic mute nahi kiya jayega you know radhika kera i agree with her on one thing she said this is a serious channel we are not here for entertainment i completely agree entertainment to rahul gandhi de rahe hain bharpur entertainment as part of his bharat jodo nyay yatra where he says stuff mein koila dalo aur stuff jal jata i thought that this stuff runs on kerosene or fuel for the first time i learned that this stuff runs on coal So please don't sit here and give me your uh, half-baked knowledge. Now I will come to the hard facts. Rahul, I will not even talk about what uh, you know. Uh, Mr. Arun Puri said in August 2023. These are famous quotes of his, which I really love reading them all over again on every debate. In August 2023, after your then mood of the nation poll, he said Narendra Modi has pulled off what few leaders have. He has banished the universal factor of anti-incumbency. Narendra Modi's popularity rankings defy the law of gravity. I'm quoting Mr. Arun Puri ad verbatim. 
what could be the x factors from here we're in the beginning of uh, february uh, we've got march still to go and then elections in april may what could change good bad for both the opposition and the government see x factors for the bjp clearly is the mood of the neutral or the undecided voters from now on because bjp clearly has the momentum the numbers are very strong for bjp 335 nda means if you add the reverses in maharashtra and bihar which is 25 seat itself 360 plus you have a new ally from andhra pradesh possibly 17 six 377 so mission 400 or 370 is not impossible that's number one this is largely predicated on the image of prime minister modi so if there is a black swan event which dents the popularity of modi that is the only event which could probably tilt the numbers in favor of the opposition. It's all about Modi, his popularity. He is getting the votes for the BJP, and he is the difference between the but opposition and the This is an important point, Rajinappa, that it's essentially the no matter who thinks what of it. The fact is, and you can quantify this, and we'll do this tomorrow. But if the BJP is winning in the way that it is. It's because of one man and what this country thinks of one man. What anybody on this panel thinks of that man is inconsequential. The voters who we've spoken to would like Prime Minister Modi back. They have a direct connect with him. They have faith in him. They trust him. They want him back. Well, let's call it brand Modi. That is really a phenomenon that has happened. And, if, and just uh, look at what Amitabh said. Even in adversity, he comes out the winner. You had Pulwama, which is a black swan sort of event that happened in the thick of election. He converts that into... Uh, a great opportunity. Take a look at his second term. Each of these things, COVID, his first castigated, our polls itself show that it do, uh, goes down, comes back, uh, you know, uh, with a bang, make sure that the economy is uh, growing, takes care of the people on one side. Then let's also look at the, see, I, I think there are a couple of qualities we have to look at, uh, Mr. Modi. Decisive leadership, Article 370 goals, early in the tenure that is there. Ram Temple, built at terrific speed. The Parliament House built it. Women's Reservation Bill put there. So you are seeing, uh, if you take a look at some of the characteristics of leadership, vision, he has it. He's not only showing a vision for these next five years, he's looking, you know, fit, uh, you, many people could say, well, that's, you know, really pushing the target too far. But he's giving a, a, a nation, an aspiring nation, a road to uh, development. And I think that's very important. So he's, he's able to balance the Hindutva sentiment, which is the cultural sentiment that you want, or the soul of the nation, with pragmatic uh, governance, decisive leadership, and this, you know, this quality that he demonstrates in terms of welfareism as, as well. So he's taken all the planks of the opposition, appropriated all of them, made it his own, and has really, that is why you see the kind of And he's building Rajdeep a new republic. Whether anybody likes it or not, very different from the Nehruvian idea of India in the last 10 years, and he'll cement it in the next five if these numbers are correct. He has, in front of our eyes, built a new India. Look. As I said, the Prime Minister is a consumer politician and it isn't easy to hold on to your popularity over an extended period of time, particularly when you've gone through several black swan events uh, over the last decade. That is a given. You know, I like to use sort of M factors and I'm going to give you seven, each of which I think it's not just Mr. Modi's secret sauce. I put Mr. Modi at the top. I put machine. The BJP is a machine. 
and the machine... No, they so, built a machine. You mean built, machine, no, no. you think like it's a machine lying no, on the ground. No, Anybody no, can do a machine, they built a machine. Of course they built a machine, but the machine has various aspects to it. The machine knows how to use state power. It will know, where, you know, when to corner the opposition. So did how the Congress when they were yeah, in opposition. So, I'm, I'm, so did the Congress. Sure, of course. But the Congress didn't build the structure that the BJP no, no, built. When you say that, you know, Mr. Modi is building a new republic, I just want to give the elements, I think, that are yeah. important as to why is he still winning. There's Prime Minister Modi, consumer politician, knows how to use power. There's the machine of the BJP, the RSS, the Sankh Parivar. There's the message. The message, interestingly, look at Mr. Modi's message in the last month since Ram Mandir. He's not focusing on Mandir. He's focusing on Vixit Bharat, talking about infrastructure projects, talking about Amrit Kal. Cleverly knows how to change the goalposts. This is over. Let's move on to the next. So the opposition doesn't know what will come next. Number three. Number four is money. Let's be honest. Indian elections, the... The oxygen of Indian elections are increasingly money. The BJP dominates that space like no other party has done. The Congress may be in its pomp, but that time, you know, the opposition was much weaker. No, no, but that time the Congress leaders, many of them pocketed the money themselves. There's different that, structure that they are getting for the machine. A lot of the Congress leaders, sir, and you know this sir, well, pocketed sir, it's not as if in Maharashtra we don't have Kokeki Rajniti. Let's not say that no, you but know, we don't have institutional corruption in the manner in which there was under the UPA. That's not the case. The, the right jury now. is out on that, but I'm willing to concede that the Prime Minister has made it, uh, uh, you know, ensured that the party comes first at the very top. Not in the case of the Congress, individuals came ahead of the party. Then you have Mandir. I think as, as the survey is also going to show, Ram Mandir has taken the Prime Minister's own popularity to another level. That's where it comes that, you know, you're crafting an, a new ideological republic in a way, moving away from the Nehruvian idea to a, to a new idea of a new republic. Who knows, uniform civil court comes next. Then, and I think this is crucial, you have the Mahagadabandhan. You see, you're as good as your op opposition is. If you're playing a terrible opposition, which is so badly divided, which has really made no effort, to actually build on the weaknesses of the government. It's not as if the government doesn't have weaknesses. Unemployment is a problem. The, our survey also shows that. What have you done to build it? You have had four meetings of the India Alliance, all in five-star hotels, or three of them in five-star hotels, one in Patna where Nitish Kumar, your convener, has gone. You made no effort to capitalize when COVID uh, management was going wrong to build a kind of consensus. We need change. You've not offered me a leadership or a narrative to combat Modi. I think that's an important element. You're as good as your opposition is. Finally, and I know, Rahul, this is contentious, the media. Let's be honest. No one has dominated the media space quite like Mr. Modi is. So we've never really questioned, for example, the misuse of the ED in the way that it should be. The poll also shows a number of Indians believe the ED is being misused. So I think Mr. Modi is Teflon-like. All of this comes together to make him almost impregnable. Uh, impregnable. And I think, you know, credit to him, it's not easy in today's world to be as popular in 2024 as you were in 2014. More popular. A, more popular. More popular, you can say, but it's a combination of various factors. Your popularity is also dependent on how unpopular the other side is. No, but that's not Modi's fault. It's not if a his opponents don't know how to bat of and bowl, how Rahul, can you blame Modi for that? Rahul, who's blaming Modi? I'm giving the reasonings. The reasoning sure. is the opposition in the last 10 years has had opportunities. Demonetization was an opportunity. COVID was an opportunity. You had the chance to question the government in a serious manner. Each, as this poll is showing, the regional parties are holding on to their own. But the Congress has been unable no, to rediscover so, itself. So the question will also have to be asked on Rahul Gandhi's leadership at some stage. Surely, uh, you know, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, you know, this poll, the biggest how problem, long is the Congress going to sort of protect him? I think the biggest problem that uh, the opposition is facing is a face. You know, who Modi versus who? Is it Malikarjun Kharge? Is it Rahul Gandhi? Is it Mamta Banerjee? Is it Arvind K. Jival? So people have no idea. Is it M.K. Stalin? Is it some other, you know, chief minister? So, you know, nobody knows. So therefore, Mr. Modi is having it, you know, very easy. And the survey is indicating at that. If there was a face, if there was a, you know, sort of caste affiliation, if there was a issues, talking points attached to it, perhaps the outcome may not have been very different, but there would have been something like 2019-like situation. You is know, he so invincible? I mean, uh, at, at this point of time, at this point of time, say, can we say that Mr. Modi is invincible? Could the opposition have done anything better to change the mood of the nation? Maybe a better uh, word is unstoppable. Uh, yes. Uh, could see, it have, what there, could there, it have done? There is always a possibility, but I think of politics structurally. And the nature of politics is such that opposition does not have many chances. To use a cricket analogy, 
if uh, say it's Tendulkar or Virat Kohli is in full form, no matter you ball a Yorker or you ball a, uh, a sort of like, uh, you know, a googly and spin, they will hit you. But uh, Tendulkar so, has no, got no, gold. Uh, and this, got is gold. Why, this is why leaders are important. But yeah. think of 50s and 60s politics. Were there no leaders in opposition? There was Lohia and other things. Could they challenge Nehru and Congress party? No, because in political time, now you counted seven things. Everything is in favor of BJP, yes. right? So at the moment, I don't think uh, uh, like there is any X factor. The only X factor could be that we have no sense of, of what's happening on the ground. People have made up different mind and they are telling something else. You know, so at the moment, everything is aligned so in favor here, here's of... Here's what I wish to say. Let's just zoom out for a moment and think of the larger picture in a more historical perspective. I was at the Pran Pratishtha of the Ram Mandir at Ayodhya, mm -hmm. where while Prime Minister Modi was being introduced, he was linked to Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, the ideal Hindu king, mm -hmm. uh, who at that time, you know, really demonstrated all the virtues that good Indian kings should have. So he's kind of being projected in a historical arc in that same kind of uh, weight category. Rahul Verma, is there any contemporary his political figure who comes to your mind, who 10 years on, not just in India because there's no comparison here, <laughs> but even internationally, 10 years after being in power, manages to increase his party's vote share by 3%. No. Go back in time. No, who but, comes to your mind? No, can again. I, who can comes I, can I make a someone who can? Yeah, who? You know, we often tend to, since Nehru is still in the news, remember Nehru in the early 60s was a weakened prime minister, the war with China, despite that one. Please understand. No, but his vote share kept coming down. No, no. But his but vote Congress... share in the years that he was in power, the Congress kept losing ground. But the BJP no is gaining ground. No, no, and there was no opposition. No opposition. But Just where like is the opposition, opposition today? Better. That's what I'm saying. Where is the opposition there today? There was no opposition. Where is the opposition? Okay. I, I, would only party. Think, I think, I think uh, only Nehru can be compared. Ra Rahul Varma, okay, okay, so no, you've got no, Nehru, Modi, Panjshir and Modi. From a party of, a party who got us independence, that kind of goodwill, to Congress party after 47 with all the heavyweights of our freedom struggle on the Congress side. Let's be very, very honest. The 52-53 mandate was not Mr. Nehru's mandate. 62 I'm talking about. 62, yes. But, but the vote share dipped. Vote share dipped a lot. No, but there by was then no, his goes up in 57. Yeah, no, no, yeah, but in yeah. 62 and after that, he's being punished for his actions. The people in India at this moment are rewarding Modi and the See, BJP for what they are seeing, far from punishing. Give, let, let's spend some time on this. Let's, Historically, who comes to your mind? Yashwan Deshmukh. No, nobody. I mean, nearest that from the... Uh, and, and one point which I wanted to make where I can probably answer your question is the hunger to win and willingness to work 24-7 to ha let that happen. And that thing, only person which comes to my mind is Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Yes. Besides that, no other prime minister in India had a hunger to no, win. I'm not, and I'm, a I'm not, I'm not restricting this conversation. Okay, so Raj Chingappa to India. Raj Chingappa. No, 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 in a historical no, 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 no. context, who comes to your mind? No, no. Somebody in democratically no, no. elected. Only, only an authoritarian leader who yeah, knows how, how to, to fix. Who, who knows how, how to fix the mandate across how the world? How is he fixing the mandate? No, no. Putin. I'm not talking about Modi. I'm talking the only. When you say, when you say, give me an example parallelly. There are democratic countries. Where you will have the likes of a Putin in, yeah. in, in Russia and Erdogan in Turkey who will know how to, in a way, manage no, no, the mandate. No, no, Erdogan had a but very tough a, fight. He won with 6% his in a, points. In a relatively free and fair, relatively free and fair system like ours, to do it over three elections with your popularity increasing, I yeah, think well, makes depends, Prime Minister Modi sui generous. You look at Algeria, where there was, you know, this thing that uh, uh, Khalifa, he went, when Nehru was there, then I went with Hamid Ansari, he was still Prime Minister. Yeah, but let's not compare an Algeria with an India. I think, Raul, you make a very mm. good point. In a democratic society like ours, with all the pulls and pressures, which, as we are seeing in our poll, South India having a very different politics, states like Maharashtra, Bihar, Bengal, Karnataka, looking tough for a while. I think Mr. Modi has done the remarkable job of holding his popularity. And I only say this, yeah, and, and I think this is an important good. point that we need to make. While we talk of the invincibility of the Prime Minister, and I think CSDS's post poll uh, mm -hmm. in 2019 showed one out of every three voters voted yeah. for the BJP because of Prime Minister Modi. The BJP itself is, is, not, not, invincible. is not invincible. That's why yes. I made the slightly controversial yeah. point that if I was the opposition, I would focus on states when Mr. Right. Modi is not on the ticket, the BJP is weakened. You want a strategy for the future? Start from the states. Okay, the problem absolutely. is, you're going to make this, you know, the India I, Alliance has come into this 2024 election with no clue 
of how they want to face See, up to uh, just Modi. to remind the viewers rahul once and again you know we are so damn focused on 14 19 and probability of 24 that we are forgetting the fact that bjp as a party has lost 50% of the elections in this country in the last 10 years yeah 50% yeah you know so invincibility of mr modi as an individual with the bjp is benefiting from is not exactly the invincibility of the bjp That's number one number two yes i concede and i understand being a conservative poster this is probably the starting block of bjp and the nda and majority of our polling was hap happened before the ayodhya uh, pran pratishtha that impact has to come in and with the way they are looking out for alliance partners and the way they are going about it this can only go up having said that if you will ask me if there is any i don't see a black swan because nobody can predict a black swan but one red flag that is the complacency factor you know complacency factor was the are factor they which caused to you? them are they uh, looking complacent to you no they are not but what a 2004 urban areas the turnout dropped by 18% and that no, caused the is no watch by that's precisely what i was trying to say you know, they have you? learned their lessons pretty hard and neither neither also Modi there is a very can i give you a very you know, interesting not anecdote not is yeah. mr sudarshan sure both the factors are remaining can i give you a I very interesting a, anecdote just this morning i was told by an mp you know parliament has been extended by a day the bjp is going to put out a white paper on what the congress did over 10 years kya zarurat hai agar 300 seat mil rahe what to put white paper lagta hai desperate hai maine kaha desperate nahi hai they want to take that 320 330 that the mood of the nation is going because he wanted to know the numbers 320 330 to 370 375 1 din bhi nahi chhodna hai parliament ka if we can get an extra saturday in where all the tv channels for 7 8 hours will talk about this white paper keep the mahol going so there is no complacency on the other hand it's like a team which has scored 350 uh, runs is sure to win But things here yeah, last ten over, no, all four run look at four fifty jati. Amitabh Tiwari, look at, how, Tiwari, look at how this four hundred par is seeping into the psyche of the opposition. The yeah. Congress guests we had today, even Kharge ji in Parliament, they are referring to four hundred par. They should be dissing the idea of yeah. it's like you have the most forget idea of the side moment. <laughs> you have the most competent practitioner of the political craft up against the most inept practitioners. of politics i think in the congress uh, you are right. that is why you when you right. have them go head to head just modi did modi modi did sorry sorry just just a quick point i think one when you look at what he's done in terms of 370 and the 400 for the uh, nda is addressing what the concerns yashwant was talking about he has pushed the bar even further higher and better so and today you feel He's getting 300, and we, you know, he shouldn't be getting 400. No, so you heard what Rashid said. The second point, Congress will be happy no, no, with this. The, the second point I would like to make. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, 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 point. Yes, Rashid. Rashid, one point. Yes, Rashid. Rashid, one point. If India today and Yashwant Deshmukh are saying 71, it means Congress is well past 100 seats. That's how they are thinking. Yeah. No, no. I just have a quick addition to this one. You, you are asking about who else would you? I, I think Mr. Modi is in a league of his own, and internationally. Across internationally the yes and Go see we are the world's Asia. largest democracy i think we have produced great leaders precisely you may not agree with nehru or what he did kamit the r it was nehru kamit the r this time it was modi and i think we must in many sense commend that rather than bring comparisons indira no, gandhi so nehru. nehru is one comparison in go i think go internationally raj with even, all the even you see there you, you could get other kinds of leaders who had just held on to power in the recent yes. right. power problem you you can't have any comparison with american presidents oh, yeah. because they have to give up their terms yeah. in two terms, 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 terms you yeah. might end up with the putin erdogan and all those these are not the kind of leaders you would like to match this, this you know or even uh, xi jinping the, the other side right he is also uh, there but of course There's a completely no different system no. so if you really look in terms of democratic nations Mr as i said he's in a league of his own i don't think we need to bring comparisons here's a person as rajdeep described we the talked of leadership we have to appreciate that may like him may not like him there is something about him that is you know converted a, a nation of uh, uh, 1.6 yeah, uh, i think uh, again i completely agree with raj and just to add to him see what sets modi apart from everyone that see nehru inherited a party and an organization modi also inherited but bjp was not present in many parts of india as a strong force what modi has done in these uh, 10 years has put the party on map in eastern india 
uh, in many states where they were in single digit are now running governments, right? So what he has done electorally has basically cre like created that machine which was there, maybe using all kinds of things, but now BJP is a very, very formidable and unparalleled election machine in contemporary politics across the globe. Can I add, I think that can is I, one of his biggest Across the globe, yeah, yeah, you know, can I add two more M's? Interesting. One is middle class. I remember Arun Jaitley telling me this 10 years. He said, as India, India becomes more and more middle class country, he believed that the BJP was there at the right place, right tap, uh, uh, to capture on the energies of this middle class. I believe post-1991, ironically, the Congress party didn't cap uh, capitalize on the zeitgeist of this new India. They went in the other direction when they should have actually taken credit for Manmohanomics, built this middle class constituency. Look at across urban India. And as India gets more and more urbanized, look at BJP's performance across urban areas. Mr. Modi is popular in both rural and urban. We forget the Labharti scheme and the impact that that has had. Direct benefit transfer, using it to put money in people's hands. But I think middle class has become a core constituency of the BJP and they've built around that. And whether we like it or not, it may be the elephant in the room to some majoritarianism. Particularly in North India, there is a sense of a Hindu majority, the point you made, a new republic. Somewhere it's the Hindu assertion. That also is a major factor. No, is when it, I add Mabharti and Hindu assertion, I don't think you can win no, an but election. But which government in the past, Rajdeep, has spoken of making India a developed country and set a timeline for it? Sure. And actually then mobilize the will and try to build the circumstances which allow us to move in that direction. This is the only other government no, no, that I know. There I want to only put one small which caveat, is, which is there are areas of darkness in this country. Let's not be, uh, let's be honest. Whether it's the ethnic... No, but there are areas Manipur, of darkness in the United no, States. There are areas of darkness in Europe. Just as I believe the middle class has arrived, unemployment is a serious crisis that's going to get worse in the era, era of automation, in and education systems will not be able to match what the new market I, I, needs. I, I just think, agree with let's you not, let's not say that this, we've reached there. No, Mr. Modi is offering a dream. Mr. Modi is offering a dream. And making the effort to achieve that dream. And making the effort to achieve that dream. He's offering a dream. He's offering He's offering, he's offering a, a vision he's and offering he's making the effort to take us yeah. in that direction. Yeah. So it's not as if he's sitting on his exactly. laurels. But then and his aspiration. Aspiration. aspiration and aspiration so is then not just aspiration. middle class, Rajdeep. Middle class is like 50 shades of grey. Anybody who is not in uh, BPL family is a middle class. Okay. So um, from lower middle class to middle middle class to the higher middle class, it's an aspirational class. And he is a person who is showing a vision and a dream. That okay, you are maybe suffering, but what the India which I'm trying to make will be a great India for your kids, your and grandchildren. The dream was yeah. Yeah. And he's working to work. No, no, but then tell me if this was also perfect, the double engine as we saw in certain states doesn't work. I think India is too complicated to reduce it to you know Modi's captured the attention of all of India in every election. That's why he's captured it in a presidential style. In, in elections, increasingly are presidential at the national That's level. Mera leader kon hoga? Mera prime minister kon hoga? Mr. Modi with his consummate ability as a communicator okay. and the point I keep making Rahul which Prashant Kishore also now makes Mr. Modi has been around 50 years in politics he's seen various you know these black swan events you're able to conquer sometimes through your past experience it's like a journalist if you've been 40 years we can do live program Pelesal, it was a struggle Mr. Modi has been there he's done the hard yards let's give and him he's credit. been in power Chief. since 2002 uh, two. Two. he's been in power for 22 years and that gives him experience of hand on the other side he's become elite you've also. got regional leaders who've been stuck in their states I think one of Mr. Modi's major achievements is from Gujarat Chief Minister when he became Gujarat Chief Minister we thought how will it become RSS ka hai, has no experience in governor when he uh, governance when he becomes prime minister we said yeah prime minister we said ne, you said no, look no I, one minute one minute, one minute. i will say this and i have i have proved mr javed akhtar at a dinner in 2012 one week after uh, modi won gujarat a third time uh, he said yaar kya lagta hai modi ji aayenge center pe to maine kaha hai i think modi ji will come to the center i think he will win the elections 2012 december before he tilted he said, no, no, he is haunted by 2002, no, it can't I said, sir, there comes a time when a person can sort of go beyond his sort of okay. past to the future. So I will not take that, but I will say this, that he surprised people. I would certainly... And he continues to surprise people. He continues to and surprise. And he continues to surprise the same people who never cease to be surprised. That's a good line. That's a good line. That's a good line. That's a good line. No, but it's true. It's true. That's but the true. thing is that, see, see the, the fact, matter of fact is that he, he works hard.
And I think uh, uh, pretty much, and I've said this to Raj, that, you know, as one of my physics professors, he never used to give us marks on the final answer of the numericals. He used to give us the marks on what did we attempt. Dimaag lagaya ki lagaya, koshish ki nahi ki. I think Indian voters are coming to an age where they want to see the leaders make an effort. If you make an effort, they are even willing to own up your failures. See how people have owned up his demonetization failure. Okay. People, majority of them say, galak tha, lekin sahi niyat se kiya. Okay. So, now, so we are out of time. Is, there are, we are out of time. We need to there finish. Are, there are two politicians which are fascinating in that sense, using this effort point. One is Mr. Modi. One in a very different way, Naveen Patnaik. Yeah. 25 years, never lost. And you ask people, kya? Nahin, sir, koshish kar mm -hmm. You see, Indian voters, is right, want than... to reward well-intentioned. Okay, so we're out of time. Intention. We need to wrap up. Rajdeep. No, no, Raul, just one little yes. point. I think it's more than just try. Modi delivers. He has demonstrated that on time also. Whether it is building a parliament building, it's getting things done. Delivery. He no, made sure also that is the culture change that is also remember happened. that at the end of 10 years, Dr. Manmohan Singh, with no disrespect to him, was completely tired. The government was just coming apart. Uh, even Vajpayee ji, at the end of his six years, was very tired. He had to say, not tired, not retired. But, you know, the government wasn't energetic. Prime Minister Modi continues to stay as energetic, as pumped up, where people around and have seen younger officers, much younger than him, you know, and, and at New York, uh, at the yoga day, I asked one young officer in his team, Are, tum kyun nahi kare? Are, nahi, nahi, unme jada energy hum mein kam. So, you know, that's like people half his age. Okay, so Rajdeep, before we wrap up, if you were Modi, what song would you be singing tonight? <laughs> Uh, what's that song that Shah Rukh Khan had, uh, number one? Uh, I don't expect me uh, to know. Can, what is the song? Uh, I'm, so the I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. Koi hero yaha, koi zero yaha. I'm the best. Look, I'm the best. Mr. Mr. Rahul Gandhi, what song are you singing tonight? You know, you're putting me in trouble yeah, because I what? Hey, kya hua? <laughs> Kab hua? Kaise hu? Look, there are lots of songs. But... Look, seriously, I hope for the Rashid sake... Rashid has another song. Can I, can I though say something? For the sake of... Indian... Yeah. One second. If you are... Time Haan, yeah, that's Haan, a... Advisors are telling us that it will come. Time will come. Rahul, he is sounding like that. Look, 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 let's not rule out he's anything like Yadav. Like I... Who? <laughs> he is saying Rahul Gandhi thinks that it will come. No, no. Rahul Gandhi is being advised that it will come. Yes. Look, I hope for our sake of our... For our okay. democratic process and indeed for our television coverage, we have an exciting election. I hope that this mood of the nation doesn't result in most people believing up kyo dekna hai. No, jeetna to hai. But, but, but I hope we reason, have a contest. Is that the reason he has given this shabu yeah. for 360, 370 and 400? Yes. Because Parayas. he might be feeling, Rajdi bore ho ra hoga. <laughs> Kuch naya <laughs> do. So we are, we are, we are out of time. You know, something you know, to... If, <laughs> and if you look at the numbers across social media, across digital, across television over the past uh, four hours of programming, I can see that there is interest. So Rajdeep may be feeling slightly, yeah, there's no fun over here. There's a lot of excitement buzz around the India story, a lot of excitement about the Bharat of the future and around these poll numbers as well. And I think that will continue through. So I think Rajdeep's earned his dinner. Sung, In, for, sung for his supper. Sung for my supper. India has been modified, it appears, as per the mood of the nation. We'll wait and see what the voter really wants. This was uh, simply a teaser uh, to what might be lying ahead. So day two tomorrow. A uh, lot of uh, detail on impact of Ayodhya, the impact of Nitish Kumar switching in Bihar, um, the performance report card of the Prime Minister, his government, the opposition, all that and more coming up in part two of the India Today Mood of the Nation all through the day tomorrow. So we'll see you again. Today, Mood of the Nation biannual survey brought to you in partnership with Sea Voter, which has done this comprehensive nationwide survey at a time when all eyes are on the big question who will win the general elections of 2024? That's the question that we're going to answer in a detailed manner this time, but not just the big picture. We'll be going state by state to bring you all the results you've been waiting for. This is the last Mood of the Nation opinion poll before the general elections of 2024, which is what makes this that much more important and so much rides 
on the results of this Mood of the Nation opinion poll. Let's introduce you to our guests who are going to join us over the next several hours as we bring you the results of uh, the Mood of the Nation poll. I want to start by introducing Yashwan Deshmukh, lead cephalogist at Seawater. He's got this fancy Himachali cap on and uh, has been working very hard over the last several weeks. And lots of changes, Rajdeep, in the chess drawing board, forcing revisions in the MOT and samples. So he's really been working doubly hard, uh, not just because of us, but also because of all the changes that are happening. And there could be more equation. changes within the next month. You know, change is the only constant. Next month or tonight, tomorrow, there could Who be knows? changes. Uh, galore and therefore we'll have to keep looking at these numbers very carefully. Flanking him is Raj Chingappa, editorial director at India Today magazine. He and his team have worked on compiling and dissecting the results of uh, this poll and you can read the analysis in uh, the new issue of the magazine which is out in stands now. We've got Amitabh Tiwari who's joining us, political analyst. And to our left we've got Rahul Verma, Rashid Kidwai joins us and we've got Sanjay Kumar from, C, uh, from CSDS. So this is really as sharp a political panel as can be, and I'm discounting myself. And uh, no, I'm keeping guys leave there, discounting myself, but a very sharp panel on this. So what we'll do for a moment is take you through the methodology uh, adopted by Seawater for this poll, and then we'll go state by state in getting you the results of this poll. So this Mood of the Nation opinion poll was done between the 15th of December and the 28th of January, Largely, some polling happened later when there were specific changes like they were in Bihar. But largely between the 15th of December and the 28th of January. For this poll, the sample size was 35,801. Uh, but Seawater, as our viewers know by now, has a continuing tracker sample. So that adds 1,13,000 interviews to the Mood of the Nation sample, giving us a robust sample size of 1,49,000. For this sample and the tracker that's been going on uh, between the 15th of August and the 31st of January. So there's a 3% uh, plus minus uh, margin of error at the micro level and Yashwan claims he has a 95% uh, confidence level. So that uh, said, Rajdeep, let's now dive straight into the numbers for Uttar Pradesh. Okay, let's go state by state. And we are starting with the state of Uttar Pradesh because remember, generally it's believed all roads to Delhi lead through Lucknow. That certainly to some extent has been the case in 2014 and 19, given the domination that the BJP has had in the Hindi heartland. But let's take a look at what the mood of the nation poll is saying. First, let's take a look at vote share because vote share will give you a sense of where the parties stand. And what we are predicting at the moment is a 52% vote share for the NDA, which means that the NDA is actually up from last time. They're even higher than they were in 2019 when they did remarkably well in that election. The India Alliance, and presumably this India Alliance includes the Congress, the SP and the RLD as of now. The RLD could well switch sides. Therefore, at the moment, they are at 36%, up 10% last time, but they have lost the BSP, which was in 2019 with the Samajwadi Party and others 12%, primarily the Bahujan Samaj Party. But the key thing is, how does this translate into seats? That's the difficult task that Yashwant has undertaken. The seats, what would the seats be in the 80-member UP Assembly? And just take a look at that. The NDA goes up from 64 to 72 out of 80. It's a gain of eight. So NDA, BJP holding rock solid in the saffron heartland in a way. The uh, India line, six to eight, so only a marginal increase, and that's divided between one for the Congress and seven for the Samajwadi Party. Others are completely wiped out. The 10 last time were the BSP. So Rahul, the first big numbers clearly show the BJP holding its own in what's become its basket. And if the BJP is already at 72 in the way... Uh, the state plays right now. Yashwan, the most important question is, now that RLD is very clearly in talks with the BJP, if uh, Jayam Chaudhary was to join the NDA, where could that 72 reach? Well, I mean, of course, uh, it will impact uh, uh, minimum number of two seats for sure. Uh, but it's not just about how many seats that RLD is contesting and they are likely to win. It's also about the overall impact of the JAT voter consolidation in the entire Western UP and not just Western UP, but across in other states, which, are, which have a significant number of JAT voters. So that, having said that, Rahul, let me be upfront about this one. And me and Raj discussed this so many times about the numbers of the seats and everything. 
you know I am a conservative pollster. And I find it very difficult to tell people that, you know, why are these others or other NDA numbers, or non-NDA numbers coming up, even when you have NDA or BJP crossing 50% of vote. That is simply because of the probability. When you say any party is there in that particular region, even if you cross 0 to 1, 0 to 1, in UP with six regions, you end up with 0 to 6 kind of range. So it's also a question of probability. Otherwise, this number with this kind of a vote share could end up anywhere. So you're saying it could be 80 also? I will not say it cannot happen. No, because, because he's sitting on 72 and he says, I'm conservative. No, no, <laughs> it, 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 it is a possibility. You know, it can't be ruled out. But let's, you know, we are T20 style today. So I'm going to ask all our panelists quick responses because we are going through the entire country. Raj Gappa, Uttar Pradesh, as I said, the road to Delhi reads through Lucknow. If this is the result of, uh, of Lucknow, clearly the keys to Delhi are in the hands of Prime Minister Modi. No doubt Uttar Pradesh is the bellwether state. And if it is showing the kind of results that it, uh, the uh, India Today Sea Voter Poll is showing, the BJP is on its way. I would only like to point out a little bit of history because uh, the, uh, Prime Minister Modi had said he'd want to win uh, 405 seats and for the BJP, 370 seats. So if you look back, the only person who did that was Rajiv Gandhi, who won 405 and, of course, subsequently became 14 when Assam and Punjab were added on. And at that time in UP, uh, that was the undivided UP, I think the Congress won 82 out of 85 seats. That was a sweep. Now, if we are going by these figures, and as if touch 50%, I'm sure the other pollsters would say that, the BJP would require to max in Uttar Pradesh if it has to get its target of 370. That remember, it those two elections are very different, Amitabh Tiwari, because the 84 election was held in the aftermath of the assassination of then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. It was an election. Uh, one largely on the back of sympathy. Here is Prime Minister Modi who's been in power for 10 times. This is not an empathy, sympathy vote. This is a performance vote. If you end up 72 or if Yashwan says could be even higher, that would be the most incredible performance imaginable. Yeah, so if, if these numbers hold true, if you see whatever is BSP's loss of 10 seats is largely accruing into the tally of the BJP. BJP is gaining 10 seats at the expense of BSP. So if these numbers hold true, then what is clearly being shown is that it is largely a pro-incumbency vote. It is a pro-Modi vote. It's a pro-development vote. It's a pro-vote for his policies and the way he has handled the but, economy. But are you surprised because Rahul Verma, Uttar Pradesh was for a long time, for about 30 years, completely fragmented. Now suddenly, since 2014, the BJP has come to dominate the state. Two general elections, two assembly elections and now you could have a third general election. Is the BJP therefore entering into UP much like it was in Gujarat, a completely dominant party, 50% more, 50% uh, vote and more, should suggest a uh, dominant state? Absolutely, uh, Prasdeep. One reason for fragmentation in the 90s and early 2000s was that there were at least four credible players that were present. Uh, BJP, Congress, uh, SP and BSP, the regional parties were very, very strong. Over a period of time, Congress declined and also BSP declined. So why Yashwant is saying that uh, he's, the numbers are conservative? Because this time BSP is moving out uh, and they are still holding on to 10% or uh, some vote share that, there, which means that actually the numbers could be much more than 75, even touching 70. No, but 70. here's the thing. It reflects the continuing trend of elections becoming bipolar. Remember, the BSP, according to Yashwan's analysis, is projected to come down from 19% vote share last time to 8% this time. That's 11% down. And this is a party which in 2007 had won 200 plus seats. So that just shows how the BSP has ceded ground to now become a rump. 8% Sanjay Kumar for the once mighty BSP just shows that for time to come, elections in UP will be BJP on the one side and Samajwadi Party on the other, with a much weaker Samajwadi Party against a much stronger BJP. Uh, Rahul, we need to understand why elections are becoming bipolar not only in UP, but in Bihar and many other states. Because I get a sense that the entire election now is being contested in the name of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. I don't see this election as a contest between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi or Narendra Modi versus any other leader. It is a referendum on how, how do you rate the performance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So people are divided on two axes, pro-Modi, anti-Modi. And you see 
the election becoming bipolar on this, not on the issues, but largely on this factor. If you are on pro Modi side, you tend to align, your party tend to align with NDA. And if you are anti Modi, you tend to align with the UPA. Or if you are not able to align with the UPA, then you go alone. But that is what is happening in UP. But where does this lead, therefore, the India Alliance, Rashid Kidwai? Because you've got a situation where you are tying up with the Congress and Samajwadi Party tying up. Uh, we still don't know how the seat distribution will take place. But when they look at these numbers, there'll be a sense of hopelessness almost, particularly if Jayant Chaudhary also uh, leaves uh, the alliance. Even if Mayavati, you know, was to come on their side, which seems unlikely in a few weeks' time, either way, India Alliance is starting this race with uh, one hand tied behind its back. Yes, I think there is a total sense of despondency. But I still think... Uh, Mayawati is the biggest insurance policy that BGP has in Uttar Pradesh. Imagine this 8-10% vote going to, you know, India Alliance would have made material difference. And second thing is, how many, you know, Gandhis, uh, three Gandhis, Rahul, Sonia and Priyanka, how many of them are going to be in fray? Because if, unless they contest, and same applies to Samajwadi Party, Akhilesh Yadav and uh, Dempel Yadav and all those people, credible people. So what's your sense? Will any of the Gandhis contest now? Given I, don't these think, numbers? I, think, I think they are looking for Rajya Sabha route. At least one of them will get into Rajya No, but Rajya I don't Sabha. agree with Rashid Kidwai. He says BSP joining the India Alliance makes a difference. Even if I add 36 and 8, that's 44. Up against 51 for, uh, 52 for the NDA, it still leaves them six short. No, no, so even if there is even if there is perfect transfer of votes, which we saw in the last elections, when they were both stronger in the BJP, not as strong, it still didn't make a difference. Look, Rahul, BJP is the dominant party of UP, there's no doubt about that. And all the other parties are basically trying to compete for that same anti-BJP vote that exists. So even if they come together, they are actually only consolidating the anti-BJP vote. The BJP vote itself, once it's crossing 50%, even if it was 48% tomorrow, they would still be over, well over 60 as they were in 2019. So I think... And Rahul, we are not factoring in the Ram Lahir, which is there. There is a lot of... Why people are shifting? Because they think that there is going to be a huge, you know, consolidation in favour of uh, uh, BJP in Uttar Pradesh. And now, that is... So this I was a cricket match and the BJP ends up 72 out of 80 in the first state and the projection across our table of really sharp political minds is that it could actually even be more. Then, you know, the Congress and the India Alliance are out of the race even before the race has begun. Shahzad can say, okay, thank you very much. I don't need to do the talking. Modi is doing the talking for me. Rahul, no, no game is over till, it's, till it is uh, totally over. That? So I know this is a very disappointing save for uh, the India Alliance. But... I must say that despite every all the advantages that the Prime Minister and Amit Shah and BJP have built up over these 10 years or so, you know, they, they're still pretty much at 50%. The opposition has not been able to come together as we need to, to defeat uh, 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 this, uh, this power so far. But the election is not over. The election is going to be contested in UP and all over the place. And by the way, I know you people said something about the performance. This is a performance uh, election. If this is a performance election, I want to ask you. I want to ask the people of UP, for example, that until 2014, UP's economy was larger than Tamil Nadu's economy. Now, 10 years later, and most of that is under... Well, all of it is under Prime Minister uh, Modi, and most of it is under uh, Chief Minister uh, uh, Yogi Adityana. Why is the UP economy now smaller than the Tamil Nadu economy? What has changed? Now, at the national level, Salman, if, Salman, if it is Salman, Salman, one, point, are, one point, one point. We are doing a one T20 point. style analysis, so we want one point at a time. You one make point, your one point. One no, one let, let, let Shahzad Punawala now respond. Shahzad, the fact is that UP is seen now as a dominant party state. Do you give credit to the Modi factor, the Upyogi factor, a combination of both, the fact that the double engine there seems to be really working at the moment? Rajdeep, I give credit to three factors and let me complete my answer. One is Ram Lala, two is Gita and three is PD and let me complete. Ram Lala means Rashtriya Suraksha, Mahila, Lavarti, Leadership and uh, Arthavayavastha. Gita means growth, information, innovation, infrastructure, technology and Atmanirvar Bharat. 
and PDA means performance, delivery and aspiration. Today, Rajdeep, Modi ji and Yogi ji have converted the vocabulary of people like you from anti-incumbency to pro-incumbency, where even the most critical cynics like Yogendra Yadav and Rajdeep Sardesa in the Democratic newsroom also have to say that BJP ko sabse jada number milenge hi this kind of conversion happens when time after time the people see the leadership and the performance of the party on the ground and overall because we have a mission and a vision we are not people of commission corruption ambition and family profession and therefore no. i give credit to ram lala geeta and pda you so know, I, I love his acronyms he's going to go very far in politics given those acronyms mr modi has clearly uh, got a few bucks in the party who know how to do uh, how to use acronyms rather well. What I want to do now is play out a small excerpt from a show we had earlier today uh, from Lucknow where we spoke to voices on the ground trying to get a sense of the pulse in Uttar Pradesh. So here are some excerpts from the Mood of the Nation poll from Uttar Pradesh from earlier today. From the city of Lucknow, and once again, if political cliches could hold true, nothing. विपक्ष की जल गई है एकता की रस्सी, इसलिए भाजपा यूपी में जीतेगी अस्सी में अस्सी. मुझे लगता है यहाँ पर बैठ के लक्ष्यदार बातें करना और थोड़ी बहुत शेरोशायरी कर लेना एक चीज़ है. आप धरातल पर आके असलियत देख लीजिए. हम पूरे विश्वास के साथ कह रहे हैं कि कांग्रेस पार्टी का उत्तर प्रदेश में खाता नहीं खुलने देंगे. युवा चाहता है रोजगार और रोजगार के नाम पर आप कहते हैं पकौड़े तल लो. केवल भारतीय जनता पार्टी है जो बढ़ती हुई दिखाई दे रही है बाकी सारे राजनीतिक दल आपको गिरते हुए दिखाई दे रहे हैं आप सबके अकाउंट में पंद्रह लाख आ गए दो करोड़ बेरोजगार मिल गया नहीं मिला और जब अलायंस करना था ना तब राहुल जी के प्रोजेक्शन के लिए उनकी एक यात्रा प्लान कर दी गई और जहाँ जहाँ चरण पड़े राहुल के चाता बन का धार हुआ जैसे जैसे यात्रा प्रारंभ हुई एक एक करके अलायंस लगातार छूटते जा रहे हैं शुडेंट दी इंडिया अलायंस एक्चुअली लुक एट ब्रिंगिंग इन मायावती बिकॉज एक परसेंट वोट शेयर वुड ऑल्सो जी माइट नॉट विन अंगल सीट एज फार एज बहन मायावती इज कंसर्न आई थिंक इट्स रियली अप टू होम वी वुड वॉन्ट टू तीन सौ सत्तर हम कह रहे हैं क्योंकि तीन सौ सत्तर हमने हटाई है I want to come now to the state of Punjab and just keep in mind that the numbers that you're about to see assume that the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress will find a way of fighting together. But this is a state where AAP and Congress are one and two and whenever two parties are one and two, they typically find it very difficult to be able to distribute seats amongst themselves. Between two and three, it's much easier than it is between parties that are one and two. But since that's the way it is seeming on the surface that's the calculation that we're about to show you so here are the numbers for Punjab I'm going to start by taking a look at the vote share numbers first the BJP had 10% vote share in the previous Lok Sabha elections that's now projected to go up to 17 uh, that's 7% 7 up uh, the Aam Aadmi Party had 7% vote share in the last Lok Sabha elections that's now projected to go up to 27 that's 20% up from the last time the Congress had 40% vote share in the last elections. That's now projected to come down to 38. That's 2% down from the last time. The Akalis had 28% vote share. That's now projected to come down to 14. A loss of 14% for the once formidable Akalis. Let's take a look at how this converts into seats. So on your screen right now, for the 13 seats of Punjab, here are the C voter India Today Mood of the Nation projections. C voters projecting that the BJP is likely to stay at two seats. They're two. Uh, they're likely to stay at two. What's gone out from the NDA kitty there are the Akali seats. The AAP uh, is expected to be at five seats that's up four from the last time if we see the party wise breakup of these seats uh, the Akalis were at two that's likely to come down to one so the BJP holds on to its two seats uh, the AAP goes up from one to five remember in the first election they fought in 2014 they had four seats uh, so they go up to five this time the Congress at five they were eight last time so they're down three and the Akalis are at one 
down two. Now, what could change potentially, Ashwant, is if at the last moment the Akhalis and the BJP are able to tie, because behind the scenes is a lot happening. It's not firm, finalized, both sides haven't decided. The Akalis we know are keen, the BJP is 50-50, wishy-washy, but that can change any time. And if that changes, how does that potentially change these numbers? Of course, I mean, that, that would be having some impact for sure, because uh, I guess that uh, between the Akalis and the BJP, even though there has been a quite a lot of bad blood in the recent years, uh, the, as far as the core voting is concerned, they are pretty much supplementary in nature. The core has been anti-Congress vote at large, which the Akalis and the BJPs have been tending together. So this separation might have split it vertically because BJP ran away with the Hindu votes and Akalis were with their Panthic votes. But if they come together, definitely that will have an impact. But uh, 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 what, it will not be the same kind of seat sharing, uh, Rajdeep, that is for sure. Because wherever BJP is going back with their old allies, the seat sharing equation is no more the same, which sure. was defined by Vajpayee and Advani. But you know, yeah. this is a fascinating state, Raj Chengappa, because the alliances have, stay, have changed dramatically in the last few years. The BJP and the Akalis were together. AAP versus Congress was the battle uh, of Punjab. They've now come together. They may not have chemistry on the ground. Would, do you really believe that this AAP-Congress alliance will work in the end? and actually see the arithmetic benefits that this poll is suggesting? Or do you believe in the end uh, it will be very difficult for AAP and Congress to actually fight Punjab together? Which may be another twist to these numbers. It's my favorite state since I was uh, there as editor-in-chief of the Tribune. But I think here, let's take Sanjay's argument of brand Modi and a referendum of that. How much of that is going to play out in Punjab? It never happened when Rajiv Gandhi, in, 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 uh, you know, the, it was a very troubled state, of course, you know, at that particular time. So uh, the Congress never benefited at that time because of the wave that happened. So if you look at uh, it currently, if the AAP and the Congress get together, they're a decisive force. Have they got together? Have they agreed on anything? That is not to be seen as yet. No, but, but can I counter what you're saying to say? that it's almost impossible. How will you decide? If you're one and two in that state, on a drawing board, you can say whatever you want. Given the problems in Uttar Pradesh, given the problems in Bihar, it is very difficult. In Delhi, they may still have some kind of an arrangement. In Punjab, they'll ultimately come to the conclusion that it's better for us to fight separately. No, they may well do that, Raul. They actually seem to believe that that might even work to their favor. That, you know, you have a multiple, uh, multi corner No, so I'm saying then the premise of the poll for Punjab is flawed because it, it hypothetically assumes uh, that but, they're fighting together. Yeah, sure. But the one thing about Punjab, to take from what Raj Chengappa said, and that's the fascinating part of Punjab, uh, Sanjay Kumar, it's the one state the one state in North India where the Modi wave has not worked both in 2014 and 19. Look at both these elections. The Congress, if there's one state in Northern India, held its own in the last 10 years, it's Punjab. Is there, you seeing the politics of Punjab, therefore, is very distinct and different from the rest of the country in a way. Uh, two factors. Even though the, the political clout of Chiromani Akali Dal has com come down, but look at the states where regional parties are strong, BJP has not found it easy to make inroads. That's one case why in Punjab BJP has not been able to make inroads. Second, BJP has been contesting in Punjab in alliance with Akalis. So Akalis have been a dominant player. That was a difficulty in the Bihar also for the first couple of decades. Also, look at the social composition of Punjab. In Punjab, we have a very large majority of Sikh voters. So if you look at Ahmad BJP's popularity, Narendra Modi's popularity, there is some difference if you look at among the Hindus and people belonging to different other religions. That is another factor why BJP has not been able to penetrate in Punjab the way they have been able to expand in other parts no, of the No, but the region. calculation in the BJP and Shahzad can build on this. I'll also show you the uh, projection for Chandigarh, which is expected to go to the BJP. It's an urban pocket, and we saw the mess in the mayoral elections recently, but the poll is predicting that Chandigarh goes to the BJP. The problem is both the Home Minister and the Prime Minister have, have often say that they're very emotionally invested in the Punjab story. And yet on the ground we see, especially amongst the Sikhs, this pushback. So how does this square? The fact that the Prime Minister himself feels so emotionally close to the Punjabi community, to the Sikh religion, and yet there is a lot of antipathy and a very strong pushback. 
Uh, Rahul, look, uh, what Sanjay ji was saying just now, that since we were the younger brother in the alliance, and that alliance was not purely for political reasons, it was also for ensuring the message of Sabka Saath and Samajik Sohar between the Hindu Sikh community. And therefore, we sacrificed a lot of our space and a lot of the other things also while we were in that alliance. For the first time now, we are finding our feet in Punjab, not just in urban areas, but also in the rural pockets. And therefore, this vote is a vote of expansion. It is a vote of credit that will keep increasing over the few period of years and look at the outreach that Prime Minister Modi has done towards the Sikh community. It is not a political outreach, it is an emotional outreach, whether it is celebrating the Prakash Parbs of the great gurus of the Sikh community, whether it is celebrating Veer Balas Divas or whether it is reaching out to various sections, whether it is the FCRA clearance on Harminder Sahib, Langars that we are uh, making GST free. So I think there is a concerted effort. Not everything is done only for political purpose. Some things are beyond politics. For Rashtra Niti, we have done a lot of things and I think that is also being reflected because Punjabis are very patriotic people. They will, they are ready to sacrifice their lives for the nation. They have contributed so much to the armed forces and I think you will develop, you will see because the kind of mismanagement Aam Admi Party is doing. Look at the Nasha Mafia, look at the kind of corruption that is taking place. I am not saying this. Mr. Sidhu is saying about the corruption and okay. also the alliance between the Congress and here in Punjab, Amit Amit Tiwari, is If they fight unholy. separately, this calculation and you are seeing the India numbers projected by C voter to zoom up in terms of vote share very substantially. All that is based on the assumption that they fight together. Uh, if they don't fight together, and if this is the base where Akalis are at 27% vote share, up 20 from the last time, Congress is at 38% vote share, down up 2 at from the last time, up at 27, up 20, Congress at 38, down 2, Akalis at 14, down 14. How could Punjab read in the absence of this alliance? See, Punjab is the hotbed of anti-center politics. So even if AAP and Congress do not form an alliance, and unless the, sub, the Akali Dal forms an alliance with the BJP, these numbers could still hold. So unless the Akali Dal ties up with the BJP, I don't see a substantial difference in the numbers because the politics itself there is anti-center. Hindu being the majority in the rest of the country, but being a minority there complicates the political dynamics there. And you know, it's interesting to look at this because if we turn to the next state, uh, because I think these two states the, reflect just how India's map is so complex. Just turn to Delhi, not too far away from Punjab, where again the Congress and the AAP are trying, uh, uh, trying to tie up. Just look at how the numbers stack up in Delhi. Seven seats on offer, but the national capital is often a barometer of what tends to happen across uh, North India. Take a look at vote share. As per this, in Delhi, even with the Congress AAP alliance, you have 57% vote share going to the BJP and 40% to the India Alliance of the Congress and AAP together, others three. How does this then translate into seats? Seven seats in Punjab, uh, in Delhi, all seven went last time, remember, to the BJP. All seven will go back to the BJP as per this poll. So that takes off from what Amitabh Tiwari just said. Punjab is almost sui generis, uh, uh, Rahul Verma. There, if the Congress and AAP tie up, they do very well. They tie up in Delhi, where the AAP is in power again, and yet, it's a clean sweep for the BJP. Does this reflect urban mindsets and Delhi mindsets versus the anti-center mindset, as uh, Amita put it, about Punjab? Uh, yes, a little bit, Rajdeep. Uh, uh, that Punjab, uh, the demographic composition is different. It has always had an uneasy relationship with the center, even when uh, Congress party was in power in 1970s and 80s. But you have to also understand that this alliance in both Delhi and Punjab is not easy. Because in P Punjab, Aam Aadmi Party feels that they can gain these seats even without the Congress. So you've seen uh, Chief Minister of Punjab making statements that we don't need to have an alliance. And in Delhi, even if they come together, they will not be able to make any dent. No, but why not? Why, you know, the it, reason is that Congress explain party why the Aam Aadmi Party in two consecutive elections has swept Delhi, but the BJP has swept Delhi in Lok Sabha. So, because, so, BJP continues to hold 40% vote share in Delhi, no matter which election is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, Congress gets 25% when Lok Sabha happens, but when Vidhan Sabha happens or MCD happens, Congress comes down below 10%. So, that entire Congress uh, vote, which is in Lok Sabha with them, actually shifts with the BJP. 
So ARP continues to be around 45 to 50 percent in, in, uh, in assembly elections. But in, in Vidhan Sabha, BJP gains... No, but my view is it's the Modi factor. You know, what, what seems to be is that the Lok Sabha elections, you look at Narendra Modi. When you're fighting a state election, you look at Arvind Kejriwal. That's happened two elections in a row. And it seems as per your numbers, it's going to happen again. It's a split vote, uh, Rajdeep, and it's happening across India, across all the states, honestly speaking. Each and every state... If you look into the vote share of the last assembly and the last Lok Sabha in together, you will see somewhere between 10 to 25 percent of jump in favor of the BJP whenever the Lok Sabha elections are there. However, in case of Punjab, I must mention this because it's an important and critical point to add. In the last 10 years, in our daily tracker, there are only three states where Rahul Gandhi as an individual leader has scored over in popularity over Narendra Modi. Three states all across India. One is Punjab, one is Tamil Nadu, and one is Kerala. But, and they have been like that. But one critical thing is, 10 years back, the gap between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi was so huge in all these three states that it was a one-way traffic of sort. But over the 10 years, this gap is reducing and reducing and reducing, and it used to be in double digits. Right now, it is in single but, digits. But, you know, the real the split vote, I think, Rahul, is going to become more and more important. Voters seeing Lok Sabha very different to Vidhan Sabha. And Salman shows that's your big problem in a way. In Delhi itself, in the heart of the national capital, even if you tie up with AAP, it's the BJP that sweeps the election. That suggests to me that that voter is giving a huge bump to the BJP the moment it's a Lok Sabha election and Mr. Modi is on the ticket? No, I, I look, at, uh, look at it a little differently. The, what, what I'm seeing is if this data is correct, and uh, I have no way of knowing whether this is or this is not, we'll find out during the elections. But the Congress vote share is coming up in Delhi because people see, well, many people remember the governance that Congress uh, has delivered to this country. And that is why I think you see the uh, war share coming up at the when it comes to national level politics. Why that doesn't happen at the when your state level uh, elections? I don't know what one. you're saying, Salman Bhai. From 23, it's gone up to 25. That's up to up. No, no, from 18, I, is down to 15. That's down three. I was BJP Rahul, was at 57. No, 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 it's at talking, 57. So you're clutching was, at Rahul, straws, Rahul, really. Rahul, I was, I was talking about the comparison with assembly elections. Somebody said that you know during assembly elections the vote share goes down, and during parliamentary elections it has come up. So clearly people do remember that the UPA times are very good. And why should they not? I mean, the per capita income still 32 of this country... No, no, one minute, sir. You're still 32. 32% 32 behind the BJP. Rashid Kidwai, this is, you know, this is the problem the Congress is facing. When it comes to a Lok Sabha election, Mr. Modi is on the ticket. It appears that the Congress is not preferred to the BJP. We've seen that. Direct BJP Congress fights. The Congress loses out now. Even in an alliance with AAP, they may lose out in Delhi. Yeah, but Rajiv Delhi's story is very simple. It is due to Muslim vote that swings. In assembly election, Muslim vote tends to favor Arvind Kejriwal's party, and in Lok Sabha election, it favors the Congress. So that is why there is a kind of mismatch. And when we talk about vote share, we must look at the each and every constituency profile, and that's where it matters. So even if some party is maybe 40 percent plus, another party is 57 percent, in seven Lok Sabha seats, the results may be slightly different. So vote share. No, so you make an necessarily... important point in a seat like say Chandni Chowk or in East Delhi, absolutely, where the minorities are in big numbers. Rashid Kidwai's argument is, and that's where we can go across to Sanjay Kumar, that as far as the state is concerned, it may still be 57 versus 25 and 13, but in that concentrated pocket, it may help this alliance if it comes together, put a tighter fight in two seats, at least East Delhi and Chandni Chowk. Uh, this is a possibility, Rahul. I don't rule out this possibility. But if we are looking at on one side 57 and on the other side it is say in the 40s, 42, 45, 46, this is huge gap makes it impossible that there would be, there are chances of close contest or a reversal in a couple you know, of constituencies. The, 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 real, the real story is the BJP which gets about 38 to 40 percent in Vidhan Sabha goes up to 57 in Lok Sabha. So, Vidhan Sabha ki nahi kare. No, 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 that's the story. No, but that's the story. Modi, that's the story for Vidhan Sabha no, election. Sir, my, for a Lok no, no, election. sir, the point is the Modi factor Rahul is giving the BJP an 18 to 20 percent jump. That's the story. From 37, 38 percent, where it loses to the Amadmi Party, which gets over 50 percent. So the Amadmi Party is clearly seen as a Delhi regional party, and the uh, BJP in a Lok Sabha election takes it. Whatever the minority vote may get consolidated, but the majority vote in Delhi 
is going firmly towards the BJP for the Lok Sabha. Six months later, I have a Vidhan Sabha election and the situation at least, twice before, at least twice before has uh, been very different. True. This time around, we don't you know, know. So I think that's Rahul the significance. I want to make a quick point. Yes. Uh, two things. One, uh, the minority factor will come uh, into play on assembly elections where the assembly constituencies are smaller Small. and then you have enough number which can swing vote. Uh, even in Chadli Chowk, you don't have 50% Muslim population which can suddenly turn the seat. And besides, after delimitation in 2008, the entire composition yeah. of these seats have changed. Actually, in Delhi, there is not even a single Lok Sabha seat now which can say that, okay, minority <laughs> votes are the decisive vote here. Yeah. Earlier, the Chandni Chowk, before till 2009 elections probably, that was the probability, but after 2008, no, but in Delhi, no if up in Congress are on the same ticket, it does make things more exciting. It does, it, it does, does certainly, uh, absolutely, uh, it, it makes it. Still be seven but but having said that, you know, it's, 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 also, more, it's also the fact, you know, Rajdeep, uh, Sheena Dixit ji was very clear, very, very clear that if, if Congress has to revive they have to make sure they do not go with Ahmadi Party. Without, go, no, without sir, you know, uh, that's how... Martin is also clear. That, so they, they have, she has been very clear. No, so I, 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 I really think, Rahul, the story which we must stress is this Modi factor. Because I, you know, this kind of split wording... But you're sounding it. surprised about no, it. No, because it's Ten nobody else of... in the world. You see, in, in, go across the world. A Republican state will vote for the Republicans, both for the Senate usually and for the presidential election. In India, you're seeing it now in two consecutive elections. For Delhi, we want uh, Arvind Kejriwal, but upar hamare liye Narendra Modi. And you're going to see it across because the America country. Because America doesn't have a Modi, because that's why. Whether, uh, you know, whether I, mean, no, no, I, I don't think it's as simplified as that. I think the Indian voter has very consciously decided who I want for chief minister and who I want for prime minister. And I think it is fascinating because I don't think, as I said, I, I, I don't know any other country in the world where it happens. No, we make too much out of this and this is my personal opinion. There is only 15 to 20 percent of vote which swings here and there. That's so, a lot. No, yeah, so, but, but, in only couple of, but in only a couple of states, except Odisha, except uh, 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 Delhi, do you see a split verdict of this kind? Yes, see, Karnataka. You see Karnataka in election after election, you vote for the for one party in the Vidhan Sabha, you vote for another party in Lok Sabha. I am willing to have you, a small you, wager you, that there will be another half a dozen states where this will happen. Can you but bet Rahul. like now after Congress winning Karnataka in 2023? Congress is going to do same way as it done in 2019. But yesterday, I met a Maharashtra leader yesterday. He said we have put all our eggs, uh, a Maharashtra Congress leader, we have put all our eggs in Vidhan Sabha. I said, what about Lok Sabha? He said, Lok Sabha Madhe Modi hai. <laughs> Please understand. Yeah, yeah. That's how they are seeing it. Here's the reality on the ground. 2019. Okay. Let's come to Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan because this is a fascinating political adda, and if we go on, we can be here all evening. So I want to come now to Madhya Pradesh and take you through the numbers. We need to just step on the pedal a bit so we can go. Otherwise, we'll be here all evening. So in Madhya Pradesh, the and the BJP had 28 seats. Apart from Chindwara, they won 28 out of 29 seats. This time, they're expected to come down to 27. Uh, the uh, India Alliance had one, expected to go up to two. This is as far as votes are concerned. 58% last time for the BJP, same this time. And the Congress's vote share, 35 last time, expected to be 38 this time. So basically, you're predicting that one other seat could possibly go away from the BJP and one extra seat could get added to the Congress. I want to quickly go across to Rajasthan as well from uh, Madhya Pradesh. We'll take vote share first. Uh, the NDA had 61% vote share. The BJP had 61% vote share. This time 59. Uh, the Congress had 34. This time 35. Let's quickly see how that converts into seats. No surprises here. If that's how big your lead is, 59 plays 35 in a bipolar election, it's a clean sweep. So you, they're holding on, uh, Yashwan Deshmukh. Two areas where they shouldn't lose. Yes, all these complicated, really detailed, finesse, nuance graphics that we have on the election intelligence dashboard, they're not going to be of any use. If this is how one way the traffic is, then what's the point of all the finessing? Well, you know, I, I was just trying to give what Rajdeep was saying. I will just give a term to it. I call it Modi dividend. There is a clear cut on an average 15 points Modi dividend as far as the Lok Sabha election is concerned. And the split vote, ironically, you know, I coined that term in 2004 while explaining why Vajpayee's popularity did not translate into votes for the NDA in 2004 because there was a lack of a split vote. 
And since then, we have seen slowly and steady, the number has been increasing. While Rahul is correct that, you know, in many of the state, it is not very clear cut in that way, because in many states where BJP has been absent, their split vote also to take them across a threshold of 30% wouldn't come. Let's say, for example, Kerala. Kerala, Vidhan Sabha election, BJP goes into single digits. But in Lok Sabha election, they almost touch 20%. But, but you can, know. I, can I just make a point, and Raj, I want you to come in on this. When BJP swept states like Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh in 2019, we called it the Balakot bump. That post-Balakot, Mr. Modi had taken over the entire space. Now, even without Balakot, the fact is, in both these states, the BJP is holding its own, sweeping Rajasthan as per this poll. 27 out of 29 in Madhya Pradesh. In Rajasthan, there was a close contest just a month ago. And yet, now, Lok Sabha, it appears it's uh, the BJP all the way. What explains it? So we can even throw Balakot probably out of the, uh, uh, out of the equation. You just say, there is the Moditva factor. You know, if you look at it, and you've asked somebody, even in Delhi or in Madhya Pradesh, who would you really want in the center? I mean, that's the question. And that answer is a very logical answer that voters would give. I would gather in Madhya Pradesh as well, who is the Congress projecting for, uh, for them to vote for? You as prime they, minister. As prime minister. Whereas you have Modi, and he has performed well. The state has uh, rewarded him well. And I think here, if you look at it, just to make a larger point, there has to be a saffron wash, what I call a saffron wash, in about six, seven states for... The, for the BJP to get to its 303 or 370. Madhya Pradesh is one of those states. It lost one seat last time. And uh, there's a whole cluster of states where their vote percentage is 50% or more. I think, uh, let's take the seats, 223 seats or so, where they, they are, their margin is so big, over 5 lakhs or something, no. that they will win. Madhya Pradesh is one of those states that's there. So there are two points I'd like to make. One is what you were saying earlier that the Modi factor will work very, very strongly to dispel any state kind of resistance that is building or any Congress support that could move towards Rahul or anything that's there. And two, these are the kind of states where the, when we have 50 percent, the no, but, opposition has no chance. Sure, but you know, Amitabh Tiwari, this comes back to the point which many people have been making, that the real battle for the opposition was to try and take on the BJP, where there's a direct BJP Congress fight. 186 seats last time where there was a fight, the Congress won just 12. If these numbers are to be replicated, it once again shows where the Congress is the main opposition, i.e. Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan. The BJP is the front runner, and you're seeing the Prime Minister in all his recent speeches, not focusing on regional parties, targeting the Congress, the Kamzor Kadi, as the BJP sees it. Yes, so one of the main reasons why BJP is again sweeping both these states is because it is facing Congress as the opposition, yeah, number one. Number two, the India Alliance partners do not have a single vote in these two states. So there is no advantage to Congress of any India bloc formation because it does not get the reciprocity. And number but three is that, as you said, the Modi factor, let's say. So 31, 33% people, or rather 37% people, voted on the name of the PM face. So if you don't have a PM face, you are excluding 37% of the right, voters. But why will these numbers leave the Congress party? They've lost Madhya Pradesh, they've lost Rajasthan Assembly election, they've lost Chhattisgarh. Now you've got a possible sweep as per this mood of the nation poll. Will it only further demoralize the Congress in the, in the heartland? Rajiv, actually that's the real trouble with the Congress party because Congress strategists and that includes Mr. Yogendra Yadav, a new, you know, addition in uh, team Rahul Gandhi. He's, and I heard, you know, once he told you also in an interview, he seems to think that the, you know, Congress will get seven, eight, nine seats in Rajasthan, five, six seats in Madhya Pradesh and in Chhattisgarh. So there is, you know, he's converting that vote percentage, that 40% plus vote, of the Vidhan Sabha. Vidhan Sabha into Lok Sabha. And that is where I think there is a tactical error, but, the, but Rahul Gandhi is buying that. And India Alliance is buying that. You so know, that's Salman shows this is the real problem in a way for the Congress party to revive itself. These, these are the states where you needed to focus upon in the last six months. You've lost assembly, and now you could be wiped out in Lok Sabha. Rajdeep, uh, you, you are thinking that the only people who are fighting this election are basically Kharkeji and Rahul Gandhi. We have people, we have leaders in our states. They're fighting elections. They're getting ready. So what 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 will become evident later on is you know this what you in your own in your own poll we're seeing say for example uh, a bump of three percentage point three percentage points for India Alliance, which is Congress in Madhya Pradesh, for example. 
What that tells me is that there is a solid base for the Congress party to build on. And from now until the elections, anything is possible. So, yes, the perception that is being built is that the uh, Modi ji has won, everything is, uh, is done. And by the way, yes, exactly, the PDA. Let me get to uh, uh, the PDA that uh, my friend Shahzad talked about. The PDA is, what is it? It is propaganda. There is nobody who, nobody who does propaganda more than uh, Narendra Modi and the BJP. What, is, what does D stand for? D is destruction, destruction of relationships between uh, brothers, Hindus, Muslims in this country. And what is A? A stands for arrogance, arrogance of party, of money, of uh, control of media. By the way, in the, in the Hindi belt that we are talking about, how many newspapers carry any, any news from the Congress party? You know it and I know it. Hindi newspapers do not carry new, uh, news of the Congress party. Meanwhile, not just regular news of the prime minister. Anytime the prime minister says something, he's plastered on television all the time. No wonder people think there is no, nobody but uh, Narendra Modi, because that is what uh, the media has been projecting. And by the way, I, I would slightly bet to remain. defer. I read the Delhi Bhaskar every morning.